All right, let's get this thing on the road. Turn my volume down. A little echo. There we go. There it goes. <clears throat> Mike moved in here nice and tight so we can keep it down. Good morning, everyone. Catfish Tyler checking in with you. I know I'm early, but I'm excited. I couldn't sleep. Good morning. Hello, cats. And I'm just going to be lazy and leave that in. That, mm, good morning. Okay, let's do it that way. In fact, I'm going to have another one. Good morning. There you go. Three people don't hit that like button, anybody. Don't you hit that like button. Don't do it. Sofa is ablaze. Oh, my goodness gracious. She's on fire, everybody. Got a lot of things to talk to you about today and share with you. We're going to share with you some of my music. Some of my poetry. And something about SoFi. Something new. So let's just wait until a few people get here. Let me change this view over here to the display screen. Just give me a second. Move it up to the top. And under moi. And then we'll move the catfish down. <clears throat> that should do it. That should do it. And now we say bye-bye to this. There we go. Just give me a moment here. I'll get my crap together. There. Good morning to each and every one of you. I want to thank you for being here with me today. We're wearing a tribute shirt for Spartacus. We got a <clears throat> Spartacus Spartan on there for Sparty today. If Sparty joins us, or I should say, when hopefully he will. I sent him good good stocks yesterday that paid dividends. Hopefully, he will look into those. If you like to look into stocks that pay good dividends, watch yesterday's broadcast at about noon. All right, here we go. So. <clears throat> I like to get up in the morning and dig for any new information. And one of those sources I use is the op, um, omnipotent Google. And I'm going to move this over here now. Boom, like that. There we go. And we got some other stocks on the radar today, believe me. We're going to be watching some. And we're going to be buying some and make a quick buck. Show you how to make a quick buck today. Everybody likes to make a quick buck. <clears throat> Please do not hit the like button. I ask you, if you hit the like button, it's okay, because that's very kind of you, and I appreciate you doing that, but we're going to do a simultaneous like. We're going to be doing simultaneous likes this morning, so don't do the like button yet. And again, I don't want anybody when it comes time to hit the like button at 8.48 is what time we're going to do it. So three minutes from now, we want to hit that like button all together. And unfortunately, I don't have my damn phone in here, so I can't set an alarm. But as I said, folks, I do like to get the top news of the day. So I go over here to Omnipotent Google and I do a Google search. And what I did was I just put in SoFi Technologies and then I searched for the latest news in the last 24 hours. And what I stumbled upon was very cool. And I'm going to share it with you guys. 
And for some reason, I cannot get this thing to go back to the previous page, which was Google, where I did the search. So, at any rate, I searched for simply SoFi Technologies, and I put in the last 24 hours, and I saw something from Trustpilot, which I cannot get this to go back to. We'll try to do this a different way. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. Oh, hold on one more time. There it is. So, <clears throat> I, so I, I did a search for over the last 24 hours. And I saw this. said SoFi just issued 72 million shares of stock. That is not true. <laughs> Don't click on that. That's clickbait. Because I clicked on it. It's bullony. Just way to get people to click. But I did scroll down here. And I saw this. And it said, and I thought it was interesting, because it said, uh, Hello, Brew Tank. Damn, it already smashed the like. Let's kick some ass today. Yeah, we will. And we're going to hit that like button right now in... 40 seconds from now, we're all going to hit the like button at the same time. And uh, we're going to get a bunch of people over to the channel today. And I was, I found out that it was true, folks. I want you to know that on average, my video has been getting sent to others about 4,000 times a day out to others. But with me starting the ads again, it got sent out to 7,000 something viewers yesterday. You see how the difference is? Here we go. Here we're going to count down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Gently depress your like button. I don't want you to crush it or pound it or smash it or bash it. I don't want you doing any of that. Just touch it gently. Your, your mouse button doesn't need that kind of abuse. No, no one does. I got a song about that on YouTube called You Gotta Have a Dream. Check it out. Brew Tank Outdoors. Hit that like button already. Gosh, just new to the tank, everybody. Got a newbie in here who doesn't know that he's not supposed to hit the like button yet. But you know what, Brew Tank? I don't care. I love you for doing that. You just have a big old heart, just as big as that, big as that Grinch on Christmas Day when he heard them singing, <laughs> Let's break out the roast beast. Oh, we're going to break out that roast beast here. And the guess who's roasting? It's going to be the shorts. They're going to get roasted. They're going to get toasted. They're going to get... <laughs> oh, like I say, it's going to be painful. <laughs> Guten Morgen. If you happen to be from overseas or Guten Tag. <laughs> and uh, Aloha. If you happen to be up at three in the morning and <laughs> buenos dias if you're up at 5 30 6 30 in the morning we have right now the Equatros people on the channel and we have seven likes siete gusta <laughs> uh, muchos buenos very good. Looking at SoFi this morning, <laughs> they're not going to reach yesterday's low, folks. <laughs> they're not going to do it. It doesn't look very promising for them because I have a feeling if they would have, they would have already done it. Let's go over and look at how many shares there are today available to borrow. We'll refresh this right now. Of all 15 people here, I'd like to thank you for being here. Please don't hit the like button if you're new coming on right now. We're going to hit the like button at the same time. And uh, I am going to try to catch most of the ads and skip the ads, but 
There's no doubt about it, folks. When you leave the advertisements on here, they send you out to almost twice as many people, which I discovered yesterday. And you can you can go to, and I don't know whether I shall try this yet or not. Maybe the little kids aren't up yet playing their little games yet all over the place, but we'll see. But uh, as I was saying to you guys, I drifted off here. <clears throat> when you search for that, which I did early this morning, and you come over here and you and you click on SoFi Technologies on Google. This is where I found this that I'm going to show you now. Scroll down here and you will see one of the top within the last 24 hours was posted by this company. Uh, hold on a second. The top of its course was SoFi. And when we scroll down here, I'll find this. And, of course, I can't see it right now, but I will find it. This is what you'll stumble on on this. this is how I found it, anyway, this morning. And uh try and show you now. Hopefully, we can get to the page. Get back to it of what I discovered this morning. Okay. I appreciate your patience while I look for this. I will find it. I definitely will find it. And please give me just a moment here because dealing with some sinus issues this morning. All right. Well, how interesting. <laughs> This is interesting. I have no idea what we're doing here right now. We're going to get off this channel. We're going to get off of YouTube right there. We're going to be looking at some other stocks this morning besides SoFi. And we're going to try one more time to do what I did earlier. And then as on Google, we're going to do this. We're going to start it all over for you guys. SoFi Technologies. Go in there. And then when we come over here to the tools, we want to get the very latest news. I'm going to get to this, folks. Trust me. I'm going to get to it. Go to past 24 hours. And I might have even did done past hour. <clears throat> See if there's anything breaking news. And what I came to is right here. Hold on a second. And I must have done the past 24 hours. Past 24 hours. Thank you for bearing with me while I find this article that is I thought was awesome. Here it is. <clears throat> now, one of the things that I like to do when I'm looking at articles is... See how many times it's been viewed. And wow, look at all the people here on this stream right now. It says, error, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Folks, let me tell you right now, if this disconnects because of this terrible wow internet connection I have, please just wait for me to be back up on within about five minutes to 10 minutes. Because I do get disconnected out here in the boonies where I am often. But I want to show you guys something. Don't hit the like button yet, folks, please. All of the, there's 23 here right now. Don't hit the like button. We'll do it together at 9.08, okay? 9.08. But what I want you to know is on this trust pilot that I stumbled on, you can hear it's got 8,094 reviews. This and it says, SoFi has the all-in-one financial app to help you save, spend, earn, borrow, and invest your money. 
8,094 views I thought was cool, but let me show you what, what's going on here, people. <laughs> Just so you can get a hold of this. <clears throat> These are five-star ratings. 82% five-star ratings. And they're talking about SoFi. Very easy to use. And every one of these, folks, super easy application process and fast funding couldn't have been easier. Says also moved all of my banking over from BOA to so happy. So, folks, this is just what I said yesterday. I was talking about SoFi is invading and they are taking away customers. SoFi is invading the Conventional banks, good morning, Sergeant Franco. Good morning to you. SoFi is invading, and they're taking away, taking away their customers. And their customers are then not just coming over for the introductory, then they move everything over. Look at all these ratings. The entire process to acquire a personal loan was pain-free. It was easy and felt safe. <clears throat> On top of that, the loan rates are competitive and loan options are diverse. So far, I am very happy with the outcome. Application and closing process was quick, easy, and efficient. I was able to do everything online, which is extremely convenient with the hours that I work. The whole process was super easy. I didn't have to talk to a rep. Answered a few questions online, got an interest rate, dollar amount to borrow, and I got to choose my payments and years to pay off. Super freaking simple. Got the money in a couple of days, and I didn't have to deal with any hassles. Damn. That's good stuff, people. Buja Park. Let's go, boys. Yes, sir. Every experience here, folks, is phenomenal. SoFi made the entire loan application process smooth and easy to understand. Funding was completed in short order. Thanks, SoFi. This is the 27th of March, folks. <laughs> Two days ago, the process was easy. It walked me through each step. I did not feel rushed. I received all the information as was stated and truly done in a very short time. I would recommend their services to anyone on March 25th. 20 hours ago, my experience with SoFi was exceptional. The detailed loan process was such that it left me with a comforting and reassuring confidence that my personal and financial information was in very good hands. Thank you, SoFi. So anyway, I thought you might find that interesting. There are 8,096, and they got a five-star rating here, four and a half stars, 4.6 to be exact. That's performance, people. Xavier, hello, good morning. Yo, Emilio Ortega, good morning, sir. Ah. Está bien. Intrigued, so if I, está bien. Peabody's raw honey. Buenos dias, senor. Emilio, buenos dias. Do not hit the like button. We're going to hit the like button at 9.08. Don't hit the like button. We're hitting it at 9.08. Let's just hit it 9 o'clock and 8 seconds, okay? That way I can make it shorter and I won't forget. We're going to do this at 9 o'clock and 8 seconds, and that would be in about 15 seconds from right now. We're all going to hit the like button at the same time, please. And here we go, counting down now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Gently depress your like button, please. <laughs> I thank you for the 57 that have shown up here to the channel today to see what's going on. I got an error saying YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. As such, we'll experience buffering. The kids are starting to wander into the Wi-Fi yard. All the children that are out of school with their heavy-duty processors and their gaming equipment are overrunning the WoW capabilities. And if I get cut off, I'll be back up within about 10 minutes because I'll usually 
it's better to just restart my whole computer and, and, and start things over. Do a little clean disk and do a little file delay, deletion, browsers cleared and then cut the computer off and turn it back on. And then we're up and running for the rest of the day. But you've seen frequently that this channel gets kicked off because of loss of signal. And right now it's hazy and slow. I noticed that watching my man Hurricane Lopez this morning. So anyway, folks, I got up very early this morning. Like I said, I did a Google search for the news that's happened over the latest. Stumbled on all these excellent reviews for SoFi on something called Trustpilot. A website called Trustpilot.com. Now, for those of you that had the big questions yesterday about Robinhood and their new credit card, and there were some worries. Even uh, Hurricane Lopez was, man, he was all over that, man. He just talked about it. And he said to him, he just didn't see it. And to him, they're so overvalued. And they're, they're oh my gosh, folks, look at him. Make way. We have to clear out a little bit. Step back. Rusty Pratter steps into the pond, into the tank with a big old splash. Look at that, folks. This guy is as true to this channel as one could be. And he shows his appreciation for it religiously. And I guess he figures it's worth $5 a day to listen to me. And sometimes he even gives more than once. And this guy stays at the top of the tank, people. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rusty. This is a new person to the tank relatively, or at least I think he's only been about a week and a half or two. I can't say for sure. It might have been a little longer, but he's relatively new and he just comes in here and he's dedicated to keeping this channel alive and he knows what it means to give. And that is a thank you so much. Man, I appreciate it, Rusty. You are helping keep this channel on here and everyone that donates to this channel and we're going to make a lot of money on this. And I know a lot of people are waiting. As I've said, we're, we're, wait till it gets to 10. Like you said, Catfish, I'll take care of you. And I know that. I'm not worried about it. But in the meantime, play my music on your music provider. Apple Music, Google Music, whoever you're using. Spotify. Stream it. Just let it play in the black background. <laughs> not, yeah, in the black background. You don't even have to look at it if you don't want to. You don't have to watch the videos I have on YouTube with all my songs. But you might like them. If you have any woman or friend you know who's suffering with physical violence from a relationship, go over and send them the song I have called You Gotta Have a Dream on YouTube. It's also on Spotify and all the others. If you know of anybody who's having straight relationship difficulties with somebody that's physically or mentally messing with their head and them, themselves, Send them my song, You've Got to Have a Dream, on YouTube. All right? Bert Berenson, good morning, cat. And I think, you know, going over to the tank right here, right now, I think that Rusty Pratter's already at the number top. I mean, he's there already, folks. He's there at the very, because he donated yesterday. He just keeps himself at the top right there for one of the supporters of this channel. That's right. Rusty Pratter, folks, right there, because every day this guy's helping keep this channel here for you guys and everybody else. And others are giving a lot, too. I call them all out. J.P. Panek has been very kind. Jeff Presley, Rick Lawrence, Daniel Davis, Armand, Brew Tank Outdoors, Elaine Nelson, D.B., Charche, and uh, Danny Dimes 10. To all of you, I am very, very grateful. And thank you for your support here and keeping this channel make some money flowing in. Because if it doesn't come in, I won't be coming through. WSFI will shut down. Okay. Done with that. <clears throat> Every once in a while, we got to do a commercial. We have to have some sponsorship, people. <laughs> and the ads, believe me, the ads that they run on here on that, that you can skip. I hope you can skip them. Please, 
Good morning, Burt Berenson. Please let me know if these ads, when they come on, if you can skip them. And uh, I want you to know they've already driven SoFi down to the low that they could get it this morning. I believe it was in the, in the pre-market. I don't think there's any way they're going to stop this thing. And I don't think they want to, to be honest with you. The ones that got it down to the 682, they did it so they could get all those shares that they're going to. Uh, I'll get to this in a minute, folks. Let me just refresh the screen here because I see it, there's a delay. It says excellent connection right now. So a good time for me to refresh the screen. And look at that. Look at all those likes up there that you guys hit. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's jumped up big time. So there's, for each one of those likes, there's a heart there. There's a heart there. Hopefully you can see these that I'm going to be putting up here. Uh, we'll have to wait till it fully refreshes. Because I don't like there to be a long delay between what you're seeing and what I'm saying. and Because uh, I like to be able to respond to everybody pretty quickly. And when there gets this lag here, then you, I can't respond to you immediately. But SoFi is blazing a new trail, people. That, that picture I've got on my thumbnail this morning. There's a new way of doing banking, man. I say... I say it's all, like I said yesterday, that invasion, so far as the invaders, they're coming in and they're invading the, the, the big boys space and they're taking their customers away, boom, pulling them over. And we're not even at 930 folks. People don't start coming into this channel here big time from usually until 915 to 930 because that's when I usually come on. I started early today and, uh, I know about re, re, some people I was telling you about the commercials that I'm now running on the channel. I told you that the reason I had to go back to letting commercials come on is because when you let commercials stay, YouTube sends you over to more people. And that's the most important thing about this channel is getting sent out to as many people as possible. So I let the commercials run yesterday and my viewership sent out to instead of the average that we get of about 3,500 to 4,500 a day on uh, the one I left the commercials on yesterday, they sent my channel out to 70, 7,400 people yesterday. Okay. That's the difference between leaving ads in place that you can hopefully skip through or not leaving the ads. So my screen over here is just now ref uh, refreshing uh, on my YouTube creator screen. So I can't see what you're saying right now. Just I'm trying to get it to refresh. It said my stream was in excellent condition. So uh, I can only presume I'm still up here. 908 right now. If you want to hit the like button, if you just came in, 908 is a good time to do it. Oh, it just changed to 909. You'll have to wait now. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, folks, we're going to be watching some other stocks today. Uh, we we had a few mentioned and thrown our direction to look at yesterday. These are them. We're going to be looking at this one. My presumption is we're going to see an attack on this stock this morning, possibly, maybe not. But uh, we're watching it. And we're also going to be watching this one right here. That was up big time yesterday. We're looking for a 945 entry on MPW. And you can already see they're coming in it in the market. It was up 18% yesterday. So they're going to pull it out in the morning right here now. And they're probably going to come at it until 945. So we're going to be watching that for a, these are all stocks we're just going to buy into and then get out the same day. These are not long time plays. These are fast money. We're in the fast money round. Okay. Same thing with this one, GCTS, up 568% yesterday. There they come. Here comes the morning, down 24%. And this one we're going to have to be very careful with if we're going to buy this one here because it's a little bit costly. But if we catch it at the right time, we could really see some movement on it, okay? The GCTS is a semiconductor company. And it says uh, they just became a publicly traded company after completing business combination and Concord acquisition. And there's, there they took off and went up 568%. Uh, also, uh, there was a stock that came out 
DJT, okay? DJT. I want to be aware of DJT. And this stock right here is a Trump Media and Technology Group. And they just did their IPO. And on that IPO, Trump was to benefit $3.5 billion. But I got news for you. The thing IPO'd, I believe it was at 40 something. And this thing has shot up, folks. So he's made a lot more than $3.5 billion. I think he's made about 4.2. All right. I don't think he's that worried about having to pay the fines that they just le levied. And then they just decreased decreased the amount of his bond for, to something semi-reasonable, but still beyond comparison with anything prior for such for such nothingness, in my opinion, my opinion only. We now have 19 minutes left. Well, it's not only my opinion, it's the opinion of a lot of people that uh, are on this channel, I know, in fact. And I've got to close this off. I can't see what anybody's saying. So shut that down. We're going to reload it over here right now. And part of it is I've got just, I've got a ton of pages open here, folks. I mean, a ton. All right. So we're going to open this up and we're going to get to us. But uh, I'm just going to keep speaking here because I believe we do have a good signal. And uh, I just got so much opened up across, as you can see, the top of this page here. And uh, I was going to show you guys what I did this morning early was jumped right on here and decided to look up any of the latest breaking news I could find on SoFi. And I found this 8,000 reviews on SoFi's banking process, uh, getting a loan. <laughs> and every one of them was a five-star review. Every one of these I looked at was five stars. Out of 8,090 reviews on here, there's a, there's a few exceptions as always, but man, look at that. Everybody talks about the ease of the application, how easy it was. <laughs> it says here, the way I got my personal loan was easy and quickly. At the next day, the money was deposited in my account. <laughs> and you know that's, in the, and the next day. I mentioned this only because somebody might think, oh, well, they just got a bunch of uh, pawn people out there that get paid and go go do their survey and, and, and say good things. And th this is not the way it is, I don't believe. I think these people were easy to apply. Everything was done online and you knew whether you were approved immediately the hardest part of this process was deciding how much I needed. Customer service was the best. Answered all questions in an open and friendly manner. A big plus for me. There was no long wait on the phone. <laughs> Fraud on their account. One person there. I'm very pleased with how seamless and uh, easy it was to apply and receive my loan money from SoFi. This is my second time partnering with them to reach my financial goals. So anyway, every one of these reviews is, is virtually spotless and perfect and excellent and five stars. There's the rating out of 8,096 reviews if you want to read them all, if you have nothing better to do with your time. But I'm sharing this with you because, as I said, one of the, one of the reviews down here said, uh, after I had this experience of getting the loan, I just changed everything, moved all of my banking over from Bank of America. So happy. So this is what they're talking about, crossing everybody over and uh, bringing, bringing them over, getting their foot in the door and then converting, the, bringing them all, bring them all, bring in the whole family. Come on, water's fine. Come on in, the water's fine. We're going to be monitoring SoFi today very closely and looking for a low at 718 or higher. That's all we care about. A low 718 or higher, you should put your buy orders in if you want to at 718, 719, 720. Put in some little buy orders there. If you don't get to them, who gives a damn? Because we bought this at 680 something the other day, and now it's on its way to 10 before earnings even possibly, if history repeats itself. And history 
has been very repetitive with this stock, everyone. Very, very repetitive. All right. Now, I will get back over here to my channel here in a minute. This YouTube is going to load up. It's, as you can see, having major difficulties trying to get to YouTube right now. <laughs> but everything else is working perfectly fine. I can get to any of these. And we're going to be watching some other stocks, as I said this morning. For sure, we're going to be watching some other... <clears throat> Uncle Bruce is up live right now. Got 310 watching him. He's a big advocate of SoFi as well as many others. Uh, Tevis and uh, Stock Goat and Trending Stocks. And uh, I tell you, we got a lot of people talking about good about SoFi. And they're telling the truth about SoFi. Because, and it's a good thing they do because there's so many out there lying about it. That's for damn sure. <laughs> That's the truth. There is so much baloney, including three downgrades when everyone was raising their target price. It's all done. We've seen it so many times before. Over here to YouTube. Look at that. We finally loaded up. Now we're going to click on this and we're going to see view your channel. <clears throat> Moving here so rapidly, you can't even blink or you'll miss it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh Goodness gracious. There it is. View your channel. And I am taking someone's word of advice and uh, get another get another laptop here that has a better processing ability. That's probably part of the problem as well. There's my cool looking thumbnail and <laughs> SoFi is blazing a new trail, by the way. They sure are. And here we're going to get to see what everybody's been saying lately. And hopefully you've got some good news you found on SoFi this morning that you guys are sharing with me. And, uh, hey, we're going to skip this ad. Yay, it does say skip. I like that. Just found out myself. 33 people here on the channel with me early this morning already. Thank you for being here. Thank you if you hit the like button. If you didn't hit it yet, don't hit it yet. We're going to hit it together at the same time. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, loading up right now. Hey, look at that. 24 sevens with us and a lot of others. <clears throat> Peabody's Raw Honey. Good morning, crew. Morning, folks. 24-7 here with us. Morning, folks. LOL. Man, I hit that button while I was watching the ads. <laughs> Rusty Pratter. Okay. I hear you. Uh, Burt Berenson. Good morning, cat. JP Panic. All right. Good morning, cat. 33 degrees Fahrenheit eight here in the Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, I know what you mean. We're at the same temperature here, my friend, right now this morning. We're in the 30s. Very cold out here in Michigan. JT, so no trading tomorrow. Will they buy today? Oh, yes. We're going to see a nice day today. We're going to have a very good Monday, Thursday. And a good Monday, too. <laughs> ah, It lets you skip your ads. Yes, good. Thank you for letting me know, 24-7. I usually just let them roll and go get a beer, <laughs> a drink. I'm sorry, not beer. A drink after work when I join the channel. Chop Rod, welcome. Welcome to the tank. Good morning, Big Cat. Rain out in New York City. I'm heading home. Let's make some money. All right. Daniel Davis, shorts increased to 23% trending stock is saying. I know it. Short done. Dug himself some deep, deep hole. Short done. Dug himself a deep, deep hole. <laughs> Short keep digging, digging and digging. Oh, they're not going to be digging much more. <laughs> because the shorts, the shovels are broken. <laughs> Catfish has spoken, it's true. This is what we'll do from here. Good morning, cat. I usually just let them roll. Okay, here we go. All right. Shorts increased. Yep. Muhammad, 
Good morning, good morning, golf overlord. Good morning to you. James Anderson, good morning, let's go. Robert Williams, call options today. Well, Robert, you'll have to wait and rely on some of our options players. We don't do option on this channel. We have several people that do that are on the channel that are in the tank, and they'll be along shortly. No one expects me to be up this early and broadcasting. I started early today. And please, again, if you haven't yet, don't hit the like button. Now I will try to move this screen, this YouTube screen that we have in front of us, over to my other monitor. And hopefully, God, if we're willing, God willing, this thing will stay over here where I can see what everyone's saying. So let's go now and jump over to the other page with of the computer with this page. Bye-bye. All right, there it is. We'll give it a minute and let off. Come on, baby. Light my fire. All right. I see it. I see everything. All right. <laughs> That's right, chop, re chop rod. Short people got no reason. Short people's got no reason. Short people got no reason to live. Oh, they got so little hands and little feet and a little mouth that goes weep, weep, weep. I don't know what he says. Little fingers and little toes. Short, short, short nose. Oh, short people got no reason. You remember that song? People got no reason. Oh, the short people got no reason to live. Can you imagine? You couldn't get away with writing a song like that right now, man, with everything so damn politically pro 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 prohibitable. And I say politically prohibitable, not pro pro politically correct. I call it for what it is. All right, everybody, let's get back over here to this screen. Yes. Sort of a one-hit wonders kind of guy. Not really, but in a way, that was certainly a song that put him on the map. Everybody became recognized. He became world-renowned for that song. I remember watching him perform it. 9.23 in the morning, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, that is uh, here from WSFI Studios in the heart of the state of Michigan. I want to thank you for being here. And now again, my screen over here decides to start freaking refreshing itself. No button's been hit. Nothing has been done. <laughs> now it retries to refresh. Wow. Now we're going to move over here to other stocks. We're going to be watching at 945 for a possible entry, everybody. Not going to do it necessarily. And Mary, if you're here today, please take it easy on me, okay? <laughs> Give a break. Nobody's perfect, and I, I state over and over on this channel, I'm not a financial advisor. I do not hold a license. I do not make any guarantees. In fact, no, that's not true. I do make one guarantee. That guarantee is that there are no guarantees. All right? Make sure we clear that up real quick before someone like Mary comes along again. <clears throat> Rusty Pratter, thank you very much. There's a heart love for your for your donation this morning. And that is what we call prime in the tank, people. You know, when you go into a bar and a bartender's serving you and he's giving you good service, you know, he's got a tip jar up there. And uh if I go into a bar and I see a guy's tip jar, if there's no money in it, man, I got I got my money in there right away. I tell him, man, you got to start putting money in there in advance. You got to prime that pump. And that's what Rusty just did. And hopefully some of you other guys will appreciate it enough to buy a $5 sticker or $20 or something. And uh, you make enough money off this stock when this thing hits $10. Hopefully you'll be able to afford a little more than $2 donations. And if you can't, that's okay. I'll take two. I'll take whatever you can do to help this channel. And we what, what we got to do and understand is I can make all this money that I can make on these stocks buying at the low every day, just watching myself sitting on a laptop on my next to my wife. 
you know, but instead I'm here with you trying to share with you what I know and my knowledge to help you make money. And if, it, if and in order to do that, we've got to get a, some revenue coming in. Uh, and, and I don't mean from my stocks, because like I said, as far as it goes here in the household, I can make money off the stocks without doing this. <laughs> All right. And uh, but I'm doing this for everybody's benefit, hopefully. And hopefully you all make money uh, from all of these stocks in the past. If you bought CLSK, I know you did. If you bought 10X with me, I know you made a lot of money. If you've bought uh, Carnival Cruise Lines with me, I know you have. If you bought PLTR with me, I know you've made a lot of money. Uh, if you sold at the highs when I sold them and you bought at the lows, if you bought sound with me like Mary bought just two days ago, I know you've made a lot of money. Okay. And that's all it's about. But for everybody to keep making great profits and picking out stocks that are at the right time with these notifications from us all working together as a unit. I mean, we. We got people like Danny Dimes coming on here picking out stock that went from $8 all the way to $24, $25, where it was. Dalton understands it. See, Dalton understands the whole concept. Thank you, Dalton, for that contribution right there. I appreciate it. And everybody, it's just follow suit, man. I'm not asking for you to throw out 50 cents a day is all I ask for people for my services. 50 cents a day. I'm a cheap half a cup of coffee, folks. All right? <laughs> That's what I am. Very, very affordable. I have a very, I have a value rate. I have a low budget. Get your foot in the door. Look at that. Dalton, thank you so much. And I don't like to have to ask people to do it, you know, but I, I actually have to. And, and, uh, because this, this channel has to make money. It has to make enough money for me to convince my wife to let me keep doing this, okay? <laughs> it's as simple as that. And it makes sense, you know? If I could just go out and take a part-time job, I'd make $500 a week right now. They're paying people such a crazy amounts of money. All right, let's ring this bell here in two minutes and let's see this SoFi take off. They're coming at it right now, right out of the gate. You can see already they're going to use the $2 million they borrowed from their short supply and they're going to come right out of the gate and they're aiming for a 718 717, 716. Put your buy orders there now and get ready for them to try to shove it down in the first 10 to 15 minutes from 9.30 uh, to 9.45. That's my call. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Thank you, Dalton. Man, that's awesome. My uh, computer over here Come on, man. There it goes. All right. I just got a chance to put that back up. Well, I want you to know, folks. Yeah, they're going to bring this right now. And I'm going to be ready to buy it when it hits the bottom. Got my tablet all fired up. It's all charged up. It's ready to rock and roll. It's ready to buy. I probably should sign in here again just to make sure po password and I'm, I'm going to be flying folks. We're going to be buying. We're going to be looking at some other stocks this morning to make some quick money on. They're, they are these C R O N this one here. I expect to see a big pullback MPW. I could be wrong, but I'm looking for one on this at 945. We're going to watch it close. We're going to watch this one for a quick uh, money. Whoa, look at that. 25% down. I told you. Yesterday was up 568%. This was a new company. This is a just came out publicly traded, okay? They don't have any record. If you go to the one month, you'll see on the one month, that's March 26th, okay? All right? And if you're not following along today, what's the date? All right? It's March 28th. So this is the second day of trading. Just be aware of that. And we're looking for a pullback. And here we go, ringing the bell right now. Ringing the opening bell, and I'm telling you, they're going to try right here, right now, very quickly. It won't last long. There won't be any energy behind it. They don't have the strength or capability to shove this down at 7, 16, 17, 18, but they'll want to. 
They want to show their constituents that they got this thing running down. Look at the volume today. Only 569,000, and we generally see about 250,000 right here. I mean, 2.5 million, 2.5 million. All right, so we're going to watch this very closely here. 30,000 shares right there. There's 20,000 shares. We're going green on only 20,000 shares. Bam, that thing went green on 20,000 people. Oh, my goodness. Look at the size of the buys, 10,000 shares and green. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to count this out, folks. We're at 642, 643, 644, 665, a 21,000 share buy to run it up, 669, 671. Holy crap. Hit, folks, I want you to just go ahead, hit the like button right now. Let's smash it right now. we got 180 people. The time is 931 in the morning. Let's hit the like button. Let's get some more people. Tyson Durfee Green. Yes, we are, and we're going to be, oh, yeah, 707,000, folks, 710,000, 711, 711, 308, 309, 319. See the size of those buys? 711, 668, 669. And by the way, those are tiny buys to push it right back up green again. Holy crap. 723,000 now, 729, 733, 7. I'm calling it out because we're tracking the size of the buys. 737, 738, oh yeah, 743, 5,000 to bring it to 736, 5,000 share dump to make it go to 740, now we're at 746, 1,000 share buy, she jumps back up, 1,000 shares, she's jumping, 747, 748, 749, 749, now we want to quickly take a very quick look over here at these stocks. All right, I want to check up on these real quick. CRON is down 1%. All right, hold on. MPW. I want to be watching this one. These all made nice moves yesterday. Down just a little bit, not much on that one. This one made a 20% move yesterday, folks. I'm looking for a 945 catch on this one. GCTS. Twenty percent down right now, folks. Oh, come on. I love the chart. Thank you for being here with me right now. Load it up, load it up. There's so I have one penny in the red. Are you kidding me? No way. <laughs> 786,000 shares. GCTS, folks. And the volume is not that high on it yet here. Down 8% now. Oh, BITF. That was in the after hours to refresh this and see what they're doing right now. Ah, looking good. That was a good buy yesterday, folks. And there goes SoFi, back green again. Yes, indeed, folks. Go to home screen, please. I don't want any of this, no. All right, here we go. Let's make some money, everybody. Come on. Let's get in here and make some serious money. Let's get on in here and make some money. Oh, yeah, we in the green. Look at that sofa, everybody. Oh, yeah, ring the bell anytime, anywhere, ring it, ring it, ring it, ring it, oh, <laughs> yeah, baby. Well, my goodness gracious, and look at that, on 1 million shares traded, the price is off, folks. Josh, good morning to you. And you know what? 
I love the level of excitement at $7.41. I can't imagine where you guys are going to be when SoFi is at 10s and 11s and 12s and 13s and beyond. And it won't be that long, folks. Just be patient. I've already told you this darn thing is possibly going to run now over the next two and a half weeks, over $10 just prior a week to so, week to 10 before the earnings, then they'll pull it back down three days before earnings, and then they're going to launch it right on off like a rocket ship. That's my call, and you guys heard me tell you that yesterday, and I've been telling you this a long time, that this is what I see happening because I looked at the charts, and that's what they indicate, and I looked at the history, and that's what it indicates. It's very, very clear when you look at this six-month chart what our possibilities are here, and... uh I'm very encouraged by what I see. And I want to get on this one here, the one day chart here. And, you know, I was watching my guy, Hurricane Lopez. He's got this chart that shows this down line like this. I'm like, what the f is he looking at, man? What are you doing? This downward trend line. I'm like, man, there's no downward trend line, dude. You need to get your bifocals looked at. There's an upward trend line. It's called the 200 day. Okay, you better take a look at the 200 day there, my buddy over there, Hurricane. I love you, my friend, but geez, with this, this up down, this line you got going down like this, downward wedge, he calls it. Pfft, I'm sorry, I don't see that. The wedge is going up the crack of the ass of the shorters right now. <clears throat> Mary already sold, I bet, though. Yep, scared money don't make money. That's right, Tyson Durfee, that's right. Scared money doesn't make money. Scared money doesn't make money. <clears throat> but what's it doing now? Let's go look over at SOUN this morning. Let's see if we can get it to... Oh, my God. Look at that thing. <laughs> oh, my God. And we'll never see her again. She'll never be back once I kicked her out of the tank because she's not going to come back and, and swallow her what she said to me. That's right. She won't be back, people. But I'm grateful to her. I've now made a freaking 11% gain on that buy and Nice. SoFi breaking 750 right now, ladies and gentlemen. SoFi going to go over 750. That's right. Ah, Tyson, yeah, un poco más. Un poco más. <laughs> I tell you, well, over here, we got a lot more than a poco mas going on. We got a mucho mas going on over here, baby. Mucho mas. And the mucho mas chart looks like what I'm showing you right here with a gorgeous chart. There it is right there coming out. Kaboom. Look at that, baby. She's a pure thing of beauty, everybody. She's a thing of beauty. And pretty much something I've called. There's the call. I told you, folks. Those of you that are here on the channel have heard me tell you about this. I see it says, error, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming as such viewers will experience buffering. Don't worry. Low Country Loot and Pawn, welcome. And hello. <laughs> Low Country Loot and Pawn, welcome, welcome, welcome. We have many pawn shops here. We got, when we uh, were on the road, we had people coming in here from Dicker and Deal and, uh, there's another pawn shop here. I can't remember which one it was. They're all in here. I bet Mary saw where she uh, bought the classic Call the Dip, sm Smell the Rip. That's right. That's right. Sell the Dip and Smell the Rip. And what did I do? You, you saw what I did. I picked up my damn tablet and just started buying the shit out of it when she was calling me a dumbass, when she was chewing me out. Well, Mary, Mary, quite contrary. <laughs> and by the way, Mary, take a look at the price now. It's at six sixteen a share, okay? <laughs> and I know you didn't pay that much for it, so most likely. It'd be easy to tell what she paid if she bought the day before. She could have been right about here, right there. It's the most she could have paid on Tuesday. But I wouldn't have told her to buy it at the high, folks, on Tuesday. I would have told her to buy it down here, I'm sure. She she got it somewhere around here, you know, it maybe right at six. When, <clears throat> but she's sure not going to be losing any money. Unless she sold, like, like you just said, which is possible. 
your screen is stuck. Uh oh. Well, it says right here that I'm not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming as such viewers will experience buffering. Let me try and do something here. Hold on a second. The signal will come back up strong here in a, in a minute. We just got to let all the little youngsters get off the internet and get taken out of their houses and away to do things on this bright, sunny day today. Get outside. <sighs> let me see if we can speed this up. See if we can get this to work a little bit better. Just hold on here. But I do see for sure I'm still showing a display here. Hopefully we'll get this going again here. <clears throat> I'm refreshing the screen right now in case you happen to be watching. And it says that uh, we're not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Okay, I just refreshed the screen just now, and I see, yep, she said she bought it at $5.99. All right. Poor thing. <laughs> and look at it now. Jeez. Huh. All right, we're refreshing the screen right now. This is looking very interesting what's going on with this SoFi right here. <sighs> All right. We got it back. We got it back. Thank you for all being patient with me while we got this going back now. Uh, <clears throat> lost my train of thought where I was here a little bit ago, but uh, we're going to be looking at some other stocks this morning now. I'm going to take a quick look over here. CRON is down to 266. This might be a very good place to buy some of it. Oh, yeah, she's going green right now. 266 would have been at 932 this morning a good time to buy that. <laughs> oh, they came at it early, man. Not even 945. But they might come after it right now. We'll see. We'll see. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's see over here. MPW is not getting taken back too much. This one got taken back 20, 20% though. GCTS might be a good place right here. I want to thank you for being here right now. We got 51 on the channel. Don't hit the like button. We usually like to do that at the same time together. But uh, I honestly feel like this is going to be a very, very good day. A very low volume, steadily price increasing day. See, this gets to be a big problem for the shorters. They like to, to see more of a churn. Uh, it makes it easier for them to manipulate. And we got just gradual uh, wanters of the stock. And look at this thing going up here. Nobody seems to really want to turn it loose. That's the problem. Uh, there you go. 
don't worry, this signal is going to come back up here in a minute and it'll say excellent signal. And I don't know what is going on here with wow, but it'll soon say excellent signal. There we go. Look at that thing go, people. Look at SoFi on the run. Yes, indeed. Let's do this, folks. It's uh, 946 a.m. right now. And look at SoFi taking off. I'd like to ask all of you that are here, there are 67 current viewers right now. If you wouldn't mind doing me a quick favor, uh, in one and a half minutes, if you wouldn't mind at 948 hitting the like button with me. And, uh, and all the folks that are here will hit it together at the same time. And what has been happening lately is that ya ya uh, YouTube has really started to send my channel out to more and more people. And this was very evident yesterday. Normally, I'm seeing about 4,000 uh, send outs uh, per day on my channel to others to watch my channel on YouTube. Yesterday went up to 7,400 send outs. That this is a huge difference, folks, and and this is because of you guys. Two things happening: one, you guys doing that like button thing at the same time is is affecting, and I did put my ads back on that you can skip these ads. Okay, so they're back on, and then when you got more, like I was told, Ty, put your ads back on because YouTube will send you to more people, and that's true. I've gone from four thousand to yesterday with ads back on to 7,000 plus. And the more that get this sent this channel, the more people will come to more understand what's been going on with SoFi and why now's the time to buy it before it goes back over 10 again for the sixth time in a year and a half. All right, 10 seconds from hitting the like button. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Boom. And I don't mean boom. Don't boom it. Don't crash it. Don't bash it. Don't smash it. Don't crush it. Don't pound it. Just gently hit the like button, everyone, please. And for doing so, there will be a heart on the screen. A heart on the screen. Good morning from the Crypto MTG. Yes, yes. Good morning. My signal is suffering right now because all the little turdsters in the neighborhood have got on the internet with their big heavy duty gaming computers and they use up all the bandwidth of this narrow bandwidth available out here in the boonies where i live if you happen to be from across the the sea and you're in the in the places i've heard that i've been looked listened to in singapore and uh, other places in china and uh even south korea and so forth uh i like i talk a chinese sometimes uh, I don't have a good uh, vocabulary, but I can uh, talk a Chinese pretty good. So sometimes I change, I make it easier to understand what I say. I talk uh, Chinese very much like uh, people in America talk a Chinese. But I want you to know, I don't have problem with Chinese people. I like a Chinese for folk a lot. I like a Chinese, they make a good friend. And I like a friend, Chinese. But I don't want to make them feel like I'm t talking about them in this way because I try to make fun of them. I not do this. I talk in this way a many different language. You hear here on the channel, come hear me talk a Chinese. And I you I could teach you how to talk a Chinese too if you want to learn how to talk a Chinese, by the way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uncho Kong did it. Oh, everybody, I hit a like button same time. I sit here talk a Chinese, not even think a dude that hit the like button same time. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, and like I say, I'm not a make fun because I can change and talk a, all language. If my hat still would jump right over and talk, talk, talk a little bit of Irish for you folks. Because again, we're Irish right down here into the depths of our soul. Our blood is green. <laughs> And so if you want to, you can hang out here with Cat Fitz when he's on an Irish day. And if you did, you were here with me on St. Patrick's Day and we had ourselves a good time. Uh, look at that there. Uh, my friend Bert Berenson uh, says he lost a whole calorie hitting the like button for me. Uh, thank you folks for being here. 
Uh, we are talking about the stock SoFi, and we are talking in about SoFi in many different ways. <laughs> and uh, for those of you that are here, you're here for entertainment purposes. This is not, I'm not a financial advisor. I make zero guarantees. I cannot promise you that everything that I tell you you should buy or suggest it's time to buy some of is going to go up. But I can tell you one thing, I'm very happy with what I did yesterday purchasing this stock, S-O-U-N, at the bottom when I got my bottom chewed out. And I'm glad Mary came over here and chewed me out good so I can make so much damn money. Jeff Presley, <laughs> Lee Armstrong. <laughs> That's right, you want to talk a Chinese, you come to right play. <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to talk a Chinese. Every next time you meet a Chinese in the street, you'll be able to talk just like me, and they're going to hit you, probably. <laughs> they think you make a fun of them. <laughs> By the way, I talk a serious now. Don't do this to the people in China when you talk. I teach you type of Chinese. You talk only here on channel with me. Understand? <laughs> oh, my goodness. You got to see the different makeup. You got to hit the like button. All we suddenly, we jump on 60 people on channel now. We got 80 people thinking I'm crazy guy. <laughs> but I am crazy guy. <laughs> I just a crazy old man. <laughs> talk, a chi talk a Chinese. <laughs> Or something like a Chinese, Oriental. We, we not try to be a specific. I try to cross a oh, Oriental. We call it together. We put combine. <laughs> Everybody, just <laughs> don't. If you're new to the channel, don't think of this way. I talk all the time. I'm not Chinese, okay? I just sound like Chinese. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, <laughs> We, well, I just, I don't also want to let you know, you would talk a Chinese uh, finance. I talk a, you know me, I Chinese, I talk, I, I know what I talk about. I go with math. <laughs> Everybody come over here, talk a Chinese, Chinese with me. <laughs> you do it, and I say, I'm not trying to discriminate. I like, I talk the same way, everybody. You come from the, all walk of life, anywhere you come from, I like, I talk like a you. You're not going to feel at home if I not accept you in, talk your language you're familiar with. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Let's get back in touch with reality. <laughs> the, the land of catfish Tyler's make-believe, it's very complex and uh, it can be for some disorienting. So let's get back tuned in. I want to reel things down. Let's drop it a notch. Do a little golf voice for you. <laughs> Juju Bees is laughing. <laughs> uh, you, you can't always be talking about business people. You can't always just keep it going. I mean, how many things can you say about SoFi? that haven't already been said, okay? And at some point in time, you have to mediate over into something that will still keep people entertained. But in the same sense, you know, um, we, we just can't keep plowing in the field. Every once in a while, we gotta get over there and jump in the pool and splash around a little bit, right? All right, so that's what I do. <laughs> William Fenwick says, stop that shit, laughing my ass off. <laughs> Okay, I take it easy on you. I know we got a bunch of wimps out here on channel. Can't take a tiny. <laughs> I stop a talk of Chinese. Don't want people pee pant. <laughs> Don't want <laughs> have to keep underwear dry. <laughs> Undergarment. <laughs> uh, take you. Thank you for all the laughter we have on channel together. All you people understand. Catfish and Tyler, just here. Have a good time. <laughs> We, we not try to offend anybody. All walk of life, we love you all. Everybody. <laughs> now, I'm here to tell you, 
he, we've lost a lot of viewers here talking like this here. So maybe it's time to switch on over to me southern <laughs> southern accent. Maybe I can wheel it out from here. Y'all see it like a curveball coming at you. <laughs> Hit you right between the eyes. <laughs> There's all kinds of ways of here where I can deliver this here stuff. All right. <laughs> You're not going to have to sit here and listen to the same old ridiculousness come out of me mouth all the time. There's just Southern Irishman talking to you. <laughs> well, we're going to have some fun here, though. Make this here price time right, right around and jump on off the page. <laughs> Y'all just hold on to yourselves. Just wait and you can, you have to hear sometimes you just got to tighten up your belt, see? And you got to just take yourself up off the ground and dust yourself off. <laughs> and then you got to make your move. Okay. And we're doing it right now here. You're going to see today. So far, going to get on out here. She gone. Okay. You didn't miss it. You're not missing your opportunity there. You better get yourself some of this right here at 739 or you ain't going to get her. You got it? You get her now, right now, shorty, 9.46 a.m. I'm calling it like I sees it. You get yourself some air 7.39 or this thing's going to explode all over you. And you ain't going to be able to get her off. That stuff is sticky. <laughs> you can watch and see here. I'm going to keep her coming just like this here for a bit because it looks like it's having a positive effect on her stock. So long as we do something and she starts going up, we're going to stick with it. Kind of like wearing a rusty old hat, you know, you got on you that it's just your lucky hat. Especially if you're fishing. You know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> Juju B says, I done lost all my Asian viewers there. They done kicked them out in the tank. Well, I figure we're not going to just kick them out. There's so many folks down there around the south parts of the United States, we're going to see them bustling on out of here soon, right on the tails of them there Asians. <laughs> and you know what? We don't give a shit on this channel whether they stick around for this here stuff or not. It don't matter. We're here to have some fun while we watch and make a bunch of money. This is all bottom line. <laughs> we ain't here to mess around none. <laughs> we're serious folk. <laughs> you guys... Gee, Picker, I love how you speak in Chinese. Could you talk in Spanish, Puerto Rico, in the house? Ah, uh, see, yeah. yes, my friend. We can bring this to You don't have to think about it that one second. I got to. Uh, you got to give me a se se second or two to kind of get my mind around it, okay? Just give me, because I'm on some other now. You got me on another course of action. We're going to switch on over back to you know, what you requested, but it takes a minute for me to kind of sit there and kind of, you know, ponder about it <laughs> for a spell. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, now, listen, <laughs> I don't want anybody here who you hear me talking like this right now think I have a bad time. <laughs> We, <laughs> Foga, he speaks Spanish. <laughs> the folks on <laughs> uh, So they say to me, hey, hey, gringo, are you here yet? <laughs> Have you come? They like me to come to talk to them. <laughs> and I talk, talk in their language. I'm not, I'm honestly <laughs> not so good in Spanish. In Spanish, I uh, can give by a little bit, I speak a bit, but uh, no, no, don't get me wrong. I can do it, but uh, not as good as I speaking, you know, Spanish, not not as good for me. I'm learning, I'm learning, learning how to speak Spanish, uh, but uh, as you can see, <laughs> not, not, gringo, gringo loco is not, not very good at Spanish. I have to admit right out the very very beginning here. I, I will try to talk in any any language, but I am not I, I'm not an expert at uh, the Spanish <laughs> yet. But I will get better at it. I promise you, my friends, all of you. I when I will come back tomorrow and I will have gotten better at. 
uh, forgetting that my wifey take, tell me not to say this because I want to be here tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, Henry says he would rather talk about stocks than talk with the Spanish people, folks. So we will not do that anymore, but we're having a good time. And I'm not to make offend to just uh, Spanish people because I like uh, all the people from all everywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Damn, you might be a Bama boy talking like that. Oh, I done got, you know, I'd hung down in them parts of time. I know how to do that. There stuff there, <laughs> y'all. You can't. You can't. You can't get that one there. I'm fluent in that. And <laughs> don't worry about. It. I got no problem. I can. I can throw that at you all day long. <laughs> and y'all just be changing the channel. Going, damn, this here boy. He don't even want to talk no stocks no more. He's done lost his mind. But <laughs> I'm gonna talk stocks. Don't worry. Don't worry. I hear you, Henry. <laughs> We're just trying to have some fun while we talk about stocks. Now, let's jump over here and see why we should be talking about SoFi. Well, I'm going to show you right now. We don't want to offend anybody here. Right now, the short's got a long time to cover, and they are piling in 209 million shares. 209 million shares shorted. In case you don't know about this, shares shorted fails to deliver has been jumping up hugely. This will be passed upon quickly just to redo a fresh. Those of you that don't know, recently they failed to return lots of shares. <clears throat> They've re failed to return 328,361, 963,000. They have failed to return many more, 1,267,000, failed to return 11,000,000, 2,000,000, and none of these shares have been returned. Here at this point, they actually, on the January 23rd, failed to return 40 million shares almost. They still don't have them returned, have not returned any of these through the end of January, the beginning of February. They have not returned any of these 2,000,000, 2,000,000, 1,000,000, 2,000,000, they have not returned those. They are holding these shorted shares and they are losing money on them like they're losing today. And they're going to continue to lose money on them today because they have run it down to the lowest they could get it, which are far distant ways. 730, look at the day's range, 732. That only happened in the pre-market, folks. That was only in the, the pre-market. Don't be confused, okay? They did not get that during the daytime. And if they did, it would have been in the first second of the day. There were 736, you can see right there. And so I don't see when they got it. Some of you guys have proven to me before that they do it in the first minute, but that's all they can do. They, that just goes you how desperate they are and how, how fruitless it is, their efforts to keep the price down. Uh -huh. G Picker says, good try. Thank you. All right. Now, I want you to know that very early this morning, I got up and I went over here and I went to... Um, SoFi in the news, I wanted to find out what was going on, uh, and I did a Google search, and for the last uh, 24 hours, I stumbled on this awesome, awesome site called Trustpilot, and I got here to Trustpilot because of Google, all right? I did a Google search, and I just put in SoFi Technologies, and I put in last uh, 24 hours for the news segment, and I found this about halfway down the page, 8,096 reviews, excellent, on SoFi and how their banking system works online, okay? And every one of these people did everything online and they got their money in just days. They were all completely happy. Every one of them, there's just a, a few exceptions to this rule, folks. There's just one that wasn't completely satisfied there that you saw on that page. And I want you to know, everyone will just talk about how easy it is and how short a time it took to get it. And so I just want to pass that along to you in case you didn't see that already this morning. I'm looking at a stock here called this one right here, DJT, all right? And as you can see, it is now in fast forward mode. And you can see that they drove it red and then it went green and then they drove it red and it went green and now it's going greener. This is in fast forward mode. It's in very fast. It is going up. It's going down. It's going up. It's going up more. There it goes up even more. Now back down. Oh, barely now into the red briefly. This is all here in the last few hours, folks. 
<clears throat> this is what has been happening with the stock. And I wanted you to see it now. And in the pre-market, you could see the price 69.65. Okay. And uh, this is a Donald Trump media stock. And I want you to be aware of it now. BITF is running. All right. Thank you for that. I appreciate you letting me know that. BITF is running. Well, what do you know? And that was a great buy yesterday. Everybody who came in there when I told you in the morning. That was a great buy. Well, there goes SoFi. There she blows, everybody. There she blows, SoFi. Watch everybody start pouring over to this channel now here because all of a sudden SoFi is going to take off through the roof right now and nobody can explain why. Nobody but Catfish Ty can explain why. Well, because they've done it so many times. They're going to take this up over $10, folks. They're going to take it over 10 and then they're going to pull it back right before the earnings and then they're going to shove it right on up to the ozone. That's my call and I do it because of history and I showed you all that before, why that is and it's on the historical data chart. You can see what they did before July the 31st when SoFi hit the highest it's ever been in the last year and a half and that was $11.70. And I showed you after that, I showed you exactly what happened the last time. The sequence of the events before January the 31st in July, when SoFi hit the highest price it's ever been. I showed you coming up here into November and December, right before January 31st, which is when SoFi hit its highest price it had ever been. I mean, I'm so talking about July 31st last year. Hold on. Not January, July, another J month. There it is. July 31st, price hit 1170 but prior to that, on 210 million shares that day, it shoved it to 1170. Prior to that, 10 days before, nine days exactly, it had hit 1013 and was driven down to 894 three days before. I expect them to do the same thing. So right now, if you go back to how how far 30, we're right now 36 days away from our earnings call, which is going to become on April the 6th, and I'm, I'm going to address that with you everybody as well. We had seen that they had a prediction that SoFi was going to do their earnings on April the 29th. And uh, even uh, several of us had posted and, and done the research and said it was estimated for the 29th of uh, April. Now, I want to know, I want to tell you why I, someone commented yesterday, I don't like if they move back to the 6th uh, of April, I mean, uh, May, instead of uh, April 29th. Uh, why did they go? They didn't ask why. They just said they didn't like that that the delay had been put in place. But I want, I'm here to profess that I like that delay. All right. And there's a reason that I like that delay from the 29th until that time. Okay. And and, and I think it's because, and I could be wrong, but because of course, I always say this, but to me, moving that earnings call from the 29th to that date puts them in a position where they can possibly have a GDP come out right before that says, yes, we're lowering the rate, interest rate. They came out this last time and be aware that they reported that they weren't going to, they were going to hold steady right now, but they still see building in three rate reductions this year. All right. Well, so my suggestion is that because of that, Anthony might have thought, huh, this next one, they might lower rates and that would have, give us a nice little boost leading into then the positive earnings call and you double down, boom, boom, off she goes. So maybe there's a possibility we see a nice move on the GDP, making a decision to go ahead and lower interest rates a half or whatever percent they do. And then that will move us up Someone mentioned the other day, for every interest percentage that they bring this, we'll see a 10% change in SoFi's. Uh, if, they, if, if they lower interest rate for every percent down, we should see a 10% move. I honestly feel like we got way more than a 10% move in store. I think we got a 30% move. And I think we got a 30% move because on July the 30th, uh, 31st, 
when SoFi hit the pri highest price it ever was of 1170 exactly one month and one week before that. And here it is. Here's June the 30th. But one week before, look where the price was, 771 Isn't it ironic that one week before now, one week and one month before, and this is when it happened, folks, because the 30th, and this is the 23rd, the price was one week and one month away from the July 31st. And on that date, they ran it down to the lowest. What a coincidence that we were almost identical this time around. But now, from that one week before the first, and then from there, the next 30 days, what did the price do? Okay. All right. Well, from 771, one week before, we already know that they drove it all the way up and it went 10 days, nine days before to 1013. I see that happening now. And then they pulled it back to this 894, six days later, and the next day they ran it up to 1170 on 210 million shares. <clears throat> and you want to know why they did that? <laughs> because they, they could, they could make it happen. That's why they did it, because they could make it happen. So your question you should be asking yourself is, if they can drive this down from 771 one week and one month away from earnings, then couldn't they drive it down to 682? And if it went from 771 to 1170 on earnings day, not to mention having gone over 10 and back down to 894, all right? But that is a nice increase from that number 771 to 10. I mean, it's just incredible, incredible the increase. And I think it's coming our way again. <clears throat> and I think we're going to see, like I said, from right now to nine days before, we should be over $10. And we should see, then see a pullback for six days and then bam off. If they repeat itself, if the history repeats itself. And it might not do that at all. I can't make any guarantees. But I sure like what I'm seeing right now. I sure like what I'm seeing right now on this chart. I sure like this daggum volume down here as low as it is, folks. We were seeing that in the first minute of trading last week. First minute of trading, it was already there. You ought to be asking yourself, why can't the shorts make this price fall right here now? Why aren't why are we profitable on a freaking which would amount to a Friday? We will not be trading tomorrow. The market is not open tomorrow, so you so you're aware of it. It's for Good Friday. The market will be closed. Just so you're aware. So this is it, folks. This is going to be an excellent, I I feel like it's going to be an excellent three weeks ahead of us with a price that could easily be again driven up over $10 between now and earnings. And then down a little and then off on up on earnings. That's my prediction based on history and how they've done it before. And how interesting the price is 50 cents higher than it was a week ago. Nice. And by the way, that's the nice gradual increase they like. They don't want to make things too obvious of what they're doing. They make it gradually climb up. They just gradually work it up. Higher highs and higher lows every damn day. And I ask you this question. <laughs> if the powers that can be come out on May the 15th last year and have David Chiavrini hit a target price, an analyst with a zero star rating, and then they can borrow 3 million shares that day. I tracked it for you to show you. And then on May the 15th, with the help of David Chiverini and their borrowed shares running the volume from 44 million to 103 million, if they can make that price fall to 445 and in less than one month, have it go up 125 to 1023, don't you think they can do it again? 125% gain from 445. Folks, I got news for you. Those convertible notes that they just put out, they put out at a price of $7.27 a convertible note. And this thing is already at 740 and climbing. And if they can make it go from 445 in 29 days up to 1023, which is more than double, can't they make it go from 741 to $14? In 29 days? You might think that sounds crazy, but I think they can. 
And I don't think that they all took those convertible notes so they could make 1.25% interest on their on their money. They could make better than that going down to the local bank, their local community bank, and putting it in theirs in their in their savings account and, and get interest on it better than 1.25% buying CDs. Okay. But they didn't do that. They bought these convertible notes because they want to make the price go to $12.29 and then cash them out and make a profit at $9.45 a share, and they'll have made 30% gain on that, not 1.25, folks. Now, that price of $12.29, it has to be maintained for two out of three weeks. But once that price is maintained for two out of three weeks, boom, they can convert those shares. I think most of them are going to convert them into shares and not cash. I don't think they're going to cash them in. I think they're going to say, nope, we want to just, we want to convert these notes over to shares. And that's why the price went down to 682 last week, folks. The offer was made. The brokers had to get the price down because the offer was made at 727 a share. And those damn brokerage house, that they were able to buy at 682 to 699. They got all those shares. And now look where it is, 742 a share and rising. What a surprise. On its way to 1229, as far as I see. Henry lets us know that PLTR is on a dip. Thank you for letting me know that. James Roberts, oh, this week of all weeks. Poor Mary. I thought Mary's had suffered enough on Holy Week, but apparently there was more in her in store for them. <laughs> Can we take a moment for Mary's tears? Yes. As a matter of fact, I have a song titled that. Go over to YouTube and listen to it right now. Maybe we should play it right now. You want to hear it on the guitar? M.M. <laughs> M. Loxman. M.M. M. Loxman, I, I, I know that you've been here before. I remember that briefly, but you're not a frequenter. But to thank you for being here, hello. And, and maybe you're the first time. I don't know. That's not a real familiar. Hello, M.M. M. Loxman. And I just want to address you specifically because I, I do not remember your name being here very, very frequently. So anytime I see someone new, I like to address them and give them a little wave and say, thank you for being here. It's as simple as that. And so that's what I'm going to do right now to you. Uh, because I know that not often if you have ever been here before that you're here now. And uh, so I'm saying greetings to you. Uh, <clears throat> Oh yeah, there it's going there, people. They're gonna get it back up over there. If they can make it go from four fifty five to ten twenty three, and then they can make it go back down because that next day after it hit ten twenty three, they called up three analysts: Piper Sandler, Bank of America, and and uh, Oppenheimer, and they said downgrade this stock, man. We shorted it at four forty five a share of less than a month ago. It's at ten twenty three. God save us. And they did the very next day, June the 15th, the very next day they came out June the 15th and they smashed it with a downgrade, <laughs> triple analyst downgrade, stock price crashes. Yep. They crashed it right down to 771. Thank, did they, thank God they did, because at that point on June the 14th, folks, as I've shown others here before, they had completely run out of shares. From May the 15th, they made the trap, and they thought they were going to get the price to fall to 225. And May the 15th, they, on that day, there were 6.5 million shares. But to drive it down, they used 3 million, 3.2 million shares, more than that. <laughs> they used a whole crap load of shares, people to make it go down on that May the 16th. And then the price just started rising and rising and rising. And by June the 14th, less than one month later, they only had freaking that many shares left, 350,000 left. And they had to call all those guys and say, please downgrade this stock. Yeah, I show every new people person to this channel, the history and how it was done. This was on June the 14th, go back, Look what, see, you see what happened. And me, which means, oh my goodness, 
Mezamim means, well, my friends is what it means. But it's a way that Haitians say, my goodness, Mezami. <laughs> Mezami on June the 14th, after the price hit the high of 1023 on 128 freaking million shares. Look at the look at the people surging in. 84 million, 117, 108. Problem for them was just they had had it down just months before to 16 million a share a day and 15 million a day. Suddenly all of those encouragement People were like, oh my God, look at this SoFi stock. It's It keeps breaking records. It keeps revenues growing, more and more customers, stealing away customers. And the price was going mad on them, got to 1023. And they come out with a triple downgrade. Analysts, and the funny thing is, I showed you yesterday, Yahoo's headline that says five analysts. Five analysts, my ass. There were only three and every one of them had downgraded us to a higher target price than it was before. And they all said, well, we had to downgrade them because they were so much higher than the rest of the market right now. No one else in that industry is doing that good. So we had to downgrade them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I tell it like it is. RC, good morning. Midwest Cannabis, glad to see you. Yep. Chris Beth with Good Morning Catfish. Thank you very much. All of you, welcome. <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome as we watch SoFi in defiance of anything they could possibly do. And I want to show you something here, folks. Look at yesterday's low. Look at yesterday's low. Oh, by the way, after they made that phone call on June, the, uh, when they didn't have any shares left to borrow, after they made that phone call, the price was back down to 771. One week later, six days later, 771, everyone. And from there, it went right back up over 10. Boom, 1013. So that's how they play the game, folks. They run completely out of shares to short with on June the 14th. They're desperate and they make a phone call to three different analysts and say, please downgrade this. We've only got 350,000 shares left and the volume's reached 128 million a day. We need you to help us, save us, please downgrade so far. We don't care, we'll pay you to do it. Yeah, oh yeah, that's what they did. That's what they did. <laughs> then they got to return them all. See, got to return them all. Yay, good for them. <clears throat> good for them. Uh, then they ran out of shares completely on December the 23rd. And that became a major problem for them all the way to January 14th. And that's when they really had to get themselves in deep duty. During this period of time, folks, they didn't have any shares. And as you can see very clearly, they started to fail to return shares in a big way. And they failed to return the most on this date, January 23rd. 39 million shares. Oh, January 23rd. January 19th through January 29th, they didn't have a damn share to borrow anymore. They couldn't do anything. They got stuck with all those shares. 39 million on that day, folks. January 23rd. The reason they could not return the borrowed shares, this is called naked shorting, people. There were none left. January the 23rd from the 19th until the 29th, there were zero shares to borrow. And look how thin it's been getting lately for them. You can see over here, they only had 85,000 shares left to borrow on March the 21st, folks. Nine days ago, eight days ago, they did not have any shares left. They're at the same point they were here. And by the way, in case you didn't realize it, look what SoFi stock price did from January 19th until January the 29th. Look at it. Look what it did from January the 19th when they didn't have any shares to January the 29th. I'll come down here and show you. I think you'll find this interesting. You should. <clears throat> When they had no shares left in the end on January 29th. There it is. SoFi's price went from 862 on January the 29th. It was at 945. I want you to be aware on this date, January 19th, when it hit the low, that was this day right here when they borrowed every share they had. January 19th, they had 10 million and they borrowed them all 
to make the price fall to 721. And then they had none. And the price jumped from 721 up $2.24. Because guess what? They didn't have any left after that 19th January. They were out of them. And that's how they got themselves in this pickle where they got stuck with 40 million shares that they're still holding. And where was the price on January 23rd, just in case you want to know? Well, the price on January the 23rd was at 814 to 773. Where is it sitting now? Below that. You'd think they would return those shares right now, but God, no, nope, nope. They still haven't returned them. Anyway, I, I, I'm re being redundant for people who've been here before, but I just try to let me make sure you understand the reason that SoFi's numbers drop to these numbers that they do of 721 is because they borrowed 10 million shares that day. And out of the 39 million traded, one quarter of them, 25% were shorted shares. And they couldn't return them on the 31st when they were supposed to. They couldn't return them. They didn't have them. They didn't even have any more shares to borrow on January the 23rd. That's why they got stuck with them. And they still have them now. They still have them now. And they have shorted positions from 721 a share too. So now they're 40 cents down on the shorter positions at 721 that day when they ran it down on the 19th. See that? On the 19th, when they ran it down, when they borrowed all those shares right here on the, on the 19th, January the 19th, when they borrowed 10 million shares right there, that's the day they did it and they used them all, every single one of them. When they did that on the 19th, they were shorting the stock down and they shorted it on that date. January 19th at 721. So those that have between the price of a high of 750 and 721, do you see now why 750 becomes such a level for us to get beyond here? All right. Making sure and hopefully this makes sense to you guys so you can understand how exactly what they did and how they did it. All right. And what they got stuck with. They've, they've still got this. This just got added more to their bag. And buddy, I'm telling you, that bag is getting heavier and heavier and heavier. Then heavier and heavier. And you know, we're at a record all-time high amount of shares being shorted right now. This is it. We've never had it any higher. They're digging a the hole deeper, folks. And it's going to backfire on them. Anthony Noto is going to teach them a lesson here soon. <clears throat> You guys may not know this either. I'll show you this. Let's go over here. Owners. Institutional ownership. <clears throat> right now, folks, we're about to cross over 800 institutions. There used to be, by the way, I'm going to point out, 32 long and short. There's 29 now. I'm going down here on this because I want you to see something that's pretty amazing. This is what's been happening as of late. And you can go way back in time and you'll find out that there was never this kind of volume in these kind of institutions coming in before on SoFi. Um, and I'm going to get this to pull up here in a second. It is, it's loading right now. There we go. All right. When you have a company as big as Vanguard, who's the top holder of shares in SoFi, increase their position from 68 million to 81 million shares in the last month and increase their ownership in SoFi and their portfolio by 15%. This is Vanguard Group. You all know who they are. That's where you should be following the money. Coming down here, and watching what happened yesterday, the 27th. I want you to see this is an index fund. This is not an ETF. This is not the type of funds that help shorts. This is a long only 
They're going long. They're acquiring 290,120 shares. They increased the value of their portfolio in SoFi by 7%. And I want you to know that every time you see one like this that goes out 100% that they had a put on SoFi, okay? They were shorting it and they got out completely. Noroma Holdings, Inc. If you go to the, open the FinTel and look at you can get to institutional shorting institutions. This one was on it. Nomura Holdings was on that list. I remember because I went and looked at this list yesterday on, on SoFi to see what institutions were shorting SoFi. And Sean Shaw is one of them, Shaw. Look at this here, though. Folks, this is recent. This is another, this is a total market index fund. Index fund here, index fund here. Index fund, people, increasing by 9.57%. Again, this is not an ETF. These are long only, strictly long. They don't day trade. They don't buy long and short. They are completely long, and they're adding to their positions. They're not new, or we would have seen the number jump up from 799 to 800, but they're adding Yesterday, they're adding 9.5%. This one here, Fidelity, another index fund. That's three in a row right there. And here's another one, four, and another one, five. And they're all increasing. That one there, it's increased by 28%, people. 28%. And BlackRock, do you ever hear of BlackRock? increased by 3.64. They were already, I think, number two sh shareholder of SoFi stock. Folks, when you see this many index funds buying in on one day, this is just yesterday. All right. Today's the 28th. This is the 27th. Follow the freaking money. Look at this one here on the 27th. Another index fund increases by 28%. This one down here, this is an uh, index fund <laughs> on the 27th, increased by 5.71%. Another one here, an index fund, God, 8% increase. BlackRock even makes another entry, increases by 8.46%, everybody. This was yesterday. Man, here's an ETF coming in. And look at that. This is a this is an ETF. See, they're a day trader. They're at their ETF. This is a the hedge fund. And look at them. They dropped 38% of their account. They got out. They they said, geez, man, <laughs> this is this is not looking good. These charts don't look good to us. Let's get out some more. Let's leave this, leave a little more. But look here. It's one of our competitors, Charles Schwab. They wanted to buy us out in 2017. They made an offer to SoFi to buy us out in 2017. Anthony said, sorry, not enough. They increased their position by 8.31% on the 26th. They didn't just do it there. Go on down here. They did it more than once. Schwab came in big time in many ways. I'm going to show you in a minute. On the 26th. You can see right here, this one came in for and increased by 7%. This one increased by 14%. This one, High Point Advisor, increased by 135%, everybody. Okay? This one here, increased by 3.82. Here's Schwab again, increasing 7.21%, 427,000 shares. Charles Schwab again. Right here, index fund, index fund, Charles Schwab index fund to raises 3.69%. Charles Schwab, another fund, index fund, raises 1.32%. You see Charles Schwab coming in here, folks? Look at this other here, index fund up 3%. This one here, Morningstar alternatives fund up 31%. This one here, large cap. Up 36%, people. Wake up. Follow the freaking money. 
you see how many of these are per day? The reason I'm showing you this is that if you go way back in SoFi's history, I want you to see something. There it were nothing like this coming back in. And I'm going to come down here and show you. You never saw just a few months ago, you would sometimes see in just one day, you would see one or two or just three. And this wasn't long ago, folks. I'm going to show you now. Look back here in January. On the January the 2nd, one institution, January 3rd, one institution, January 4th, one, January 8th, there was four days with none, one, two, three on the 8th, then on the 10th, of the 9th, one institution, okay? There was hardly any institutions adding to their positions back there just in January, folks, and suddenly... I'm showing you a massive increase of tons of institutions suddenly start coming in every day. And it gets bigger. You can see here on January 13th, just two institutions. On the 16th, there was four, five, six. Here on the 17th, there was seven, eight. There on the 18th, there was more. It got up to 10 and then 12. And then on the 19th, it got very few on the 19th. None until the 22nd where there was four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 23rd, it got a little bit more, 24th, I'm just coming up to January 24th, now you can see how many bought on January the 24th, Whew. January 24th, wonder what happened then, January 24th, just give me a second here folks, I want to show you man, all these facts that I will show you about SoFi will help you be enlightened, January 24th, the price had gone from 773. They drove it down to 753. And just a week later, it was at 940. <whistles> January 24th. All those institutions, boy, they sure came in there on the 24th. January 25th. Now you got up to here again. Look at that. All the institutions on the 25th. The 26th. More coming. A few there. There was only six on the 26th. But now. Folks, things are changing. January 29th, look at all those institutions. And they're all, they're not new institutions coming in. They're fortifying their portfolio on January the 29th. All those came in there on the 29th when the price hit 945, folks. Ah. Then you come in here into February. And oh my God, everybody, we're starting to break amazing records here in February. <clears throat> Look down here on February the 2nd, February the 1st. You only had about 10 each day there in February 2nd. Uh, on the 5th, you got about 8 or 10 there. On the 6th, you've got 8 or 10 there. But I got a surprise for you. On the 7th, here we go. 8 or 10 there. 8th, 10, 12, 20 on the 8th. Look here, though. <clears throat> now you got another 20 on the 9th, 25, even almost close to 30. And what's happening through the price as it approaches the 13th of February? Let me show you. It's dropping and it's dropping and it's dropping to 820 to 778 on February the 13th. And I want to show you this. What happened on February the 13th? Look how many institutions came in when they drove the price down to that there on the 13th. One, two, three, four, five. At Y Incept is five. Hold on, I'm going to make this where I can get a bit bigger screen here. Y Incept was five. Now they're at the bottom of the screen. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen institutions as of peak six. Scroll down, peak six, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four institutions. Twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. Uh oh. As of Renaissance, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37 on the 13th as of FMR, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47 institutions on the 13th, 48, 49, 50, 51, BlackRock being one of them, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. You see how many institutions came in? Jeffrey's Financial. I mean, look at all these institutions. 
And folks, that's nothing. On the next day, on the 14th, when SoFi's price was no longer driven down to 778, they could only get it down to 810 to 843. I got news for you. I've already counted them. On this day, on the 14th, 141 institutions, 141 institutions. Scroll up here. You can see from shock up management. Let's just count the green ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 right there. 12 right above Allen Investment. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Look at State Street. 18, 19, 20, 21. Goldman Sachs, 22, 23. Right here, Management LLC is 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. On the 14th, folks, when the price was only 810 for a low, all these were in there. 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. I'm telling you, I'll just keep going. 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, <clears throat> 59, 6, 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 70. And it goes on up and it goes into 80 and it goes on up and it goes to 90 and it goes on up and it goes to 100. And then it goes up 10 more and it goes to 110 and on the 14th, now 120. I hope this makes sense to you, folks. When the price of SoFi was between 810 and 843, 141 institutions averaged down when the price was 788. All right, so just be aware of it. We're going back up over that now. You can see, look at that thing. There's going to be a resistance at $7.50. Now, I got 92 here on the screen with me right now at this time, 105. I'd like to ask you to do me a favor, please. Hit the like button for me here, and we're going to do this. Hit the like button simultaneously, and don't do it right yet. We're going to hit it at the same time. The time right now, I'm going to click on here and show you the time, and we're going to click it at 10.42.48. 10.42.48. Please hit the like button at the same time at 10.42.48. Let's get this likes up to about 75 if we could. And I want you to know, folks, what I'm showing you here is SoFi is going ballistic, just like I, I told you it was going to do. And we're going to see now 2 2 to 3% per day up for the next until uh, 10 days or 9 days before uh, we come out. Uh, then we'll drop. Uh, 9 days before, we'll be over $10. Then they're going to drop it. So here we go, folks. 1042.48, we just missed it. <laughs> Let's just make it 1043.08. All right, here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Please hit that like button right now for me. And let's get this thing up to 75 or 80 likes or something. Muhammad, SoFi is flying now. That's right. SoFi is on the rise. Volume coming in. Ah, David G, Catfish, my man, I didn't hit the like button yet. Waiting for your approval. Thank you. Bearded Bassett, good morning to you. Oh, I just see all these people I've been missing. <laughs> uh, uh, shorts are running today. Good try. BITF -B -B running. Yep, PLTR on the dip. PLTRs on the dip, in case you didn't know. On this week of all weeks, poor Mary. I thought Mary's had suffered enough on Holy Week. <laughs> but apparently there was more in store for them. Can we take a moment for Mary's tears? Yep, that would be nice. Right, yep. Uh, Chris Bedwith, good morning. Midwest Cannabis, good to see you. RC, good morning. David, David G. Catfish, my man. I didn't hit the like button yet. Waiting for your approval. The Bearded Bassett, good morning. MPV2526. So are the shorts going to short so far today to bring it down low? No. <laughs> M.M. Locksman, Berkshire. Yeah, oh yeah. James Roberts, I'm here. Yeah. All right, James Roberts. Tyler, any reason why Palantir is getting crushed today? Yeah, because they're up about 100% in the last month and a half or two. <laughs> um, I don't know. I haven't looked at the headlines yet. Let me check it. Options will keep it below 750 Why the games they played. Sad so if I should be at $15. Oh, don't worry. They won't. They won't keep it there. Uh, volume coming in. Yep. SoFi on the rise. SoFi is flying now. I see it. And I'm going to see it continue to rise. And I'm going to watch it rise just like it did from May 
when the price was four dollars and fifty five cents to ten twenty three. Then they're going to run it back down. We're going to get it again low. We're going to sell it again when it goes over to twelve twenty nine. <laughs> We're going to make a lot of money off of this stock, folks. We're going to make a lot of money on it. And uh, we got uh, we got this thing taken off, and everybody starts jumping over here on my channel. You guys hitting that like button at the same time. Look at that. We jumped up to eighty four likes. Thank you. All right. So far. They just can't beat her. Yeah, she's so fine. Uh, keeps looking sweeter. Yeah, she's so fine. Ha! Ah, they can suck my. <laughs> and now we won't say it. <laughs> but we might play it. I'm talking about so fine. Look at that sound now up 3%, everybody. I bought that thing down 4.5% yesterday when it was down 4.5%. Thank you, Mary. Mary gives a gift that keeps on giving. Yep. MPW. Well, there was the pullback at 945, and I didn't catch it. Dang. Look at that. They ran it down to 463. I told you we'd be watching that one. Shucks. And I didn't watch it. I got distracted. G. Oh, my gosh. Look at this dang thing. G-C-T-S. Don't touch this, folks. Don't look at that. I'm going away from it. Don't look at that. All right. BITF, everybody. How do you like that? After buying that at the low yesterday, somebody asked me, are you buying any more at the low? And I said, man, I wish I would have, but I told everybody else to. I did. I said, hey, guys and gals, now's the time. Just like yesterday morning with this one when it was hit that low and I got my butt chewed out for telling everybody about it. Oh, I should just be so ashamed of myself. I was told, Mary, Mary. Oh, by the way, I want you to pay attention right here for a second. Look at the day's range. Do you see a number on here that you should recognize? 745. The reason I say that is because some of you, if you're trading like catfish, sold already at 744 because that's one of the prices on my sell sheet is the 44 number. <clears throat> right here. This is one of my numbers right here on the sheet. You can see it very clearly right there. Sell at 844 in this case, 744, and buy back at 739, okay? Let's see if I'm right. Day trading tracking chart number. I like to show that every once in a while. Back down we go. But it did not get all the way back down to 739, and that's good. This is what I want you to pay attention to. When the shorts are in control, when they got a run going up, they can pull it back five or six cents or even as much as 10 or 11. I've seen this so many times as a pattern. When the shorts are really in kind of control, they can pull it back from these highs, usually four, five, six cents at the most, or as much as 10 or 11 if they're really strong. But when they can only pull the price back back three cents, that's good for us, people. That's very good for us, all right? See, when I say buy it, sell it at 744 and buy it back at 739, that's because that drop is five cents and they usually go for five or six. And they can't even pull that off right now, folks. That's how strong SoFi is right here. They can't pull it back. And they don't even, they're not even facing any freaking volume today, folks. We've had only 7 million shares traded. And they can't put up any resistance against a runoff of 744. <laughs> what number, what number it takes for you to be a millionaire. I'm going to be so happy for you, folks. Uh, 
I still have to see a gain of about 200,000 right now to get there, 220,000 or so. But I'm going to make that on this stock. I'm going to make it on SoFi and the other ones uh, daily that I trade in and out of, you know, including buying that one SOU in yesterday at $5.54 or whatever it was yesterday. That was awesome. And I owe, again, to Mary, a gratitude. I'm indebted to her. She came over to cause me pain and she caused me happiness instead. <clears throat> Eric is of the belief that options are going to keep the price under 750 today. And he might be right, but even if he is, I don't care. This price is going to be over $10, most likely between now and the earnings call, then be pulled back slightly two or three days before earnings and then right on off on the earnings because the data is going to be phenomenal. This, this is not going to be, this is the second time of profitability. Those of you that di maybe didn't track PLTR, some people are saying, oh my God, PLTR is down today. It's really hurting. What's crushing it? Let's go look at it. And by the way, um, I'm going to get over here right now to PLTR. PLTR. Platter. It's actually Palantir, but PLTR. Let us indulge. Well, that's no slaughtering. I thought I'd see this thing down 15 or 20% the way people were talking. Jeez. Downgraded by CyberArk. <laughs> Whatever. Cyber, CyberCrack downgraded it. We know how those downgrades come out and when they come out. We know when they bring out the downgrades. You guys don't know this. Some of you don't know this, but boy, at one time on June the 15th, I'll put it right here, uh, five big analyst downgrades. SoFi downgrade. And let me sh tell you, those damn downgrades, man, can they be, can they be timed perfectly to to almost unbelievability that how these downgrades come out and the timing of them and those of you that are here with me right now will understand here in, in a brief moment what I mean by that okay because I'm going to pull up an article right now that many of you I think might find relative and interesting okay and let me just move this over here god i have so many pages open across the top of here and all of them are running their little things on here and trying to gather data from me but here we go let's get this over here by sofi and then we're going to get it to load up here and uh <clears throat> We're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to show you a couple of things. There are 90 people on this channel right now, and I wish that you'd just hold hold tight with me a second while we get this page to load up because there's a couple of things that you all need to understand that there was a day back in May the 15th that the shorts decided to call on the help of a downgrader by the name of David Chiavrini, and on that day, there were 6.5 million shares available to be shorted. And on that day, wham, they shorted and borrowed 3 million shares. And the next day, more. And they only had then 2.9 million left out of that 6.5. So they had used 3.6 million shares on the 16th and 17th. Drove the price down to 4.55 a share. But then suddenly, much to their surprise, the SoFi stock price started rising and started rising and started rising on them. And it kept going up and it kept going up and it kept going up from May the uh, 15th on the downgrade. The sad part for them was that on that day that they downgraded it, they were shorting it all through that price and with borrowed shares. 
they used borrowed shares. I just showed you right there that they used borrowed shares to get it to drop on that day. And then after they used those borrowed shares to go in on David Chivarini's downgrade, after they used those borrowed shares, the price turned around and exploded to the upside on them. And it went nuts upwards because people like uh, uh, Hurricane Lopez and myself were out there trying to tell everyone, hey, man, this David Chiavrini, this analyst who just called for a target price is a zero star rated analyst who has no success rating, is rated like numbers 8,300 out of 8,600 analysts. He's horrible. He's He's horrible. And the price went from 445 that they used all those borrowed shares, 6 million of those 103 were borrowed to short it down to that low of 445. They started when the price was at that morning at 484 for the high. And then they started borrowing from 484 shares to run it down to 445. And folks, on May the 15th, when that price went to 482, then 514, to 534, to 533, to 548, to 760. And then in June, from May the 15th to just the first, it had already gone up $3. And the next thing you know, it went up another $3 on June the 14th. What did they do? They got a hold of these people right here, folks. That's what they did. They called out the wolves. Because they then, at this point in time, from May the 15th, had run completely out of shares to borrow to short with anymore. On June the 14th, they only had 350,000 shares left. And that's why on this day, right here, June the 15th, this day, five big analysts at SoFi Technology slashed with three downgrades. Folks, this happened on June the 15th. That's when they did it because they had no other option. Their backs were against the wall. They had borrowed all these shares to keep the price from running up. They were attacking against an attack on them using borrowed shares to stop the price from rising. And meanwhile, it went from 445 all the way up to 1023 on that June 14th day. They must, They. it was a no situation, nothing they could do. They absolutely had to release this article and show everybody that there was a downgrade by three different people and all of them raised their target price. Piper Sandler was changing their price from $6.50 up to $8 on the downgrade. Bank of America on that day, on June the 15th, was raising from 950 to 10, but they called it a downgrade. Do you see that, everybody? Oh my God, it's insane. And I show this to everybody, new people to this channel every single day. The reason SoFi is blazing a trail like that, it's doing, and it's taking away like yesterday's headline, they're invading the bank space. They don't like this. So they get other bankers to come in and downgrade it. KBW is downgrade that they did. They're another bank. And they're in Vesco Limited. God dang it. They own a bunch of shares of SoFi. And they're downgrading us too. Oh boy. So I make sure you're all aware of it. You can see, unfortunately, this date on this the article, it just says nine months ago. But I guarantee you, see, there's the date right there. There's the date that it came out. 616. Okay, that was June the 16th. But there was an actual article that came out before that uh, uh, right there. And it was tight. And it's amazing. That's two of them that said five big analysts, five star analysts warned to sell SoFi. Oh, my God. So disgusting. And here's KBW's uh, August 1st downgrade by Michael Perito. And this is, again, KBW analyst, market analyst Perito. KBW Bank. Look up who they are. You'll find out. KBWB is the name of their bank stock, and they are Invesco Limited. That's the name of their company, Invesco Limited. If you go over here to owners and you click on institutional ownership and you do a search for Invesco, you'll find out that KBW owns a bunch of shares of SoFi, just like Morgan Stanley on their July 13th downgrade. 
I was asking stock price, James Hander, what number it takes for you to be a millionaire. I'm going to be so happy for you. Oh, <clears throat> what's that, honey? I know it. I was asking stock price, he said. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I have to mathematically figure that out. <laughs> I'm not that concerned. I know it's going to get there one day. And look at this thing going, folks. Look at the price on this thing. Oh, my God. This thing is insane. 700, $745. What we'll be saying 25 years from now. I was asking stock price. I have to do the math to figure that out. Well, I can only presume. Uh, have to do it mathematically. Anyway, I see there's a big delay on this screen, so I am going to change this and update this and refresh this page. Going to refresh this page right now as SoFi continues to go up and up. And this is exactly what I predicted to happen here, folks. What would be going on was about a 2 to 3% gain each day. Some people are saying today there's no way they're going to let it let it go over 750. Well, I got, got news for you, folks. When this thing starts to move and it gets the volume behind it and things are happening and popping, it went from 455 a share to 1023, and there was no letting it do anything. It did what it wanted. And I don't think they have a choice. I think this stock is going to go up regardless of what they try. I think it's going to be very resilient and I think it's going to push through 7, 750 here again, even today, maybe. And uh, only saying that because nothing seems to be able to stop it right now. It just seems to be just riding, riding right on up. All right, we're getting an excellent stream connection, it says here right now. And that's very excellent because the price is excellently rising. And uh, more and more people will be coming over here the higher we go, folks, as time as time passes on. And we are going to be going higher. Uh, and I like, I like the fact that we're doing this on such minimal volume. To me, that really shows a sign of shorts weakness. If they had this low of volume, you'd think they'd have us down 5%, especially on what amounts to a Friday today is. Yep, SoFi is flying now. Tomorrow we get a day off. I hope you get to have a nice extended weekend, everybody. And, uh... <clears throat> I can see right now on the channel, we just got this thing to refresh. It says there's 80, there's uh, 67 people on the, here on the channel with me right now. I was uh, asking stock price. And uh, I don't just own uh, SoFi stock, by the way. I own several other stocks. Um, STEM is one of them. And I don't know what it's been doing today. Let's take a look at it. Yesterday, it was up big time, 17%. All right, we got this refresh here now. Down 2%, but up 17% yesterday, this one, and holding it, coincidentally, 213. What do you know? SoFi at 744 a share and rising. Just keep on climbing, baby. Just keep on climbing. And I'm watching this number here. Now up 109. Now up 102. Now, let's see where we get back in and stay over that. 109. Now up 95. 109. Jumps back. What? 116. Now 111. 109. 116. This looks good. Now 122. Here we go, everybody. This is the numbers I'm looking at, 122, 115, 109, 115 again, 117. This looks very good, 110 and 117. No more 109, that's gone now. 
122. Watching these numbers, folks, for an indicator. 122 up. 109 one more time. 116, 115. 122 again. 115. No more. 109. We don't want to see that anymore. That'll be the last of it. 116, 115, 122. Should see a 109 if the computer trades on the way it's doing, but where does it go? Where's that? Is it going to be 109 again? Let's see this. Watching. No, it's only 115. Uh-oh, shorty. You better look out. 122 now. Shorts, I'm telling you. And if you're along, you should be looking at this too. 109 one last time. 109 again. They're, they're trying right there to hold that thing back. Somebody's dumping them out there. 116. 115 again. Seen it before. One more time at 109. 116, this is all computer door trading, folks. Let's see that 122 again. Come on, bring it. There it is. Good. 111 now, people. Where's the 109? There it is. One more time. Watching this closely. I am presuming we're going to see this thing pop. 110 now. Good. Moving on up. 116. Show me that 122 again right now. 122 right here or higher would be nice to tell us an indication. Watching this one right here, folks. 110 now. All right. Where's the 109? 116. No more 115 there. 109 again. 95. See that? They took a strike at it. Then it went to 102. Now they're trying to come at it right here. Right this time, 11.06, coincidentally. Now only 95 up, and now 99 again. They're taking a swipe at us right here. And I want to thank you for being here on this channel with me while I show you how you don't need to look at these numbers to determine direction. There we go. Back up to 102. Come on, baby. Let's see that 109 again right on up. I want to see it bounce. There's 102. 81. They're trying to come at it right here, folks. This is their time, 106, and they've decided 106. 106 is their time to take after it, trying to take it back. Look at the volume, 7,341,000, 7,341,569, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 7,341,000, 
F cell still up again again today. Nice. STM slightly down. Uh, you would expect that after a 17% gain yesterday. NU, how's it looking? <sighs> Not discussing. Shopify looks good and green. CLSK. I want to tell you all, um, I would like to ask you here, the time right now I'm seeing is 11.10. So let's do this, if you don't mind. At 11.10 and 10 seconds from now, let's hit the like button at 10, 11.10.48. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Please depress the like button right now. I'd appreciate it if you do that all together. We've got 85 likes, and let's see if we can get it up over 90 likes right now. Now, I want you to know, folks, we've got our eyes on some stocks here that have been doing very well, and the ones that's looking the best for the best movement up is this one, SOFI. I would s strongly recommend you take a look at this stock. I think that there's a very, very good possibility of it going back up over $10 within about a month's time. And that's why I'm here to talk to everybody about it today. There are certain indicators that make it seem very, very possible that this thing is about to absolutely explode to the upside. And one of them is going to be our second earnings call in a row with gap profitability. Now, the one thing I want to show you on this long-term chart is this very, very definable pattern that we're starting to see on SoFi right now. So I'm going to show it to you right now, and you can understand what I'm talking about on this long-term chart. So right here, SoFi was driven way down from $28 a share. And back here, and I'll try to move this so we can see what the dates were when this happened. And I see error, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. As such, viewers will experience buffering. Uh, happy Easter, dude. Thank you, Ian Long. Happy Easter, dude. Still holding my call. So if I gap up coming soon, shorts are screwed. Yes, they are. Ian Long, I bought some LPA before the merger at 725. It, it's at 26. Right now, might go to 40 plus easy overnight bag. Wow. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Well, everybody, here's what I want you to see right now, fresh to the screen. And thank you for hitting that like button. We're now up over 90 likes. Wow. Here's a heart on the screen for everyone who just hit the like button. Here's a heart on for you. There it is. A heart on the screen for you. A heart for you. A heart for you, a heart for you, a heart for you, and a heart for you. So thank you very, very much. And look at all the other hearts coming in there. We've got a lot of hearts on the screen. Thank you for hitting that like button, everybody. It's that important. And uh, we're going to have a lot of people on this channel, even though we're the last day before. Here's what I want you to see, the most important thing. SoFi was running at a lateral, nice movement up, was dropped down, and here's my trend line right here. And I want you to see it was on a nice lateral upward movement and dropped double below the, the trending line. When it hit the second low, which was higher than the first, this second low made it jump from 439 all the way up to this price right here. Okay. Be aware it jumped up to 738 from 439 it went up $3 after the second drop now come over here look at this lateral move up then the drop boom the double below and the second time it fell lower than the first time but the thing that's the most important for you to absorb here is after it hit the second deeper low than they did drove it down back here in uh, December. This time, when they drove it down here in May, they got it to the first low after the earnings call. Then David Chiverini came in and drove it lower. Okay? That's on May the 16th. Coincidentally, the same day that they started attacking with borrowed shares. 
But then, folks, pay attention. The price didn't go up this time $3. It went from $4.45 all the way to $10.23, up 6 bucks. Now, why, why is this relevant? Well, I'll explain. If you have a double dip barely below the red line to go up $3, then a big double dip below to go up $6. Over here, what happens when you have a double dip below and it goes up again $3, then a double dip barely below and it goes up half that much, but then the big double dip with the second dip even deeper, just like that happened back here May 1st and May 15th. Then the price made the biggest move it's made so far, $6 jump. So there you go. History repeating itself. A double bottom deeper the second time than the first, and then possibly a $6 jump is what I see. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. All right. All right, sure. I'll take a look at some other stocks here. We got Amelia Ortega saying, please take a look at PXLW. PXLW, fine. Let's get over here. Pixel works. <clears throat> Uh, this is one of the reasons I believe that SoFi is going to springboard so much is because there's another reason. On You're familiar with PLTR. It's down 4% today, but it's up like 100% in the last eight months. What you know about PLTR, if you went back to their original first time they uh, showed profit, a few earnings ago, they did not make a jump then. They made a little move. But then, man, they were dropped back down, dropped back down, dropped back down. On that second one, though, kaboom, she went off 16% up on the second one. Well, this is going to be our second one, and I expect the same thing. I expect an even larger drive up than that. All right, PXLW does not have enough volume behind this stock to interest me too much, for one. 79,000 shares today and the price is at 267. There's there's not a lot of eyes on this, okay? This isn't like SoFi, that's for sure. Now, I get over here and I do like that they beat the street, beat the street, beat the street. And uh, then, however, they missed a little bit, which is to be expected, but this doesn't look good. That, that doesn't look good. That's not what, what you want to see. By the way, this chart that you see right here, this looks a lot like um, Robin Hood. This looks like they, they're starting to decrease. They were nicely building, building, building. But did they? what did they do? Over, over build, outstretch their capability because then their revenue dropped. And then their, their earnings dropped even more. I don't, uh, no, okay, no. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm out of that one. Next. <clears throat> We want growth stocks, okay? You want to own a stock like SoFi with a CEO that owns $50 million worth of it. You want to own a stock like SoFi that has itself a new stadium with a big old name on it, SoFi on it, out in the NFL playing there. You got football games going on. You got World Cup soccer going on. It's the biggest mongolith out there now, attracting more tourists than any other spot in California is our stadium, SoFi Stadium, and the shopping center that surrounds it. It draws more people than anyone else in the whole state, SoFi Stadium. You want a company that can ink a deal with the NFL. And by the way, this, this guy, Anthony Noto, running the ship for us, used to be the CFO of the NFL, the, C, the COO. Yep. Chief Chief Operating Officer of the of the NFL, <clears throat> and he was the C uh, CFO of Twitter. All right. Oh my gosh, we just got a delicious sandwich brought in here by my delicious wife, Cheryl. 
Oh my gosh, she's keeping the food going here. Wow. I'm sorry, Emilio, but I'd rather show you and lead you into a stock chart that was rising like SoFi is right now. And over here shows a revenue of boom, 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 boom up. And over the last quarter, finally, the earnings went up as well. The first time of showing revenue and earnings coming up into the black. All right. That's where I want to see you with a company that pro, pro predictions are so if I could be one of the best bank stocks over the next five years. And here's why. And they got themselves in the headline here. This one here got 1,000 gross stocks to buy. I mean, they're talking about this stock, folks. Everyone is on the lips of everyone. This is a trending stock. SoFi is a trending stock. I'd like to see you guys have interest in other stocks and make some suggestions to me. But that one there, I just don't want to have to, I just don't see it as being as profitable. Um, next one will be, does anyone have any interest in BERI? BERI. Well, we're going to look at it right now. BERI. Blue Earth Resources, okay. Look at this unbelievable sandwich. I hope you guys aren't hungry right now, but oh my gosh. Oh, oh, oh. I have to indulge. No. No, no, no. This this company it, it's not even visible on them. <laughs> As a as a company in its sector, you can't even see them in, even in this. I mean, they're you no, know, uh, -uh. not on this channel. B E R I <laughs> price at five cents a share. If this is the one you're talking about, and only fifty thousand at five cents a share. Average of volume is nine thousand seven hundred sixty five a day. No, I don't uh, see any reason at all to get involved in anything like that. No, not that one. If I'm on the right one, that one's bye-bye. See, you want to have a company like SoFi that has all these 8,000 excellent reviews on Trustpilot. And if you read all these interviews, they're just phenomenal. They're phenomenal interviews about how SoFi operates, how easy it was, super easy to do it, entire process, smooth and easy. Easy and painless, easy being the key word, offers many excellent services. When I first applied, I was nervous. Longtime customer. I mean, these are five-star ratings, every single one of them. That's what you want to own, a company that gets people who can appreciate what they have to offer them. And they, they, can, they come over and leave interview after interview after interview. They feel compelled to leave an excellent five-star performance rating for SoFi. That's what you want. You want a company that has people that are that behind it, okay? And they're telling their friends about it too, folks. They're telling their friends about it too. So Garrett, it's Bree. I appreciate you bringing out that suggestion though, because I will take a look at any possibility. If it wasn't for Danny Dimes, I would have never heard about CLSK, which I made a fortune on. So all of you that are new, and by the way, I'm going to make sure you feel welcome here. Welcome, let's say, welcome Garrett.
Because I don't recognize you here before. So I make sure and call out people when they come in new. And uh, would encourage you to please uh, like the channel and also to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Uh, because I tell you what, when SoFi does hit $25 a share sometime in the middle of the night. <sighs> oh, yep, I did spell it correctly. Good. Um, William Fenwick, Catfish, what do you think about RKLB? Well, I have RKLB, and I've just been waiting. I'm just going to be patient with them. I don't know whether whether they'll, they'll pan out or not. I don't own a lot of RKLB, but I do hold that position. So uh, I think they have a lot of, like he said, you got to be long term with this one. You know, you're going to have to be patient. But uh, I have it. Uh, RKLB. I don't have a massive share amount of this one. It's just one of those I just nibbled on one day because someone brought it up. I went over and looked at the chart and I went, oh, that looks pretty promising. So I got some. All right, let's get this thing to load up here and see what's going on with it. Six month chart. For those of you that don't know about this company, they're a space company. They do uh, launches and they. One day they're not going to be launching in the, anything into space anymore. They're going to use other ways of getting things into space including these centrifugal force things that wind up and sling them out there in the space. Mm -hmm. But I like this company. Um, they have a lot of strong buys and buys on this company. And uh, they've had some success. They've It's cost them some money to get their success. And they're burning through money, but I think that they will eventually continue to gain, make gains. And so for now, I'm going to hold on to them. And as I said, I'm over here right now trying to click on this thing and see if we can get a six-month chart to load up. And they are starting to make gains here since they were all the way down here in the low fours on March 21st. So it looks like a, maybe a good entry point. And that folks, they were already, this stock was at $5.79. So they got upside potential from here, no doubt. So, yeah, I'm an advocate of this one, but I don't have a lot of it. I don't have a lot. I'll admit that. I don't have a lot. I'm not overly committed, that's for sure. Not like I am on SoFi. I got a lot of money in this company here, and there's a reason why, and you can see it right now because it's going to keep going higher. The one thing I want you to know is a testimony to SoFi's resilience is the mere fact that so many people here are here on this channel every single day who are believers in the stock and continue to buy when I buy on the lows. And uh, that's good. That's very encouraging. And I got news for you. According to what I'm seeing on my screen right now, today's high and I have to refresh this to see if I'm correct. I'm going to refresh this right now. Duck Kings, are we looking for a squeeze or a steady rise? I'll take either one. I'm brand new to investing and appreciate your channel. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. Well, what I do here is I look back over the history of things and what this history of this stock tells me and this chart tells me is that we're fixing to see a major, major jump. 
I've seen this movie here several times, and I pointed out to you on this very chart that I'm showing you right now that you see on the screen. And this movie is drive it slightly below, then a little bit more below, then run it up freaking $3. Then drive it down, carry along the line for a ways, drive it below, drive it deeply below, and run it up twice that much the next time. Then come over here, drive it down below the low, get it the second time below, and go up again. Then come over here, drive it down below the low, even deeper the second time, the same depth of this drop. Do you notice how deep it went here and the same depth of this drop below the 200, below my trend line? There it is again. Bam, bam. And now, kaboom. Probably about this number here, around 1250. Okay, that's where I say it's going. Because here we, we increased from this level here of 772 to jump to this level here of 9.54 up a dollar 80 and then we jump from 9.54 up to this number here which was from 9.54 up to 11.70 so there you go up two dollars and twenty cents and then we go from 11.70 even higher two dollars possibly and uh we should see around thirteen dollars okay uh, that's where i think we're going to go off of this the double low there, the double low there, the double low there, this double low, and what it does afterwards. And this this one here, this one here equates this one here, in my opinion. And each time that they took it to the second low even deeper down, she jumped even higher off of that. So I see the same thing here now. Down here, deeper down, and I think she jumps even higher. There you go, William Fenwick. Shorty, just keep giving us a gift of love. I average over 100 a week. Go so far. Yep. Chris Beckwith. Yep. I bought another 100 shares yesterday. 718. Right with me. Right with me. Yes, sir. Buy every week on the low. Buy every week. Buy every day on that rundown, and you're going to pay off. You're going to make so much money on this dang stock. I'm sorry, but I have to eat this sandwich my wife made for me. Folks, we're about to go over the day's high. We're about to run over the day's high right now on our way over 750. I'm having a little snack right here, folks. I'm almost done with it. I appreciate your patience while I finish this sandwich here that my beautiful wife made for me. Mm. All right. <laughs> William Fenwick says, ring the bell 
and talk Chinese again. <laughs> uh, we had 80 people on the channel when I started talking Chinese, then it dropped to 49. Okay, we got a request, everyone, and it's purely by request to do a little bit of Chinese. And yes, I'm very fluent <laughs> at Chinese. So here you go. If you happen to be from over there in that neck of the woods, here come Chinese to you. <laughs> I'm not going to talk a long time because I want people to know I'm just a fool around. I'm not to make a fun of the people from China. I like to have a good time here on channel. Sometimes I talk the same language other people talk. So if you come here from out of the country, don't feel offended by any means when I talk out like this, okay? I'm talking to you because I like a talk, I like a Chinese. And I like a Chinese power and talk like this, they are making some of my people laugh. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to talk just short time, maybe take one, two minutes. After that, we're going to have to stop and talk a Chinese. You not want people to think I'm crazy. <laughs> you people here want to request a Chinese talk. I happy to talk a Chinese to you. But we have to keep our people here on a channel longer term. We don't want them to think uh, I'm a crazy local guy. Okay. And uh, so we talk a Chinese for a short time just to keep you satisfied. After that, we have to stop. We take it back to the original language. But we want to talk a Chinese. And if you like to learn how to talk Chinese like a tiger, you a simple dude. You can just write to me on my website. Uh, you can take a lesson Chinese from me, Cafe for that title. And I want to make a very happy for all you be here with me, talk a Chinese same time. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Juju B says, says, I talk a Chinese. You know, I don't know why you people like a Chinese so much. You like a Chinese people? You like a Chinese people like a, make a you happy in some way? To cut out. Maybe they're smarter than you when it comes to math. <laughs> and by, I have a re uh, arithmetic. <laughs> You guys in gout, you got crazy people here on channel with me, Catfish Thai. Want to hear me talk I like a Chinese people all the time. More people want to hear me talk I like I did want to talk I like I normally do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is what we do sometimes just to pass the time. I have a little bit of fun. We not want to try to infringe on anybody. We're not trying to make a fun to people from other countries. Cafe Tyler love people all over the world. And I want to let you know for around the globe, I want to thank you to be here on my channel. You're from Singapore, from China, from anywhere, Japan and Korea. I not care and I not to make a fun. I love you people, okay? Everybody, everybody all together now. We are one big happy family here on this channel, okay? <laughs> <laughs> William Fun, <laughs> you people, you are guys a crazy one. You are making me act like a fool. You have a me people coming to my channel right now, and they are listening to me talk a Chinese. They not understand. They don't know what happened. They think something crazy going on here. <laughs> and uh, but we have a lot of crazy people here on the channel in the tank. <laughs> you climb in here, it could be toxic for you. You have to be very careful where you tread in the water here, okay? You're going to swim with catfish and catfish people. You want to be see, talk or like this until sometime. You have to pull it up. We, we might be dicking with this. this, this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you guys. Come back a time, bring back to reality, okay? I know you like to have imagination. Everybody on this channel, I understand. Very good, have a good imagination. <laughs> but you not have to let get out of control, okay? Got to keep it in focus. <laughs> Got to keep it narrow. <laughs> Chinese Cajun. <laughs> yeah, they leave a fast. They cut out real quick and go, well, what this crazy motherfucker you talking about? We got to get our channel. <laughs> it, I, I, <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
They come here from all part of world. They come open arm. I welcome into the flock. <laughs> no, I see got ad come on channel now. You're gonna have to watch an ad. Like somebody say, he watch a Alyssa ad, he go get something to drink. <laughs> Go get a nice cocktail. <laughs> Speaking cocktail, that's what's going to happen short here soon with SoFi. <laughs> They're going to be taking it up rear wind <laughs> in a big way. <laughs> big, like I said before, it's going to be hard on them. It's going to be stiff, rigid, <laughs> girty. <laughs> You guys are hit the like a button. You start to get a lot of people come over here. We're listening to Catfish Taiwan talk a Chinese. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> please take a look on FSL Aristarch. It is making bullish permanent uh, pennant. Okay. Thank you, Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad brings us back into reality for a minute. <laughs> That's right, William Fenwick. Chinese people are leaving, but telling all their friends to come on board. You get on the SoFi ship. You will take a nice ride. We got a big sail full of wind blowing us down to the water. We just progressing <laughs> very rapidly. <laughs> oh, there's no talk about <laughs> you get Chinese people on channel with Captain Taiwan. They come over here by that. Thousands. <laughs> they come on board and we got crossing border right now down back in, 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 in how do you say that down south. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, you don't let me talk to Chinese, keep a price of rise. You don't talk about price of drop when I talk a Chinese. <laughs> you, you no. This a fat what they call a head fake. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's take a look at FSLR. Uh, I've looked at this one in the past, by the way. I thank you for bringing it to my attention. Uh, can you speak Vietnamese action? What do you mean I talk about Vietnamese? <laughs> oh, you want to hear Vietnamese? Wow, I don't talk about a lot like this more. <laughs> Julie's. Oh man, have the Chinese sofas going down. No, oh, don't you worry. Why have a frowny face? <laughs> Victor Vong, you know, I had somebody else jump on here when I was doing this earlier and said, man, why don't you talk about SoFi again, man? Stop doing that. Well, we're here to have fun, everybody. Fun, fun, fun till daddy takes our T bird away. All right. <laughs> Victor Vong is here to ask, can we speak some Vietnamese action? Mao hai ba bom nam sam bai time ding hui. Okay, there you go. That's my jet. That's my Vietnamese. Mao hai ba bom nam sam bai time ding hui. In case you don't know, that's counting to 10 in Vietnamese. Uh, oh, God. Uh, FSLR. What, what what was it? Where yeah, there. FSLR. It is FSLR. Let's go on over, take a walk. <laughs> take a quick walk with FSLR. FSLR. We're looking at it now, ladies and gentlemen. This is one that was suggested by one of our individuals in the cat tank right now. Mohammed. FSLR. I'm gonna jump over here and take a look at it. We have a <clears throat> sudden surge of interest in SoFi since the price has now gone green. Victor Vong, you're funny. <laughs> Thank you. I like to have a good time on this channel. I like to keep, as I say here, folks, I'm not a financial advisor. Primarily, I, primarily I'm here to provide entertainment. There are many people that listen through me out throughout the day, the entire day for my entertainment value, not for my stocks necessarily. Although they make a little money with me on the stock market and on the side. But mostly it's just for fun. 
<clears throat> BITF still looks good. SOUN hit the bottom. Uh, if you're thinking about SOUN, now would be the time. SOUN probably pick up a few shares, I would suggest. Because they just tried to drive it down to break it below six. It was very resilient there at that number. And I like that a lot. Good, because that young lady bought it at 599. She's still green if she didn't desperately sell yesterday. She was so furious with me. I don't know whether she's a young lady or not. She might have been a really old, baggy old lady with real saggy boobs and all. And, you know, wrinkly old skin and pruned up ping tang and all that stuff. I don't know what she was. But she was, she was boy, she was in a fix, man. She wanted to tell me, huh? <laughs> Everybody who's here on the channel right now, I want to thank you. It's amazing we have 84 people on the channel as SoFi starts to make its ascent the rest of the afternoon. I am presuming that if you're here on this channel, you want to hear what is SoFi blazing a new trail. Well, SoFi has just changed the whole game of banking, everyone. SoFi has just changed it all. They're stealing they like my headline said yesterday in my thumbnail, they are invading the banking space. SoFi is stealing away customers, stealing away deposit accounts, and more and more people are coming to become known about SoFi because of their public visibility. They've signed and ink deals with the NFL, they've ink deals with the NBA, the World Cup. They are they they got TGL golf right around the corner. Folks, this TGL golf is going to be another thing that propels us into the spotlight. And the same thing with the NBA and the playoffs happening. What better time for SoFi to make that move to join the NBA and ink that deal to become the official bank of the NBA? That is awesome. And getting their name on the basketball courts and over during even during the announcement was just made and bam, they were on the court. It's SoFi's logo with the biggest shot that's ever been made in NBA All-Star Game history from beyond the half court line. That guy just threw that thing up and it swished through the net and God dog it, there was SoFi's logo right there for everybody to see, everybody. How'd you like to be short in this company with somebody announcing that they just put 10, $40 million more to the bottom line by doing that convertible note deal? How'd, like, how'd you like to be shorting this company, finding out that SoFi just signed a deal with one of the top five banks in the United States to use SoFi to help them make their bank bigger? They don't want to stay in the top five position. They want to go in the top three. And I'm sincerely of the belief that any of those that are in the still top three, they're not going to want that top five one to bot beat them. So they're going to come to SoFi and say, wait a minute, we need to do this too. Let's not let, let's not let, let us drop down in here into the four or five. We want to stay in the top three. So we got to do this too. And they're going to SoFi along with many, many large banks. This was m mentioned by Anthony Noto on his interview with Kathy Wood. And he said, there are many large banks at our table negotiating now and we have a ton of rfps request for proposal that's right folks not just the number one of the top five banks that's buying in with sofi and needs their services SoFi's already shown that this works with the small community banks. They've already made the inroads with all the small community banks and the neighborhood banks, the local banks, the conventional small town banks. They've already proven through their system that this works. Now they're moving, stepping up the game to the large banks. And those large banks are coming in to SoFi and saying, please provide us with your service. Give us a quote. This is what people don't understand. And each time that they shake the hand of another bank and they say, thank you. Yep. How long will it take? Well, we'll have it in place in you know 90 days. You'll start to see your results. Thank you very much. That money on that contract, that deal can, cannot be disclosed by SoFi. They can't go shout out to everyone. Hey, we just did a deal with US Bank or with Citibank. They can't do that. They have to keep their mouth closed. But I'm going to tell you what they won't have to keep their mouth closed about. That's the revenue that drops to the bottom line from these deals that they're shaking hands on. Okay? <sighs> yep, Juju Bees. I just changed my banking to SoFi from Chase. Cha-ching. Chris Beckworth. Steph Curry. There you go. That's right. Garrett Seabree. Anyone else looking at KULR? Jarrett. 
Garrett, I appreciate you bringing up these other stocks for us to take a look at. And uh, we'll throw it out there. But if you're looking for analysis from a true professional, you should probably go to a true professional analyst and maybe pay for their services. If you want me to keep breaking down stocks for you, I can show you the method that I use to determine these things and you can do it on your own. But if you want me to keep doing them, send me a little token of appreciation of five or ten dollars and I'll do it all day, all damn day. K-U-L-R. But see, a lot of times we've seen people come over, Garrett, that come into the tank and they're just trying to promote themselves and their stocks. So they keep throwing out stocks they own to try to get people to look at them. And uh, you might not like what I have to say about them when I look into them, just so you know. So I'm going to be, I might not be your friend by doing this for you, but if you want me to keep doing it on each stock you have in your portfolio, that I would like to get a little appreciation in the way of some money sent my way for my, what I tell you. <clears throat> and it's a small donation. I ask people that are here all the time to just get, just send me 50 cents a day, you know, pay for $10, $5 and you just covered 10 days of my help. All right. <clears throat> and again, um, let me just, as a general rule, Garrett, I don't like to buy stocks below a dollar because I know that they want to try to get listed with the NASDAQ when they go over a dollar. And what they'll often do is they'll do a split and they'll give a three for one split to make the price jump up to a dollar twenty. But because they did the three, they people got for every three shares they got, they got one and that made the price jump up three times its value to a dollar twenty. But then that's a horrendous thing. Nobody wants one for three shares. So they all sell and the price jumps back from 120 back down below a dollar again. All right. And sometimes these companies will want to get over the $5 range and they'll do a 40 for one. Okay. Or a 50 for one. Or the other way around, you get one for every 50 shares and then they get the price to jump up to $5 plus and then they hammer that down to three. So this is one thing I don't like about these. I'm just warning you. But I'm going to look into it a little bit more. Man, <laughs> look at this company just burning through money, people. I mean, they aren't hardly of making any revenue, but their earnings is deplorable. No, no, no. Goodbye. I don't need to look any further than that right there. Folks, you want to buy a chart? You want to buy a company that has a chart that looks like this. SoFi's over here. So, see what they're doing? Look at that, folks. Up, up, up. Less losses, less losses, less losses. And if you go to quarterly, no losses. Now they're actually earning money. They got revenues increasing, increasing, increasing. And then you've got their losses now gone black. This is what you want to buy. Take your money out of that other stock you just mentioned. If you have it in it, buy this stock right now. Okay, this stock will be over $10 a share and that stock you've got there isn't going to make any kind of move like that from what I'm looking at that chart and uh, just making a suggestion to you. You need to buy a stock that has so many people shorting it right now that there's never been as many shorting it and we might have a very high sh likelihood of a short squeeze going on. <clears throat> Chris Beck with Dilution. Yep. Garrett Saber, good info. Thank you. You're welcome. And, uh, but man, learn to look at the charts. Look, learn to look at the long term. Learn to look at the history. Learn to check out their revenue. Look at their performance. Look at their visibility. Look at their branding. Look at how often they get themselves in the headlines. SoFi, every time you turn around, is getting themselves in the headlines with another great deal, signing a deal with one of the top five banks, getting their bank down, Galileo down into South America. That's right, folks. We're the only bank, SoFi, in Peru, in Brazil, in Argentina, Uruguay, and I can't remember the other one. Guatemala, I believe it is. We're the only one, in the, and then we're also in the Caribbean the Caribbean, if you're American. Thank you, Garrett. Golf Overlord, reverse split. Yep. I guarantee you there's going to be no reverse split on SoFi, folks. They don't need to get it any higher. Where it is right now is perfect. They got plenty of institutions that are buying in, and I've shown you that as of late. 
there are folks this bank is blazing such a new trail and so many institutions are becoming aware of it that they're pouring in on this stock and they're pouring in as of late. We've got 86 people on this channel. You might not understand how many institutions are coming in, but I'm going to show you here. They're coming in at a very nice rapid rate and they're increasing their positions from here to here to here to here. Be aware that while they increase their positions from here to here to here, they were using all those shares they bought to sell to one another to run this down to the lowest it ever was. Now the reverse of trend has happened as of right here. Now they start to accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. Price goes up, 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 up. Time now is 11.55. Let's do this right before lunch and see if we can get likes over 100. And we're going to do it right here at 11.56. Right now, hit that like button, please. 11.56 a.m. If you hit the like button, we can make this thing go all the way up over maybe 100 likes today. And we're at 98 right now. So I ask you, please, I didn't do a countdown that time like I usually do. Let's just do it now. Let's do a countdown anyway. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, three, two, one. Push the like button, please. Let's get it up over 100 likes. I would appreciate it if you could help me do that. SoFi looks awesome, folks, right now. This is where we want to be. This is in the driver's seat, folks. Bulls are in complete control. The Bears had their day. And now the Bears have run themselves into a major corner here. What I mean by that is that as of recently, everyone, please pay attention. I'm showing you right here how many shares, SoFi, number of shares available to borrow during the last year. And I want you to see what happens when they get low on shares to borrow. <clears throat> now, they've returned a bunch of shares here recently. They've returned a bunch. <clears throat> Look at the cost to borrow, rising and rising and rising. Look at this. On one day, the cost to borrow jumped all the way up over 3%. You know what happened that day? SoFi sued the U.S. government for withholding people paying back their student loans. And on that news of that lawsuit on April the 17th that SoFi filed, the, the cost to borrow jumped up to 3.2%. It can easily do that again, folks. It can easily happen again on any cool news that SoFi br brings out. Just be aware of that. <clears throat> and look at this going to new highs today. <clears throat> look at that. We got 106 likes, folks. Look at that. Oh, my God. That means I owe for 10 hearts. One, there's a heart for you. Two, there's a heart on the screen for you. There's a heart on the screen for you. Three, four, a heart for you. A heart on the screen for you. And a heart on there for you. 106 likes. Folks, look at this thing breaking loose. And this is starting to look very good for the formation of my double dip in spring. Double dip in bigger spring. Double dip barely below in spring. Double dip below in spring. Bigger double dip, just like this one before, and major spring up, twice the size of the last one. And that's what's going to happen right now. We're going up here, folks. We're going up here, 1266. That's where we're headed, folks. Look at her go. I don't buy penny stocks anymore. Way too risky. Yep. Tim, Sam Brinkman Freed will serve 25 years in prison. All right. I'm going to pin that message, Tim. <laughs> I pin in that message. Oh, you know, they're going to tear that tight one up. Oh, my goodness gracious, that youngster. You're going to be feeling it in every orifice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, come on, man. You all know that guy's going to take a walk in the highfalutin 
prison. <laughs> He's going to be with those white collar prisoners. <laughs> oh, don't worry. There's plenty that'll like him there too. <laughs> oh, he'll get a lot of attention there. I doubt he'll go long neglected. <laughs> uh, I'm suspect. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious, folks. Double dip barely below the line. It goes up $3. Big time dip below the line. It goes up 6 Double dip below. It goes up 3 Big time below the the line goes up six. Yeah. From where we are now goes up six dollars. Wouldn't that be just perfect? And look at it. Who's going to buy it? Who wants to? Here's the problem they've got. Who wants to sell it here? Every one of those institutions that I'm going to show you here on this thing, every one of these institutions who've been accumulating, not one of them wants to sell. <clears throat> You guys might not be aware of this, but I'm going to take you back on Institutional Road. We're going down Institutional Road right now, and we're going to take Institutional Road quite a far back, all right? And we want to go down Institutional Road all the way back into December and January so you can see how many institutions were interested in SoFi during that time, okay? And I want you to be aware that during this time here, look at all of them were leave, that were shorting this thing. Look at all this red, red, put, 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 all coming in. Red, 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 red. Well, because that was as of 1129, everything changed and went green. Look at here. Everybody, watch this. Back on November 29th, there were two institutions that went in on SoFi. The day before, there was one that left. The day, none, and 1124, there was one institution. Here on the 22nd, one institution. Here on the 21st, two institutions. You see this? This is in November, folks. One and two institutions a day. Here on the 14th, one institution made entry. On the 12th, you start to see an increase. Oh my God, you had like 20 institutions come in on SoFi on December the 12th. Well, what happened on December the 12th with the price? Let's go back and look at December the 12th and see where the price was on December the 12th. October, November, December the 12th. The price was all the way down to 782, the low that day, only to run to 1016. You see the relevance why I'm showing you this? All right, so you can see that that they ran the price down to the lowest it had been. And when they did that, look at how many institutions came in December the 12th. Look how many institutions decided to add to their positions on December the 12th, all right? And then you get up here to the 28th, the 29th, the 30th. Look at the third, look at the second. One institution, one institution, one institution, one institution. Here on the 8th, three institution. On the 9th, one institution. This is all the way in January, folks. This is just a month and a half, half ago. We were seeing just one or two institutions a day. But then all of a sudden, you start to move up the calendar, and all of a sudden, things start to change. And you got more institutions here on the 26th. Take a look at how many came in on January the 26th. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep going here, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 on the 26th. On the 29th, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on the 29th. Here we go again, 30, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. This is on the 29th. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. On January the 29th, 23 institutions. What was the price on January the 29th? Let's go look. January 29th. The price had gone up to nine dollars and forty-five cents from seven twenty-one on the nineteenth. The reason it had gone to seven twenty-one in the first place is because, ladies and gentlemen, on the nineteenth, this day right here, they borrowed ten million shares to make the price fall to seven twenty-one right there. After that, 
after January the 21st, when they ran it down on 10 million shares, they didn't have any shares until the 29th. That's why the price went from the 21st when they had it at 721 all the way to the 29th and the price had hit 945. It was up a dollar and 20 something cents on them. $2 and 24 cents up from that low. Because why? Well, because they didn't have any shares left. Look, zero shares left to short with. No more shares left to borrow after that date, January 19th to the 29th. No shares left. And during that time, on January 23rd, they failed to deliver 39 million shares on January the 23rd. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because there's another day when SoFi was driven way down, all right? And that from that price of 945, they came at it for two weeks and drove the price all the way down to a low of right here, 778 on the 13th of February, <clears throat> coincidentally, on the 13th, lucky 13, they drove it down to 778 from that 945 price. So they had it down $2.20. And what happened on February the 13th when they got it down to $2.20? Folks, after that, the price started rising after February 13th. And it went up and up and up and up and up to $9.18 on February the 28th, right? <clears throat> There's when they got the shares back. They started borrowing right here. And then look how many they borrowed now. They're borrowing again, just like they did over here. Borrowing, borrowing, borrowing down to virtually nothing. As a matter of fact, just on the 21st, the lowest amount they've ever seen they had. On the 21st, they borrowed all the way down to only 35,000 shares left to borrow. You can see right there on, November, on the 21st, right here's the day, the 21st, March 21st. It says 85,000, but it was less than that. It was 35,000. Oh, yeah, folks, they've got plenty of problems on their hands. We just hit 749. What did we go up to? What's the new high, folks, for SoFi this afternoon? SoFi right now, 744 a share. I'm loving it, folks. I, every time I look at this five-day chart on the shorts, I just feel better and better and better. They are totally, totally, totally screwed. They're in trouble, folks. This five-day chart proves it. There's the five-day. Look how many of them shorted right here uh, when the price, you know they're borrowing more than they've ever borrowed and the price was at 734 where they shorted it and they shorted it there at 736. They shorted it there again at 736. They shorted it right there at 734 and they shorted it right there at right where we are now. Just that price, they shorted it right there big time. They came at it on the 25th of March at 745 a share. They shorted the crap out of it. Then when it came over here and fell, when it started rising, they shorted the shit out of it again at 738. And they shorted it again at 739 and drove it all the way down. And they shorted it here when it went up to 722 and pulled back. And they shorted it again right there. All these shorted positions from here all the way to currently have lost money, folks. Every freaking one of them. Every one of them this week virtually has lost money and they're losing money as we speak. And that's why they're trying so hard to stop this thing from jumping right back up here to 750 right now. They can't handle that, man. That'd be the every position they had this week losing money again on SoFi from shortening it in the $4 and still holding those positions. Oh, yeah, I'm showing you guys. I show you. I show you a double dip below the trend line, which is running up there. I show you a deep double dip and then an even bigger jump up. This price move from right here to here was only $3. This move from right here on the big double dip was a $6 move. Then we got here again, a short double dip and a $3 move. And then the big double dip and we're going up six. 
just like we did on this double dip when it went bigger the second time, deep down below the trend line. That's what we just did again, and I see history repeating itself where we now climb to an even higher high over the next few days. That's what I see. I see a bloodbath for shorts on this screen with 80% of the volume acquired and shorted below where we are now. And they got a hell of a lot of shares to return right now, folks. They got a lot of shares to return. Let me show you let me show you where they are. I'll give you a little bit better of a description of where the shorts are right now, okay? I'm going to show you what they look like right right now, okay? Just give me a second here. I'm going to show you. This is them. Here they are. This is them. That's them right there, folks. There they are, folks. That's where the shorts are right now. The middle of this, this hole is a guy by the name of David Chiavrini. Everyone, that's his name. That's his game. He dug a hole and now he's ashamed. And he's getting lame, lame, lame. And he'll take the blame with his shame and his game, his lame game. 107 people on this channel right now, in case you weren't aware of it. That's a record high for the day. And I like to ask each and every one of you, while I show you the hole that they've created for themselves, I'd like to ask you to please hit the like button together at the same time in a few seconds or here. Now, don't do it yet, but I'd like you to do it in a moment. All right, we're going to hit it here at 12-12. At 12-12, five seconds from now, four, three, two, one, please depress the like button right now for me. Let's jump up to 115 likes. Whilst I show you this very interesting information. And uh, si c'est possible que vous êtes ici, tu tout parles français, je dis merci beaucoup que vous êtes ici avec moi aujourd'hui. Je suis très content que vous êtes ici avec moi. Et dit toutes vos amis qui viennent ici pour voir moi chaque jour parce que je peux parler français avec le, le, votre ami aussi. <coughs> Rick Lawrence just picked up some S O U N. Let's hope it goes up. If not, I'm com- <laughs> I'm contacting Mary. S O U N. All right, what do they do? Drive it down again. Beautiful. <laughs> You're in the Mary uh, joining in with Mary right now. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for hitting that like button just now who done so. I appreciate that very, very much and get the likes even more. We need to get uh, <laughs> David G. Uh, I love this picture. Yep. Ah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> That's shorty right there, right now, right here, right now. There's no other place I'd rather see shorty than where they be. <laughs> and by the way, you want to see what a chart looks like with the bulls in control? Look at the low right there at 7.39. And look at the low right there at 10.13, 7.39. And look at the low right here at 10.20 p.m. a.m. this morning. Where was the low? 7.39. 10.20 was the last time, folks. Look at the low right here at 11.08, 7.41. Look at the low right here at 11.42. Uh, what was that time over here? That was 11.12, 11.48. There it was at 11.42, 7.41. Look at the low right now. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, CA. Thanks for all the hard work you do, man. Oh, yeah, baby. Cham. Damn, Cham. You know what? I've never even seen this person here before, Cham. Hello and welcome and thank you, Chan. Cham. I am very grateful for that. Very, very grateful for your contributing in such a way. You got you guys see this, Cham. I don't think I've ever seen Cham here on the channel. If so, he's not real frequent. 
but my God, he just came in here, hadn't said anything all day, and bam, hits me, cham, hits me with five bucks. And it's more than five because it's Canadian. Thank you so very much for, for setting an example for others on this channel that probably should know that we need to get this thing going to more and more people around the globe. And the way we can do that is my, me staying on here daily and showing all this great information you can valuably learn from. And you'll never forget it, folks. What I'm teaching you on a daily basis is something you can carry with you when I'm long gone. You can carry it with you the rest of your lives. You can know about double bottoms and triple bottoms and crossovers and uh, what they mean when you got a triple upside crossover on a three-month chart or a golden cross. And what it means when you see this volume of shares that they're borrowing the shit out of right now. And folks, they've already borrowed all the way back down to only 1.3 million. Look at that, folks. They had this morning on the 26th, look at the date, the 28th, right here, the date. I want you to look at the number. It was how many shares did they have? 6.7 million shares they had yesterday on the 27th. And now they have 1.3 million again. They're in trouble, people. They're in trouble. And I was showing you how many, how few institutions were involved in this stock. There were just each day we were seeing one and two back in January. And it's changed now. And they're coming in big time. Look what happened here on this day. Look how many institutions came in on February the 12th. Look how many institutions, not one and two and three, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just counting the green ones. Eight, JP Morgan for more. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. State of Wisconsin Investment Board. <laughs> 14, 15, 16, 17. North Carolina, treasurer of the state of North Carolina, picks up 426,000 shares on the 12th of February, 33% increase in their portfolio, 37% increase, 24%, 28%, 22%, 43% increases. Oh my God, folks, this is getting crazy. And this was just on the 12th. If you look at the next day, the 13th, Look how many institutions came in long instead of one and two and three institutions. There was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was just up to Huey Investments. Get to Huey down here. <clears throat> ten to Huey. Now we're down here. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen as of Fortis. I'm only counting the green ones, folks. I'm only counting the green ones. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. This is all on the 13th, folks. 22 on the 13th. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Invesco was one of them. That's that's KBBW Bank, KBW, Invesco. They downgraded us. They're the last, one of the last ones to downgrade us and make the price fall about 20%. Invesco, they own 772,000 shares. That's KBW Bank, everybody. I'm going to show you so you know. This is another freaking bank that owns a shitload of SoFi shares downgrading the stock. KBW. <clears throat> KBWB is the name of the stock. KBW Bank. Invesco. There it is. Downgraded our stock and made the price fall 25 or 30%. And those bastards own a shitload of shares, just like Morgan Stanley, who just downgraded us on July the 13th and downgraded us on January the 31st. They all do it. They downgrade the crap out of our stock, and they own a ton of it. There they are, Invesco, KBW Bank, ETF, downgraded our stock. And that's, the, that's them, folks. That's the one that downgraded us, just so you're aware of it. I'm making sure you understand that every one of these son of a bitches that downgrades uh, our stock, KBW, downgrade SoFi, every one of them, they hold a bunch of shares of this stock. Every one of them does it. And they do it because they want more shares at cheaper prices. Here they are. 
KBW, Sofi stock downgraded by KBW, warns that shares could drop 20%. They, sh they sure as shit hope it does so they can buy a bunch of more of them, just like Morgan Stanley did when they only owned $58 million worth of Sofi, and then they ended up now with $107 million worth after they downgraded it. Folks, I'm here to make sure you guys all know that these people here downgraded our stock January the 3rd, and they made the price drop. Keith Bruett Woods, KBW. And there they are. They own a whole crap load of our stock. It's just disgusting. Every single one of these people that downgrades our stock, all of them always own shares of the stock. Sorry, sons of bitches. I already I pull it out of here because I want you to know of it. It's the truth of the matter, folks. I'm here to expose their underhanded, sneaky, slimy, snaky ways. Invesco Limited. 772,000 shares of SoFi and downgrading the stock price. And what did they do? They just increased their share price on the 13th by 19%. <laughs> God dang. Uh. And anyway, as you saw the count I was showing you here on, on February the 13th, I know already because I've already counted it up, 47 institutions came in and added to their portfolio, including Invesco, 40 freaking seven of them, people. And the very next day, not 47, 141 institutions came in and bought SoFi shares on February the 14th. Where was the price when that happened? Where was SoFi's price when all those institutions on February 13th bought? It was between 820 and 778. Look at that, 62 million shares. And on that day, 43 institutions added to their position. And the craziest thing is, the next day, folks, the price was between 843 and 810. And 140 institutions added to their portfolio on the 14th. On the 14th, when the price was between what I just showed you there, 810 and 843, on 44 million shares traded, most of the volume was pouring in to add to their positions on SoFi on the 14th. Look at these days that they did it. Hap Trading raised their position 35%. Hap Trading here raised 104%. Look at these all these investors coming in long. Brevin, uh, Interval Partners, Interval Partners, LM, they're new to the new to the stock. Over here, uh, I'm going to show you all these that came in on the 14th. Quantum, Group 1 raised theirs by 17%. They raised their portfolio by 33%, 34%. That's State Street Group. They're one of the biggest holders of shareholders of SoFi and increased their position by 34% when the price was between 210 and two, uh, between uh, 810 and 843. And it's important for you guys to all understand and know this, okay? Can you look up PLTR, the downgrade they got today? Yeah, I already, I already looked at PLTR, um, and I'm not worried about PLTR. I own PLTR, and most of you bought this PLTR with me when it was in the 11s and 13s. And uh, I already looked at that, and PLTR has no, I have no fears whatsoever about it being down 4%. I could care less. If it was down 25%, I might take a little more of a deeper concern, but I am not concerned at all when PLTR is barely down. And I already looked it up. I'll look it up again for you guys. I saw it the last time I looked down, P PLTR was down 4%. And it's almost like yesterday when What's Her Face came over here, and I'm just going to call her What's Her Face, and got all mad at me because sound was down, and she was paranoid and freaked out and scared and lost and like a little puppy doll that got set out in the sidewalk in the rain. I'm not concerned about this at all. I won't buy any more. I already own it for much less than this. And there's no way I could ever lose any money on PLTR. The downgrade. Oh, whoop de doo man. I'm, it's funny. I'm talking to you right now about SoFi and its downgrades that have come time after time. Five big analysts downgraded us on June the 15th. That's right. June the 15th. Five star analyst warns. Three downgrades, SoFi stock alert, downgrade, schmound grade, pound grade, wound grade, KBW downgraded us. They own freaking 700 million shares of SoFi. 
and these probably this one that just done downgraded P of LTR wouldn't be surprised if they don't own some of the damn shit too. I just tell it like it is, folks. <laughs> oh my God. SoFi downgraded. Every time they downgrade us, it's because they got no other option. They have to. They had to do it on June the 15th. This downgrade had to come out on that day because they ran out completely out of shares. They had no more on June the 14th. They were done, tapped out. They were all the way down to only 350,000 shares on that day. 350,000 shares on June the 14th. The very next day, here come the big downgrades. The very next day, they called up and said, help us, Lord, please help us. We have shorted this thing at 445 a share, and it's gone up 125%. And there it is, five big analyst cuts on June the 15th, one day following them being completely out of shares to control the price with anymore. That's right. On May the 15th, SoFi's price was down to 445 a share. And by this date here, it had gone up 125% to 1023 a share on June the 14th. And they only had 350,000 shares left to borrow. It, they've been borrowing all along here from May the 15th, borrowing, 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 because the price was going from friggin' 445 to 1023. And they borrowed and borrowed and they borrowed the well dry. That's why they got those five big analyst cuts on June the 15th, people. That's why. Wow, Elaine, okay, can you look at PLTR? Yep, uh, I'm not worried either. I bought more. I have 55,000 shares now. Good. Don't be afraid of PLTR. Don't be afraid, afraid of SoFi. Look at this thing now. They have made every effort. The, the, low, the low has risen now, as I was showing you earlier. The low has risen now from 732 to 739 to 739 to 739. That was the last time for 739. The triple bottom, folks. There it was right here at 732, 739. Right there's the low, 739 at that number right freaking there. And then there it is again, 739 right freaking there. Say goodbye to Shorty Hood. 732 and then up to 739, a seven cent gain on two bottoms. And then the next time they reached the bottom over here was what price? Look at the price that it was, 740. So a double bottom off 739 after the low of the day at 732. Then we come to 740. And what's the next low right here? What's the low there? 741. What's the low right there? Again, just now. What was it run down to? The resistance is too strong. 742. 732, 739, 739, 742, 740. And, and, ah, up she goes, 741, 742. And now the high propels to even a higher high now. It looks awesome, folks. We're going to close at the high of the day today, SoFi is. Two days in a row closing at the high of the day. Nice. And you know what I like even more than that? Just watched Dumb Money last night. I didn't realize that Hood disabled the buy button on their customers. I hope they all left and they would never buy or use Hood. Yep. Yep, they absolutely do did. <clears throat> no one could buy it anymore. It was total manipulation. I watched that movie and I went and I, I got a list of all of his stocks and I wrote them down for everybody on this channel so that they all know to follow the stocks that he had because he was so following a lot of stocks and I have them here. And every, every man, I'm telling you, 80% of his, his stocks have gone through the roof since he owned them and I brought them up to everybody quite some time ago to let you know that he was, he was spot on on a bunch of other stocks as well. These are the ones that he bought. And I, I had written down at one time the price that he bought these and where they were. And it was insane how much they had gone up, man. He had picked some other great winners. Uh, P-T-E-N, M-E-O-H, W-T-T-R, C-B-E-O, D-B-I, R-R-C, P-B-F, P-U-M-P, M-A-C, G-T-E, B-O-W-L. Every one of those stocks, folks, that he picked had absolutely just catapulted up 
three baggers, five baggers, 10 baggers, 20 baggers. He, he knew what he was talking about. Deep effing value, folks. That was the name that he used on Reddit. Now he's not on YouTube anymore. But I wrote down all those stocks and I tracked them and he's done very freaking good for himself over the years, that guy. And it's a shame that they pulled him in front of Congress and tried to get him to be the, they were trying to stick him for everything. It was nothing he did. He screwed over some, some shorties though, didn't he, boy? He hit him where it hurt. He drove one of those hedge funds completely out of business. Belly up because of that GME. We got to make sure and put Cham into the tank real quick for his last donation. He goes up to the top. I want to thank you, C-H-A-M. And uh, so I'm going to go over here right now, and we're going to put his name right here at the top of the list, C-H-A-M, right next to J.P. Panick. Okay. There we go. And now, Cham, everyone will know that you are a contributor to this channel and keeping it going. There we go. All right, let's put this back down here now. Oh, my God, SoFi. Yeah, I hear that, Elaine. They got a big media press right now to, to uh, push their new gold car credit card. What BS, absolutely. The, the, the company, if you were to compare Hood right now to SoFi, we should be, they're totally overvalued, folks. And they have not shown the kind of uh, profits that SoFi has lately. Hood, H-O-O-D. I'll show you right now. Let's see how Hood squares up to SoFi right now at $20 a share. Let's go see how they square up to SoFi. Let's, let's, let's look at them side by side. And let's see which one deserves a better share price, a higher share price. Let's look at them side by side, okay? Here you go. SoFi Technologies at $7.45 a share. Let's scroll right down here and take a look at SoFi Technologies revenue, okay? Here we go. We're going to compare these. We're going to com compare these right side by side, everybody. Perfect. So we can see them together and you can see what I'm talking about. Why SoFi is so much better, okay? Here you go. Here's Robinhood. Going to come over here and look at what they've got on their revenue chart and earnings. Just let's, let's, let's go take a look. This is a company with a $17 billion market cap. $17.54 billion market cap. All right. And take a look at what they've done with revenue. Down. Almost double, drops back down, barely over where it was two ago. Earnings negative, negative, negative. Look at their revenue, folks, from 958 million to 1.82 billion, back down to 1.36 billion. What's SoFi's revenue? How does that compare to SoFi's revenue right there side by side? How, do they, how does that compare? Huh. Revenue, 565 million, 977 million, 1.52 billion, 2.7 billion. That's, this is SoFi, this is Robin Hood. Just so you know, 958 to 1.8 to 1.3 to 1.8. Come over here to the quarterly. <laughs> Man, oh man, folks, their their earnings were higher. Their earnings dropped. Their earnings media mediocre. That's their earnings and revenue. Look at that flat across there, flat across the quarterly chart. Look at SoFi over the quarterly chart. Does this look flat to you? Shit, no. It's up. It's up. It's up. It's up. 
and yet you got Hood priced at 20 a share and SoFi where we are. Do you see the, the, the difference, folks? There's Robin Hood's quarterly earnings, worse and worse and worse and, and, and equal, all right? There's no gains going on there. There's no growth happening there. There's no growth. This is what you call stagnant. There you see growth. All right? It's as simple as that. I hear you, Come Rocket. Uh, I'm still angry at Hood after watching that movie. Retail always gets screwed, and it's not in a good way. That's right. I don't know if you happen to have a pen or not, or a, a photo, or maybe you can use your camera. But what I'd like to suggest you do is take a look at these stocks right here. Take a picture of these stocks. Take a look at take a look at these stocks. The picture of these stocks, okay? If you can, take a picture. These are all the ones in Roaring Kitty's portfolio. All right. And then go back and look at these on a five year chart. Each one of these, go look at these on a five year chart. And man, oh man, has he made a killing off of these. And look at this. Look at all of them that pay dividends, they have a D next to them. Their dividend rate is 3.16. Theirs is 1.16. Theirs is 3.15. Theirs is 4.49. This one, 2.18. This one, 1.14. This one, 1.68. That one, 4.32. They, they pay dividends, folks. Just so you know. Yep, Elaine says, I see the manipulation for sure. Oh, you know, it gets more clear and clearer and clearer when I show you how many shares they have run out of and didn't have any left. And then they called for the manipulation and three downgrades the next day. I expose it all. I want people to know how they did it. This was June the 15th. June the 15th. Five big analysts cut SoFi technology slash with three downgrades. All lies because every one of them raised their price target. They went from 10 from 950. These people went from eight up to eight dollars from 650. They raised their target price, and yet the headlines are calling these downgrades. It's just absolute 100% manipulation in no other form. And you can see the coincidence of that article coming out the day after they had completely run out of shares to short with, and the price had gotten out of control on them. And gone from 455 right here, 455 a share on May the 15th, 455 a share to 1023, and they only had that many shares left to short with. And folks, today, look at this: they had 6.7 million shares returned today earlier, and now look what they got: 1.3 million left already. They've already used another 5 million shares. You'd think with that they'd be able to hold SoFi in place. Just think where the so the price would be right now on SoFi if they hadn't borrowed another 5 million shares today, in fact. And now we're only down to having left 1.3 million left. Just think where SoFi's price would be right now if they hadn't just used all of those seven, six, however many shares they just returned and they had it back up to 6.7 million I just showed you right there, right here. And I'm going to come down here so you can see it a little bit easier. Maybe it'll get easier on this chart. There it is. Right here. This is today's chart, the 28th. They had 7.1 million shares returned, but they couldn't do it for long. The next thing you know, they had borrowed 4 million, 3.9 million. And the next thing you know, they borrowed even more and had it all the way down there to just 1.3 million shares left. So 6 million shares today, 5.8 million shares to make the price not go any higher. <laughs> That's what it's happening here. They're in deep trouble, people.
And Lane Nelson says, I've been in that one DSL for several years now. It pays monthly. Yeah. You go back and look at every one of those that I just gave you the symbols for, and you track them over the last five years and see where they were when he was buying them three years ago in 2021. See where they are now. He's killed it, man. That guy, Keith Gill, he has killed it. Not just on GME stock did he kill it. He's killed it on all those picks, almost every one of them. He's made made very, very good money. And I bring them to your attention because you might want to take a look at them too because they pay dividends. Nice to get a little check in the mail every month. Boom, boom, boom. Here you go. <clears throat> Everybody, SoFi is about to close today at the high of the day. And if you don't know what that means, that usually means a spike in the price on the next day up. Now, I see that there's going to be an ad running here. Please let me know what type of ad is about to come onto my channel here. If you wouldn't mind, everyone, I would appreciate it. <clears throat> Please let me know what ad is about to come on here in about 30 seconds. And uh, someone told me, <laughs> I know it. It's quite the name. Someone told me that the last Kurt commercial came up was Joe Biden. I would love for you, please, to let me know if that happens here in five seconds from now. Who is commercializing my channel? Who is advertising? If you don't mind, watch just a few seconds and tell me who it is. <clears throat> <laughs> Tell me who it is. I'm going to refresh this page now because I can see there's about a four minute delay. SoFi is going to close near the high of the day. One of the things you guys and gals need to be very aware of here, you know SoFi is in trouble when the volume is only 13 million shares and they can't make the price go down. And you saw that they just borrowed that many shares. <laughs> Had returned 7 million shares this morning. And now they only had 3.2 and then they drove it down to 1.3 million. Probably during that time is what they were doing right there when they attacked there and attacked there. And these attacks are using those millions of shares they're borrowing back again to try to drive it down. But the high gets higher and higher and higher and higher. The low gets higher and higher all day since the very beginning. The deepest low. Another thing you should feel good about, folks. SoFi's low yesterday was seven dollars and seventeen cents, and today seven thirty-two. Also, a gain on the high. That's another thing you should feel very good about. They dropped us nine cents yesterday. We made a ten cent gain, and we're about to close on the high of the day now. There's honestly no telling how high this thing's going to go without them even achieving a lunchtime low. They couldn't even drive us down. Folks, here's what you need to look at. They took us from this high right here of 744 and made the price drop to 739. It's a five cent drop. 
over here, when it got to this high at 746, they made it drop all the way down here to 740, a six cent drop. Here again, they got to the high. The price was 745. They dropped the price down to a low of 741, a five cent drop. Here again, 747 drops it down to 742, a five cent drop. Pops back up. Gets to a price of 746. Does it drop five cents? No, it drops two. <laughs> okay. It goes to from 746 to a low back here of 745, one whole penny. And it's already starting to make another move up. So you got a five cent drop, you got a six cent drop, you got a five cent drop, and now you got a one penny drop off of that high right there just then 746 a 1 cent drop people Twelve forty-five. we've already got 864 people on this channel today I keep showing you guys all these gorgeous charts I compare you directly with Robin Hood and prove that Robin Hood is a flat non-growth company barely making any moves but they're priced at $20 a share and you compare them over here to SoFi and the freaking company is revenue and earnings are just going up and up and up and all they're doing is gaining quarterly rising 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 and price has been dropped it's just absolutely ludicrous and the shorts don't see this. They can't see this. Oh, they see it all right. That's why they're trying and digging their hole so much deeper. You got a stock here with a $7.8 billion market cap versus a stock with a $17.54 $17 billion market cap. And look at HUD's price today. Does that look good? The one day chart, does that look good to you? Does that look like this chart right here today at all? To anybody? Hell no. We look great right here. And for a day trader, a dream come true every five, six cents, six cents, five cents. You're talking about 12 cents there, five cents there, that's 22 cents, five cents there, that's 32 cent move today if you're day trading this. It's true. Now the low price here is 744, 745. After already seeing the low down here all the way this morning is 732 and then 740, 739, 739. It rises here to 741. It rises here to 742. Rises here again. Rises here again now. The low getting higher and higher and higher on every second that you look at it. They can't pull it down any further. They don't have the volume to do it. They don't have the shares to do it. They've maxed out again thought they had returned. Everybody was like, oh man, look at that. They've returned a whole bunch of shares today. Oh no, they didn't. <laughs> they returned them all the way from yesterday. They had freaking 6.7 million and all the way up to 7.1 million. And then boom, back down to 3.3, 3.2 and down to 1.3 million shares left. 1.3 million. Again, the hole keeps getting di deeper and deeper. Oh, I'm following it right now. They've got 1.3 million right now. 1.3 million. They had 6.7, and now they've got 1.3. million shares borrowed by Shorty. Again, just now. Yep. Oh, okay. You didn't get an ad. Okay. Well, if they didn't provide an ad, then good. That's good. I'm not, I, they said they were going to run an ad and I don't know. Maybe you have a premium. If you have a premium, you won't see an ad. If you've got YouTube premium. 
Uh, Elaine says, it's a low volume day shakeout before a holiday kind of day. Yep. Well, it's not really, not for soap by, but this working on PLTR today. Yep. Well, there's a low volume, there's low volume across the entire market. But one thing I'm glad to see here, the S&P 500 green and the biggest gainer again of all indexes is the Russell, the one we're in. It's the biggest gainer again today of all the Russell is the biggest gainer. You can see the S&P 500 barely up 0.5. The Dow is even at zero. The NASDAQ fractionally low, but the Russell small cap index rising where SoFi is. And what that means, very, very everybody, in case you're not aware of it, is that the shorts are fighting an uphill battle. I'd be curious to know how many real uh, SoFi retail SoFi holders do not lock up their shares that can't be borrowed. I wish I could get every single one of them to lock up their shares so they couldn't be borrowed. I tell them every day on this channel, please lock up your shares so they can't be borrowed. Go onto your platform and make sure you check on that box that says don't let people loan my don't loan out my shares. Man, if we could get everybody to do that and then put the good till canceled sell orders at $14.99, $17.99, $19.99, these shorts would be in more of peril, even more peril if every single retailer knew about that. Tie up your shares. Take away that option. Don't let them have your shares to borrow again and use against us. It's the most important thing, really. I mean, it really is. If we can get all retail buyers. And for those of you that are joining my channel new here today, I want to greet you and thank you for being here. I'm very grateful for your presence on my channel. I'd like to ask you, please, if you wouldn't mind doing a favor, we're coming up here to 1252 in the afternoon. And I want to tell you that in 20 seconds, we're going to do a countdown and have you hit that like button simultaneously. And we're going to hit that at 1251, 40, uh, 1252, exactly. So we're going to start the countdown now in 15 seconds. Here we go. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Please simultaneously, let's get that like button from 117 up to 125 likes or something right here. And then we get even more people brought over to the channel to hear what I'm showing everybody here today. And what I'm showing you right now is a very, very, very nice looking SoFi one day chart. Very resilient SoFi one day chart. And an even awesome, more awesomer looking long term chart. And the reason that I mentioned awesome, more awesome, I should say, long term chart is because I'm showing you right now. Something that you need to know, okay? I'm going to hit the draw tool here to be able to, to express this a little bit more clearly. And this is what I see happening right here, right now, okay? This is the what I see. This is what I see. All right. For all 80 of you, here we go. This is our trending upwards line. Stock price moving up along this trending line right here. All right. Right here, way back when, <laughs> six months ago, they drove the price down barely below my trend line twice. Then the price shot up $3. The second time, we saw a lateral move going up slowly, then a big drop and a deeper drop the second time. Look how much further below the trend line this first time. Look the second time, how much deeper it went the second time. All right. But then it didn't go up from here $3. It rose from this second deeper line. It rose $6 from $4.45 to $10.23. $5.80 jump. Well, then over here, look at here. You got a double bottom barely below the trend line, just like this one. That double bottom barely below the trend line 
followed by a more acute up angle than this double bottom and this angle, which was here. This was the angle on this trend line right here that I'm going to show you here. That was the trend line on that one there. Okay. There it is. This one here, after that double bottom, folks, that trend line wasn't at that angle. This trend line got very acute, everyone. That's the trend line. So over here, you had a little double bottom, the nice pop, the drop down, a trend line gradually up, the double bottom, a big pop. Here, you've got a double bottom. And then the trend line goes acutely up, a double bottom again below the trend line, and acutely up. It's no more, no more like this. These moves after they drop it below this are acutely up, acutely up, and more acutely up is coming after this second double bottom, which is to the same depth below the trend line as these two double bottoms were here on May the 4th. And May the 15th, May the 4th saw, saw a low of 4.59, May the 15th saw a deeper low of 4.45, 4.55. So on here, May the 4th, 4.59, here, May the 15th, 4.55. Here, the low, don't know what it was, right around 6.66. Here, the low, and I want you to be aware that this time the low dropped below the trend line, which was sitting right here at this number when before the drop happened, the trend line was sitting at 541 and fell from 541 all the way down to 470 something or 477. Okay. So the price fell from 541 to 477, a 70 cent drop. And then from this trend line right here, the price was at 816 and it did it fall 70 cents again to the bottom <clears throat> 692 no it fell even further <clears throat> it fell like a dollar and 40 cents and then folks this thing is going to go up i think this thing is going to rise right like the last time that's what i see happening i think this high on this after here, when we saw the slightly below and then the deep below and the big bounce, here we see the slightly low, then the deep below, and then the big bounce. That's what I think is going to happen. And I'm here for you to look at that and, and observe it and figure it out. And by the way, folks, I just showed you how they're making this price fall now. They just got through borrowing. Just then, they borrowed another 6 million shares. They had returned up to 6.7 million, and now they've only got 1.3. They've got 6.5 million shares to burn through here. Watch the volume. It was just at 13 million, now 14.3. So they've used 1.3 million already. Now, now 1.4 million. And we're fast forwarding. So now 1.5 million. I'm letting you know that's how they're making it fall right now with those shares that they just went in and borrowed again. I, I, I'm glad that you're here and so you can understand the method to, to with which they use. They just had, right here I just showed you, they returned all the way to 6.7 million. And now, just now, they've borrowed back down to 1.3. 6.7 minus 1.3. 6.7 minus 1.3 equals, they've got 5.4 million shares to run it down now. And they've already used a million and a half of them. So now they've got about 3 million left. Just so you're aware of it. And by the way, you can know for sure there hasn't been any announcement come out. There's no reason for it other than that I'm showing you now. They borrowed all those shares to run it down. They just went deeper into the into the debt, deeper in debt. And the price isn't even close to yesterday's low of 718. That's a very expensive, costly 
short endeavor right there. You can think about how much money it adds up to when the price was just up there at uh, what we were seeing, 746 a share. We saw 746 a share where they stepped in and borrowed all those shares just now. 746 a share. 5.4 million. times 7.46 equals $40 million they just went in. $40 million they just used. 40 mil, folks, to try to drive the price down now. And they've tapped out all their borrower shares again. They've already done it again. Uh, isn't it cool to be on this channel and uh, see exactly how they made the price just fall by 11 cents, 12 cents? Well, they had to borrow freaking 4.5 million shares to make it happen. And now they're using them up. They're selling them back and forth to one another. And uh, there were I tracked it. There were 13.8. Now we're at 15.2. So they've now used about uh, uh, almost 2 million of the 4.5. They've got 2.5 million shares left to work with here. 2.5 million left. Good for them. Wonder how long that's going to last. Two and a half million shares this afternoon. How long that'll last them. I know one thing. It's going to cost them $40 million to make it happen. Going to cost Shorty forty million today to make that happen. What they just did. Bring it, Shorty. I'm pulling in here on the one day chart right now so I can see how many million they just used. I've already got an idea, but I'm coming in here closer on this. God, how many did they get? At least here on this channel, you guys don't remain in the dark and you don't have to ask yourself why and what's happening. You can see exactly how they do it. I'm here to expose them for your convenience so you can get a very good grip on how they make these things happen. And uh, I just proved to you how they did it just then by how many shares they've just borrowed just now. Went from returning... Having 450,000 shares yesterday returned back up to 7.6 million, 6.7 million, and then just borrowed them all again. 6.7 million and borrowed almost every one of them again. And note that they have 1.3 million left. See that? 13, 1.3 million. 6.7 million to 1.3 million. And I don't give a damn. SoFi's green. Spend $45 million to make SoFi down one penny today at the at uh, 103 in the afternoon. 103 in the afternoon, and we're now 20 cents higher than yesterday's low. Beautiful. One oh three PM, twenty cents higher than yesterday's low. Yeah, I'm showing everybody what they did. I showed it, I'm showing you every exactly how they're making it happen right now. And uh 
This ain't going to help them out come Monday, baby. <laughs> this isn't going to help them Monday. This might be a very short-term little bandage, a six-point-something, $4.5 million bandage that costs them $40 million to, to get. That's a lot of shares that they just borrowed from the available tree again right then. You can see right there this, that when they did it, you can see that they had 6.7 million shares to work with this on the 27th. And on the 28th now, it's dropped to just 1.3 million shares. They're using them now. Believe me, they've been holding them in their hold, holding them until the last minute. And they actually went too early. They went too early. They've already used 2 million. And my God, they can't even get the price to fall below 736. And nobody sells SoFi down one freaking penny. No one. Nobody. Just them. $40 million worth of shares right here, folks. They just used them. They just went through them. They just borrowed. They had they had returned up to $6.7 million. Good for them. But, oh, no, they had to use it again just now. And now they've only got $1 million left or so. And they're going to use every one of those up very quickly here, folks. They're running through them quick. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, I looked down, and when I saw that, there were 13 8 and I see now we're at 15.8. So they have used out of the four and a half million, they've already gone through 2 million of them just to get to this number here. They've already used almost half of what they borrowed to get to the number they are now. And unfortunately, everybody's buying the damn thing here because they want to buy it cheaper, just like every time they downgrade any stock, somebody else wants to get the price of it down so they can buy more of it themselves. All downgrades are, are, especially these three downgrades that came out on SoFi on June the 15th, those, th those three downgrades that came, it says five bidding analysts, but then for some reason the story only talks about three. <laughs> this is the headline on YouTube, five big analyst cuts. SoFi technology slashed with three downgrades. See how they word this to make you think that five actually did when really only three did? And all, all three of them raised their target prices. This one here went to eight from 650. So they raised their target price. They said with a price target of $8 from 650, that's supposed to be a downgrade. And Bank of America raised to $10 from 950. And that is supposed to be a downgrade. Okay. Oppenheimer's downgrade was probably to such a higher number from their previous. They didn't even post it. They just said they just downgraded them. <laughs> Guy was interviewed on CNBC as to why they were downgrading. And he said, well, they've just gone up too far too fast. The price was only $4.55 in May, less than a month ago. And now it's $10.23. So that's just too far too fast. We're going to downgrade it. <laughs> that doesn't happen to coincide with the day June the 14th, which is the day they did the downgrades on the 15th, the day before... Oh, Shorty had seen the price go from four 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 fifty five a share back here May the fifteenth. The price had gone from four fifty five a share to ten twenty three, and they had no shares left to short with. On June fourteenth, they had whittled it down to only three hundred and fifty thousand shares left to short. So they had to call those people on June the next day and say, "God dang it, help us!" June the fifteenth, they came out with the triple downgrade. I show you all of this stuff, folks, so you can understand the manipulation and how it works. And I show you even now, Robinhood, $20 a share price, $17.54 billion market cap at $20 a share. And their performance looks lagging compared to SoFi. Their charts lag in comparison to show, SoFi's revenue increases. They can't hold a candle to SoFi's growth rate. And I showed everybody on this channel that Robinhood priced at 20 a share. Look at how flat their quarterly revenues are now. Look how flat that is. They're not even increasing, folks. Come over to SoFi and look at their revenue over the last uh, three quarters. 
four quarters. This is quarterly revenue. Look at that. Up, 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 up. That's called growth. Going blue here on the earnings. First time in profitability. Increasing revenue, increasing revenue, increasing revenue, increasing revenue. Huh. Look at Robin Hood chart. Pitiful compared to that. I don't know what the hell Yahoo's doing to me right here with this BS and won't even let me show you the freaking chart on Robin Hood anymore. It's funny that I mentioned to you guys all about the downgrades that I'm talking and reiterating to you that the day that June the 15th when all those downgrades came is because the shorts had nothing left to borrow. They only had 350,000 shares left. They were de they were tapped out, depleted. By the way, they did the same thing over here today <laughs> at this time in the morning. Look at this, folks. They Yesterday, the day before, 1 million shares. Look at that, how many they had. 500,000 shares. 85,000 shares was all that was left. Then they came in and returned a whole bunch, had 6.7 million, and now they're back down to 1.3. You can see over here on May the 15th when they made it drop way right down and then it got back all the way up to 9 million and they had to use all 9 million while the price on May the 23rd went from freaking $8 all the way to 10.23 on November the 14th. And they borrowed and borrowed and borrowed just like they've done here recently. They're borrowing, 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 burying, burying themselves deeper and deeper and deeper. And you want to see what happens when these son of a bitches run out of shares completely, folks, when they don't have 1.3 million, when they don't have 2.2, when they don't have 400,000 shares, when they completely run and tap the borrowed tree dry, look where the price was on January the 19th of SoFi, when they borrowed, when they had 10 million shares, and on the 19th of January, they borrowed 10 million shares and had none left on the 19th. And I bring you over here to the 19th to show you what happened on that day, on January the 19th. The price dropped because they wanted it to and made the price fall from 763 to 721 on January 19th on 721 price. But when they ran completely out of shares on this date, January the 19th and made the price drop to 721. What happened from January the 19th to January the 29th when they finally returned the shares? They had no shares from January 19th to January 29th. And SoFi's price during that time, January 19th, went from 721 up, 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 up $2.40 on January the 29th because the friggin' shorts didn't have any damn shares left from January 19th to January 29th. And here they are running completely out again almost. Look at how many shares they just had. 800,000 right there. They're in desperation mode, folks. They had 800,000 and they had even less than that recently. They've had all the way down to 39,000 shares here just a few days ago. They're in deep trouble. 550,000 shares to me and 85,000 shares left right there. She's oh, Pete's people. They're in trouble just like they were here. They're going to have to call out those downgrades. They're running out of shares and they're going to have to call those downgrades and they will people. Trust me, they'll get them. So now they've used 2.8 million of the what they borrowed. You'll see when they run out of them, people. You'll see when they run out of them. They only borrowed 4.5 million and their volume was 13.8 when they did that. You'll know when they run completely out of them. I'm tracking them, people, for you. I'm tracking them for all of us. 16.6 now. 
So now they've used, let's see if this jumps on up to 16.8. We're in fast forward mode here. 16.640. Now they've used almost 3 million of that 4.5. They've only got a million and a half shares left, people. I'm proving to you how they did this, what they're doing right now. A little bit ago, a little bit ago, they had right here 6.7 million shares available just minutes ago. They had 6.7 million shares available just minutes ago. You can see right here, I'm tracking this on the 27th, and I'm showing you right here on the 28th, they had 6.7 million shares that they've just borrowed. They've dropped it from the 6.7 million shares that they just borrowed they just dropped it from 6.7 million shares that they had right there. That's today. 6.7 million. They made it drop all the way down here to 1.3. So they borrowed 6.7, 4.5 million shares that they've been holding to this point in time. 4.5 million shares. And now where are we? 16,660. Sixteen seven now. Sixteen eight. It's going fast, folks. They were at thirteen eight when they attacked. Now sixteen eight. They've used three million of the four and a half million shares right now. That's what they've used. They got a million and a half left. So about 17, 18, three, around 18, three, folks. When the volume reaches 18, three, watch what happens to SoFi's share price after that. When they get around 18, three on the volume, you might want to be buying some more SoFi. When they get to 18, three, that's my prediction. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Because I can plainly see that they had right here 6.7 million shares. And I know that they borrowed a lot of those because now they only have 1.3 million left. That's 4.5 million shares. And thank God for you guys, I was keeping track of what the volume was and it was at 13.8 when they started the attack. And they're going through them fast, folks. They're going through them fast. Mind you, yesterday's low on SoFi, in case you're not aware of it, was $7.16. So screw the shorts anyway. Today's low, $7.32. Screw you, shorty. Screw you. Now they're approaching $17 million. <clears throat> Was it thirteen eight? Now $17 million. You'll know, folks. Watch what happens to share price when this gets to 18,300,000 shares traded. Because at that point in time, I think they'll have gone through every single one of those 4.5 million that they just borrowed. <clears throat> And by, by the way, folks, they borrowed those this morning at uh, yesterday. They borrowed those yesterday at four o'clock in the afternoon. That's when they borrowed them. Or actually, it looks like they borrowed them as they usually do at four o'clock this morning. They borrowed them again at four o'clock this morning. They went from 6.7 million to 1.3, they borrowed 4.5 million to four o'clock this morning. Because so many shorts are shorting it right now and have been shorting it since the price was in the fours. They're in fucking big trouble, man. <laughs> They're gonna have to call their constituents today at the end of the day. 
they're going to have to ask their constituents will be asking, well, how did we do today? And they go, was the low lower? And they'll go, shit, no. They go, no, we didn't drive it down. They go, no. I saw it was red, but the low wasn't lower. No. Well, what about the low? What did it do? Well, the low was higher than yesterday by 10 cents. Oh, crap. You're kidding. Well, we're lying. Yeah, we're kidding because the low was higher by 15 cents. Oh, shit. No way, man. Yeah. Man, we even borrowed 4.5 million shares and we still couldn't stop it, man. It just, everybody wants to buy this damn thing. As they're now at 17,022,000 shares, they are 1.3 million shares away from totally friggin' screwed here, folks. And that's my call. I think you're going to see that as soon as the volume touches on around 18.2, my presumption is price will no longer be able to be suppressed because they borrowed. Well, unless they tap it again and use the other million point three, which I wouldn't be surprised to see them do. Oh, I got my eye on them, folks. I got my eye on how they're going to make it run down. And I saw that they borrowed from 6.7 to 1.3. I saw they borrowed 4.5 million shares. I just wondered when they were going to use them. And you can see that now. There's no more wondering. They're using them now. The volume was at 13.8 when they started running the price down. So from 13.8 plus 4.5 million, how much is that? 13.8 plus 4.5 equals, that's 18.3. My presumption is the, vo the volume is about 1,100,000 away from them running out. And they may have even used the million already this morning to make it open up and go from 745 down here to 736. So they may have already used that million too. They might have already used it. I'm telling you this, so you'll be aware of what happens. We're a thousand, we're one million shares away now from SoFi's price not being able to be retained anymore unless they go ahead and tap out this 1.3 million that's left. All right, that's what I think. What a coincidence that right now we're already starting to see the price rise. Because they realize themselves now they've only got 1 million shares left and there's still three and a half hours to trade. Two and a half hours, I'm sorry. They got big trouble here, folks. Shh. Uh, 98 people on this channel right now. You're going to all 98 of you get to watch me buy SoFi right here, right now. And we're still having a nice green day today, folks. I'm still up. I guess it's because all the ones I bought so cheap yesterday. <laughs> In case you guys are not aware of this, we are now reached at 17,344. Shorty now has uh, about 950,000 shares left. 950,000 shares left to try to hold SoFi back with because this morning they, they've they been holding these shares. They had returned during over the night session. They had returned 6.7 million shares they had available at this morning. Yesterday afternoon at 4 p.m. they had returned six. You can see 1,600 hours. That's four in the afternoon. They returned 6.7 million shares. But this morning at 4 a.m., they borrowed 4.5 million of that 6.7. Hey. And they're using them now. Yes, darling. What'd you do with the can thing that I had bought for the can? Where'd you throw it? You all throw the it? tubs for cans, bottles, and glass are also sitting on the front porch. No, no, no. What I bought for your beers that I had in the fridge. What'd it's up in the it? counter above the fridge. Wow. Oh, watch, folks. 
Keep your eyes peeled and watch this volume hit 18,300,000 shares. And where do you see what happens to the stock price after then? Meanwhile, I'm going to buy some more here. Add to position. SoFi. Boom. BITF up 5% today. FSL up another 3.8% today. Review order and place it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take 50 shares here. 734. So if I... 734, 50 shares. Well, why wouldn't I if, if I'm going to, hey, if I believe what I'm saying and what I'm teaching each and every one of you, what I think they used and how they did it and how they're driving the price down. Now, I think they're about to run out. I think at this point now they have only 900,000 shares left. So I'm not going to wait till they run out. I'm just going to stay on it right here and buy some more. Review order and place it. You bet I am. 7.35. 50 shares. Give me two checks now. Here we go. Another one here. We're going to go in. Market share. Review order and place it. And I'd like to thank all of you here on the channel with me right now, watching me buy this at the bottom, 734 again. That's two there. Thank you very much. Oh, I can see, man. I can see what's happening here. They're about to run out, folks. They're 800,000 shares away from running out of what they borrowed this morning. Ray Garcia. Jeff Presley, I would imagine they hold back a million or two for the very end of the day. Uh, if they do have to do that, if they're going to do that, then the price will start rising right now. And that's another, I agree with you. And that's why I'm buying right here. Review order and place it. I'll take another 50 here. Very happy. $7.34 again for the last time, probably. Thank you, Shorty. I appreciate it. Because I know where you're at. I know where you are. I'm watching you. I know what, how you're doing this. I see that you had 6.7 million shares this morning to borrow. You had returned 6.7. And now I see you just used them. You, you returned 6.7 and now you got 1.3. That's 4.5 million shares. You started using them this afternoon when the, the, the volume was with 13.8. And now you've almost used all of your 4.5 million shares. I can see that. Because now we're almost up to 18.8 and there will be 5 million shares and you will be done by then when we get to 18.8. Then I'm buying more here right now. Review order and place it. I'm going to keep the pressure on them, people. 7.34 again. And how many times now has it sat there and I've sat and bought? And you saw me do this, yes you saw me do this yesterday at 7.17 and 7.18. You saw me doing this, just sitting there. It wasn't moving. I just kept buying and I kept buying and I kept buying. And then boom, off she went. Reuse order, review order, and place it. 7.34 again. Awesome. Keep it there as long as you can, Shorty. You're running out of friggin' shares here. They got 800,000 shares left is what I say. 800,000 shares left is what I'm calling. In case you guys aren't aware of how they've been able to run the price here very quickly from 745 down 10 or 11 cents is because last night they returned up a whole bunch of shares. Yesterday, the day before, they only had freaking 300,000 shares. Last night, they returned 6.7 and then they borrowed them this morning at 4 a.m., four and a half million shares they've been sitting on all day waiting for this attack. Four and a half million shares. 
Well, I tracked the volume at the very moment that they started attacking the price down right here. And I saw it was at 13.8 when they started attacking it. Well, right now, they're at 17.8 almost. And that's 4 million freaking shares. Okay? And somebody said they may even save a million shares at the end of the day so they can try and attack there. Well, if they do, they're going to run out right now then. They're out of the shares already. They've already out of them. And that's why I'm buying here, as a matter of fact. Exactly why I'm buying here right now. Review order and place it. And I'm going to keep buying 50 shares at a time until the price just starts rising. 734 again. It gives me 50, 100, 50, 200, 50, 300 shares at 734. And there she goes, folks. Review order and place it. This is the way I like to do it, folks. 735 now. That gives me 100 there. One more time. I'm going to stay after them, folks, till they run out of those friggin' shares. Review order and place it. I'm going to keep buying them. 734 again, folks. 734. And what I like most of all is that I'm not seeing it toggle down to the 33. It's not even bumping to it. All it is is bumping up to the next number up. That's what I like the most. All right. 17 million six now. They got 700, less than 700,000 shares left here now. Review order and place it. I'm relentless, people, when I see them start to bleed. 735 now. I guess I'm done with the 734s. Review order and place it. I'm going to keep this pressure on them, people. 735. And when I just saw a 30,000 share buy right there, I like that. Now 17,629. I'm waiting really for the price to get to 18,3 before I see this thing really escalate. That'll be 4.5 million shares from where they started. And I'm glad to see them use $40 million of their money today to try to get the price to go down to be red today. I'm glad to see that. $40 freaking million. More shares that they've got to return to. More shares they've got to return. Deeper hole, people. Deeper hole. 17,641 now. And all I see is a massive number of little buys, 17, 641, 933, 934, 937, 938. Did you see that? One share, two shares, one share, two shares, 17, 646 now, price is rising. I'm waiting for 18.3 for it to really start to crush them, people. Greg Garcia, no, that I, I do not uh, make enough money off advertisements to keep them going, but I can't take the advertisements away because when I do, they stop sending me out to as many of their people. I saw this, someone notified me, Catfish, I know you like keeping the commercials out for your viewers, but they're going to bring your viewer, they're going to send you out to less people if you're not showing advertisements. And folks, let me tell you, I used to average four thousand to forty five hundred people being sent my my broadcast daily yesterday i started back with the ads and i had seven 
7,000 plus, 7,300 they sent me to because I'm keeping the commercials in. Now, you can skip the commercials, but I want to leave. I'm not making enough revenue to do commercials. You guys have been paying to cover the cost of commercials. You guys with your contributions, I can be commercial free because of your contributions because they tally a lot more money than I make off commercials. But I was told, Catfish, put your commercials back on and let people opt out of them because as long as those commercials are there, SoFi and you will get more exposure with your channel because they'll send you to more viewers if you've got your commercials left there. And I started doing it and I almost doubled yesterday. So I'm going to leave my commercials there because I know YouTube likes to make that money, folks. And they'll send this out, this channel out to more and more people if more and more commercials are there for them to advertise to their, their clients. That's all there, That's all it's to it. Why, why you're seeing ads again now is because, and you can skip them, but why you're seeing them is because YouTube now is promoting me to more and more people each day. Gotcha. Smart. Yeah. I couldn't believe the difference. I was just like st uh, stunned. I've been seeing an average of about 4,000 to 4,500 people per day YouTube sending me out to. But yesterday I decided to let my commercial, damn, 7,300 people they sent me out to. See, because they want that commercial advertisement out there. So I'm not going to restrain my vision. Now let's go look at this volume, 17,750. And see how they've lightened up so much now. They're not hitting it so hard. The volume had jumped from 13.8 to 17.8 now. 13.8 to 17.8. That's 4 million shares when they hit 17. And they'll have 500,000 left. Unless they dip into the reservoir even deeper over here. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them do that. Let's go over here to the shorts and see what they're doing. I know another big problem for these people that's happening now is they've got Vanguard Group increasing their position by 8.5%, 19 share percentage by 19% increase, Vanguard Group, on February the 13th. And then recently, look at who we've been having come in here, all these friggin' index funds. They're not ETFs. They're not hedge funds. They're not day traders. They're friggin' a different group of people. They're index funds. And they're coming in big time on SoFi. This is the worst thing that shorts could have happen to them. The absolute worst thing they could have happen to them. Institutional owners has just gone to 800, everybody. <laughs> Institutional ownership has just risen to 800, a new all-time record high of institutional ownership. And I want you to see something, people who are here, all 100 of you on my channel right now. You, you better pay attention to who's coming in. Vanguard increasing their position by 19.32% shares. Take a look who else is coming in here. Pay attention. These are all index funds. All right. Coming in here big time on SoFi. Today's the 28th, folks. Look at all these index funds coming in. There's an index fund increasing by 3%. There's an index fund increasing by 3.6. There's another one here increasing an index fund, folks. Not ETFs, not hedge funds, not day traders. These are long-term index funds investing, increasing their position by 28%, increasing by 5%, increasing by 8%. BlackRock, you ever heard of them? They just increased their value by 8.4% in SoFi, 8.46. This is yesterday on the 27th. And on the 26th, look at all these coming in here, increasing by 7 increasing by 14, increasing by 135%, increasing by 382. Look at Schwab here, 
Schwab increases by 7.21 from one index. Another index fund, 3.69 from Charles Schwab. Another index fund, 1.32 from Charles Schwab. This index fund right here, 36% increase, 31% increase. Follow the freaking money, everybody. Everybody follow this. 3.7 increase, 2.3 increase. Look at this one here. JSEX, Jacob, small growth fund, increases by 51%. This is on the 25th, folks. Jacob, again, 37% increase, 26% increase. Do you see these massive gains? ARK Investment, Kathy Wood, increases her portfolio 106%, people. Talk about doubling down. And that was on the price of the stock on the 21st, 321. Talk about doubling down, folks. On March 21st, the price was $7.36 a share between that and $7.57 when she doubled down, Kathy Wood. And look at her popping again. Look at her. Watch what happens to SoFi now. Watch what happens now after we get past this 4 million shares that they had, this 4.5 million shares. And we're almost there, folks. At 18.3, we're going to go over. At 18.3, we'll be past the number that they borrowed. And look how fast now. 17, 9, 17, 9, 28, 17, 9, 33, 9, 34, 9, 46, 9, 75, 9, 84. 18 million just got passed. They got 300,000 shares left, people. They've only got 300,000 left. 18.1, they've got 300,000. Now they've only got 200,000 left. Unless they come back over to the well and they borrow again right here. If they were, if they took it from 6.7 down to 1.3, they borrowed 4.5 million shares and they started using those when the volume was at 13.8. Now I, pre I presume they've got less than 100,000, 200,000 shares left. Right now, out of that 4.5 million that they just used to drive it down, my presumption is they have about 190,000 shares, now 170, 150,000 shares left. Right there, they've got 150,000 shares left. And it's going fast, folks. These cheap shares, you better get them right here, right now, because their shorty's about to run out of all that they borrowed. Unless they come back in and borrow more, I'm going to get over here right now. And I'm going to get on to this, this uh, um, owners. I'm going to get to institutional ownership. 1,077 people on this channel today. And I want to say thank you very much for your presence on this channel with two hours. And we still got two hours and 10 minutes left, folks. And we got a lot of time left for this thing to run up because now they have 140,000 shares left of that 4.5 million. I'm tracking them, folks. I'm tracking them for all of us. I'm tracking them. Look at that little double bottom. Bam, right there. Bam, right there. Now at 18, 166, 167, 18, 168. Don't be surprised when you see this in 18, 3, that suddenly they can't hold it back anymore. I'm guessing at this, I'm going to see if I'm right or wrong. And you got all the hundred that are here on the channel with me right now. We'll see whether I'm right or I'm wrong. 18,171, folks. They've got 120,000 left. 18,173. 18,175. Look how slow they're trickling them out now, folks. They're not hammering anymore. They've decided to just sweep slowly try this last little bleed out with the little few shares they've got left. And they wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him borrow the rest of them. Short interest. Hold on. <clears throat> Look at that, folks. Risen now, short interest to 209,000 shares. They've got to return them all, people. 209 million, I'm sorry, 209 million, 896, 269. They just raised that from 205 to 
205.3 to 209.8 because they just borrowed four and a half million more. And now I want to see how many they got left. They don't have this anymore. It says 3.9 million. They, it says five hours ago they were down to 1.3. So they have apparently just recently re, re, returned some. By borrow them again. <clears throat> Almost there, folks. 18.212 now. 18.214. Oh, look at that. 11,000 shares just came in there. 18.227 now. 2.28. 18.229 will soon fall. 18.237. 18.241. Here we come, folks. 18.3 will soon be discovered. 96 people on this channel. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. The time now is 144. Please, folks, at 144 or 145, we're going to make it at 148, folks. At 148, we're going to hit the like button at the same time. Let's not do it right yet. We'll do it at 148. So just we'll be watching this and we're watching this volume. Now they've crossed over the 18.3 threshold. Price at 732. They've wiped it out, folks. All 4.5 million shares they've just used just then. That's how the volume has gone up from, from where it was at 13.8 to 18.3. That's 4.5 million shares. And I'm watching it close for us. All right, here we go, folks. Let's see what time it is now. Okay, we got two minutes and we're going to hit the like button together, everybody. I'd appreciate it if you'd help us out. We've had some good donations today. I want to thank those of you who made some contributions to the channel today. Very, very grateful for those of you who made contributions, including CHAM, one of my listeners from Canada. And uh, Canada is actually my number three listened uh, location is Canada. All right, folks, this is where I say you should be picking up some more shares of SoFi. Because they've used all their 4.5 million shares that they just borrowed. They're out of them now. And I think she's going to rise. We'll find out here in just a jiffy pop. We're going to see. And I want you to see right here that we are now 1 minute and 15 seconds away from hitting the like button simultaneously. We have 131 likes, 101 on the channel right now. And I want to thank you all for being here very much from the bottom of my heart. And uh, I want to buy some more SoFi here in the next minute. Let's just do it until it's time to hit the like button. Let's add SoFi, add to position. I'm doing 50 shares at a time here, folks. Market share buys, review order and place it. 734 again. That's 50, 100, 50, 200, 50, 300, 50, 400 shares there at 734. Oh, yeah, baby. Review order. We're spending $367 at a time here. Place it. 734. Oh, there's a reason I'm buying here, people. There's a damn good reason I'm buying right here. We got two hours and 15 minutes left. Of the there it is. 148, folks. Thank you for hitting the like button if you just did. I forgot to count it down. <laughs> I forgot to count it down. Can you believe that? Too busy buying shares. I want to thank you here. Let's just do it at 148.48, dadgummit. Man, too busy buying shares to hit the dang like button simultaneously. All right, we're going to do it again here. 148.48. Here we go. We're going to count it down this time, and hopefully you'll like the like button for me at 148.48. 10 seconds. Here we go. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
one, please gently hit the like button and lose a calorie or at least a half a calorie hitting it gently. Okay. All right. And let's see if we can get this uh, likes up to like 140 likes on the channel today. We've had 1,098 views of the channel. And boy, howdy, thanks for all the hard work you do, man. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for your contribution, those of you who are making contributions. Uh, can you show the one-hour chart? I sure can. I can show the chart. There it is, basically. <laughs> this is the one-day chart. I don't actually have a one-hour, but you can certainly see what's happened over the last hour. They've driven it down using 4.5 million shares. That's exactly how many they borrowed this morning. And exactly why I'm buying more shares at 734 and why I'm going to buy some more right now. <sighs> Review order and place it. No, I'm going to keep the pressure on them. You bet I am, folks. I damn sure am. 734 again. And I'm going to sell every effing one of these shares at $10 plus. Every share I'm buying now at 734, I'm going to sell them for $10 plus. And I'm going to do it within a month. At the very least, at the very most, one month and a few days, seven days. Now, some of you might have heard that SoFi was going to originally do their earnings call release on May. Or it was supposed to be April the 29th. Now they've changed that day to May the 6th. Some people were on here and even commented yesterday, man, I don't like that they changed the date from April the 29th to May the 6th. But I want to explain to you why I like that. Because there's going to be a GDP announcement coming up right there around the 1st of uh, May, the 1st or 2nd, sometime around there. There's going to be a GDP announcement and they may be lowering interest rates because GDP, last time they spoke, Powell said, we will be lowering rates three times this year. We're going to hold steady now, but we're going to do three late rate drops this year. And I like that SoFi decided to release later because if the GDP comes out and says we're going to lower interest to half, holy crap, SoFi will start the surge. And then they're going to report earnings where they'll surge even more. I love it. It's a double whammy for the shorts, folks. First, they get slaughtered by an increase of SoFi's price on an interest rate drop, and then they get double whammied with a freaking increase because SoFi's bottom line, top and bottom, both beat expectations, and the thing flies on up, and the shorts are totally bewildered and screwed, all right? You ought to be aware of something else, folks. You ought to be aware that nobody is going to sell SoFi in reality down a three pennies. <laughs> and nobody. Do you realize that these stupid freaking shorts just spent $40 million to make the price fall 10 cents? And just barely read. It cost them 40 freaking million today to do that. And I have proof of it right here because th this morning they had 6.7 million shares this morning to borrow from and they borrowed them all at four o'clock. 6.7 million that went all the way down to 4, 4 a.m. to 1.3 million. That's four and a half million shares they borrowed. Four and a half million shares they borrowed. And I was, t I was telling you, when this attack started right here at 1242, when, this, when the attack started, the synchronized coordinated attack began, the volume was at 13.8. And now it's at 18.6. And all 14 and a half million shares have already been exhausted. All four and a half million shares they had are gone into the hands of longs who want to buy this here on a discounted price. By the way, 16 cents higher than two days ago's low. And here they are piling in buying it from these borrowed shares 
that they're not going to be able to return because longs like you and me are sitting here buying them. Review order and place it. 733 now. 50 shares. Thank you, short. Days range the low, 732, people. <laughs> 732 is the low, and I just bought it at 733. Yes. Where's the song for the shorters? Oh, no, I, I won't start singing that song until you see it, this thing green again. When it does, then we'll know. When they run completely out, the shorts will be long with me. They'll be going long with me. And then we'll break it out. Just hold on. Review order and place it. I'm spending $367 every minute on this stock right now because I believe in it so much. I'm filled. Thank you, whoever did that at 733 for me again. I appreciate it. And uh, again, unfortunately for the shorts, no freaking body wants to sell SoFi stock here being down less than 0.3%. Absolutely nobody. All right, uh, we'll see if you get it, Tyson. Don't worry, Emilio, I'll be singing here. I'll be ringing that bell, too. There we go. She's rising now. Review order and place it. Just filled for the last time at 733, and now I'm filling at 735. Shorty done run out of shares. Shorty done run out. Now, don't be surprised if they don't jump back over here and they don't borrow even more because they still got 1.3 million left to borrow right there. Don't be surprised to see them borrow more. They are desperate now. They're very desperate. Shorts are in deep, deep shit. There, look at that price run. There she goes. Let's buy some more. Let's keep the pressure on them. Review order and place it because I think they're out of shares. 734, 50 shares. Thank you. Now at 5,000 shares of SoFi, all right. I hope you just bought them with me at 733, 734, because this damn thing's going off, people, because they just used all 4.5 million shares. They've liquidated it. They ran out. Place order. Oh, I'm buying more. I'm going to keep pressure. 734 again. Awesome. Rock and roll, baby. 735. Oh, yeah. SoFi is going to be green today, folks. They just used four and a half million shares times seven dollars. Do the math 42 million bucks they just spent to make the price fall 10 cents so they could get out of those shorted positions before next Monday's run up over eight and next Tuesday at nine and next uh, and the next week at 950 and then ten dollars. And they can't stop it. And they just tried their very best with that four and a half million shares to scare somebody out at a penny down. I don't know who the f would be scared there. Nobody. Not me. Not me. All I did was buy away from them so they could not have them to return. Place order. Failure to deliver, baby. Failure to freaking deliver. I'm in. Thank you for 735 again. Got 101 people on this channel with me. Folks, right now, I'd like to ask you to do you a favor. The time is 157. What I want to do here is at the number, my favorite number is the number eight. So at 158.08, please hit the like button. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hit that like button right now. 158.08. Let's see if we can get up to over 150 likes. And if you missed it at 158.08, that's okay. You can hit the like button with me at 158.48. I love the number eight. It's my favorite number to buy it when the price is dropping. It's my favorite number to sell when the price is running up. And uh, so right now, folks, at 158.48, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
three, two, one, click. Hit that like button, everybody. Let's get us up over freaking 148 likes. And let's get even more people over to this channel. It's been phenomenal. In the last, folks, in the last 90 days, YouTube has now shown my channel to over three quarters of a million people because of each and every one of you here hitting that like button. And uh, this is very good for this channel and very good for all of us because I keep showing more and more people this information about how the shorts ran the price from May 15th all the way down on that day on a bunch of borrowed shares. And then the price took off on them from 455 and they started borrowing more shares and more shares. But the price went from 455 to 5 to 6 to 7 to 8. And they borrowed more shares and more. And it was at 9. And they borrowed more and it was at 10. And they borrowed more shares and it was at 1028 a share. And they only had on that day, June 14th, 350,000 shares left because they borrowed the whole kit and caboodle. And then they called up these people and said, please, on June the 15th, downgrade five big analyst cuts. SoFi technology slashed with three downgrades on coincidentally June the 15th, the day when Shorty had freaking completely run out of shares to short with at that point. They were down on June the 14th to only 350,000 shares left to short with. And what did they do? They called out their dogs and said, please, God save us. Please downgrade the price. And they were all like, shit, we can't downgrade it. The price has gone so far up that our prices before were lower. They said, oh, I'll just call it a downgrade, even if you raise it. So they raised from 650. This is uh, Piper Sandler. They adjusted its rating from 650 up to eight bucks. <laughs> This one here, from nine fifty up to $10. Those are downgrades, people, in case you didn't know it. And that happened on the day after Shorty had run the price, had run crazy on them and gone to ten twenty three a share, and they didn't know how to control it. Yes, honey bunny. Can you come here for a minute? Yes, I can. Oh, my God. Hold on, folks. Let me just be right back. You guys just hang loose here while we make a bunch of money together on this rundown this afternoon on this manipulation. Be right back. Hold on.
Okay, everybody, let's get back in the tank with King Cat Tyler. Enough of me messing around with you down here in the bottom. Thank you for being here with me now, King Cat. All right. I'm back here, folks. 70 here with me right now. Very patiently waiting me to come back. I thank you. And you could just see the names of all the fantastic people who've contributed to this channel and kept us streaming right now. <clears throat> Daddy is gone. <laughs> right on, James. I'm right behind you at 4,800 shares. Looky Lane throwing her weight around on the way. What? Emilio Ortega, what is going to the song for the shorter? Tyson, I placed another limit order. 1370 at 730. We'll see if we get it. James Roberts now at 5,000 shares of SoFi. Look at Elaine throwing her weight around, LOL. Yes. Elaine. Right on, girl. Jeff Presley. Right on, James. I'm right behind you at 4,800. Dave G. Daddy is gone. James Roberts. Let's go, Jeff. Try to get to 5,000 by next earnings ready for the rocket. All right. Let's get this thing down here. Now, I want to tell you something, folks. Look at that thing take off right now. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here and the blessing we have on this channel to understand the way and the means and the method and the hows and the whys, why we ran down red just then, how they did it, exactly how they did it, how they just ran out of shares there. They completely ran out and now how she's going to climb and how is they going to stop it? Yes, indeed. <clears throat> And now comes the request song for each and every one of you who requested this. I know how much you love this song, and I love it too. One of my favorites. Ding dong, the shorts went long. This is our new SoFi song. Yeah, ding dong, the shorts went long today. <laughs> ding dong, the shorts went long. Found out we're all King Kong strong. Ding dong, the shorts went long today. Oh, hey. Yeah, so fi, it grows and grows, we know. And this is what we know, yo ho. And this is why we sing and we ring that bell. Yeah, ding dong, the shorts went long. This is our new so fi song. Ding dong, the shorts went long today. Yeah. <laughs> Aha! There you go, everybody. The Ding Dong song. This was supposed to be my uh, Ooga horn I ordered for my bicycle horn. Uh, I was hoping to Ooga, <laughs> but I got the squeaky mouse, mousey voice. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, thank you for being here with me, everybody. The Ding Dong song. I hope y'all sing along. Come sing along to the ding dong song. <laughs> when you're singing the ding dong song, nothing could go wrong except to the ding dong that shorted the ding dong. So fi stock, right? I like to dream. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, right between the sound machine. Uh -huh. Uh, like a cloud outside on the thick of the night, everything that goes just right falls fly and flies near to so far away from here. Said, you don't know if you don't buy, why don't you come by so far with me? I'm on the magic carpet ride, yeah. You don't know how I shall fly, why don't you buy so far with me? Your fantasies will set us free. Bye, so far, yeah. Don't be surprised, yeah. Off to the skies, that south the way, yeah. Last night I held Aladdin's lamp, and so I wished that I could stay. But before that thing could answer me, someone quickly took the lamp away. I looked around, so far was all I found. Said, you don't know if you don't buy. Why don't you come on a magic carpet? Come on, magic so far ride. Said, you don't know if you don't get in. Oh, why don't you buy some so far now? Buy some. You're my friend. All right. Yes, we're making up some improv today. 1,400 more today. 
And did we not know when we sat there and filled and filled and filled and filled that same service, 734, 734, 734, 734, did we not know they were shutting the door then? We knew because they were out of those shares. We counted them. We kept count of how many shares they borrowed and we kept count of how many they had left. And then we knew they were about to expire. Then we started buying and by God, look at the price now. Yeah, baby. <laughs> so fi, so fi, so fi. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. All the fear that there once was here is all left in the shorties as that doth appear to be the way things are as the shorties are watching from afar. This thing's going to the stars. My goodness sakes. My dog loved the squeaky toy bell. She stopped cleaning her butt and came running when she heard it. <laughs> 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 yeah, baby. <laughs> you guys hang in there with catfish. We got to see a lot of people talk to talk. A Chinese here with catfish tie. Coming down end of day. Nick of pies go away. We're going to see it run to the sky. Going to talk about SoFi. <laughs> I like the way that sound. Got a nice wing to it. SoFi. You want to buy so fi? <laughs> you got to buy so fi. <laughs> right? <laughs> you got to buy so fi. Got to buy so fi. Got to buy, buy, buy so fi, fi, fi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we going to talk Chinese. <laughs> we going to make you smile. <laughs> Everyone come and listen for a while. We can talk a Chinese. We can teach you too. That's right. Everybody can talk Chinese with Tapfish Thai. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm talking a little doggy stock right now. In case you guys didn't know it, I'm talking some doggy stock to you right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bye, so fight. Come on with me, ride the ride the SoFi train. Come on, everybody, get insane. Come on, time to get some SoFi. Everybody can see, and they don't need to wonder why. If she's going to fly to the sky, she's going to rise. You cannot open your eyes and see that it's true. What she's about to do, she's going to come unglued. All oh, the shorts are screwed. I don't mean to be rude. Now we will talk to you in Indian for you to enjoy. <laughs> How do we, when we're going to our hotel, you should pay very close attention to those who tell you that I am from a country that is called India. And I will tell you how to talk, not only like someone from China, but I also taught you how to speak like someone from India. They will tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> Come on, people, and with me, everybody. Let's have a good time. Indians will be here with us, too. And they will listen from Bangladesh <laughs> and so forth. <laughs> oh, those of you that are here, you have put up with Catfish Tyler off the, over all this time. I'm the one that should be paying you to be listening to me. <laughs> You got the buy. I'm going to come up with a jingle for SoFi one day that they're going to catch here. <laughs> jingle SoFi. Yeah. We'll have a jingle for SoFi. It's going to be about this great company and why everybody should buy it right now on the fly. Get it, SoFi, everyone. Look at them. Oh, oh, look here, folks. Look what just happened on this chart right here. 
Pick up this one day with me. Hold on. Come on. Let's get in here and look at this. Let's dig a little deeper. Dig deep. We're going in deep, ladies and gentlemen. We're deep diving into so five and all right. <laughs> We're deep diving into so five while she's thriving. You can see she's surviving so five. You don't need a asking everybody. There's a waxing. Just everybody's taking so five. You got to watch it. Moving up. Somebody just filled their cup. Take a look. Look and see. You will have to agree uh, yeah we're gonna show you and me certainly now look at this right here folks volume galore to short show fi down look at this right here folks look at that massive cell right there a humongous red candlestick right there at 218 of 1.11 million shares. You were right. Somebody asked earlier, do you think they'll save a million or so for the last part? And there they are. Seven thirty-five now on Sofi. She's very much alive under that attack, kind of attack. <laughs> One million shares just went from the nobodies to the good bodies. All right, that's what just happened. A million shares instantly hit the market on a market share dump to make the price fall, and it's already rising again. It's as simple as that. I show it to you right in front of your faces. Right there, it is. One million. 111,000 shares at 734 a share made the price fall from what? 736, a two cent drop on 1.1.4 million shares traded. That used to make the price drop 5 cents or 10 cents or 11 cents back in the days of old. That has to be very, very depressing for the shorts. 1.2 million share market share dive, dump the shares, drop the price five or six cents. No, it's only two cents down and rising. Oh, yeah, I'm watching them. We're watching them close. <clears throat> Jeebus Chrysler says and asks a question. Why wouldn't we want a 30 to 35% short interest going into earnings as if I'm expecting giving the additional one cent increase in profit from the cap call savings? SoFi reports a three to four cent profit. Something's going on here. <clears throat> There's something going on around here. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, <clears throat> there has been a very large increase in share volume of SoFi, and apparently there's a hell of a lot of interest in this company. I do not know why and I cannot explain it, but over the last few days, SoFi viewership has gone up from 4,500 on the average per day to 7,500 yesterday. <clears throat> and that is how many times they sent my channel out to others on this channel. The 69 of you are here. It's a very good number. I like that number. That's all. The ones of you that haven't. <clears throat> So Jeebus Chrysler, as you just see, asked a good question. <clears throat> Why wouldn't we want short interest at 30 to 35 percent going into earnings? As if I'm expecting giving the additional one cent increase in profit from the cap call savings, <clears throat> SoFi reports a three to four cent profit. 
All I know is what they've what they've predicted they're going to get over the year is what they're going to get or more. Because as always, SoFi under promises and over delivers. That's their trademark. And uh, I don't mind. I don't. I wouldn't be surprised to see them bury themselves deeper. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I just saw what they did this afternoon. They sure as shit did it again. They took all those shares. They used to have 10 million for such a long time, all through July and August and September, and October, November, December. And by the way, by the way, I want you to know the lowest SoFi hit was on 641 a share was right here on November the 21st. And on that day, November the 21st, when SoFi hit the low, the last low before was 455. But this next low was 641, and it was right there on November the 21st, and there were 10 million shares to borrow with when they got to that low of 641. I'm going to show it to you right now so you understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> SoFi's price, November 21st, was right here at 641. The previous low was 44% less, way back here. May the 15th, when the price on May the 15th was right here at $4.55 on May the 15th. I highlight it, $4.45 a share. $4.45 a share, 103 million shares taken and shorted from $4.84 down to $4.45. 103 million shares, short shares positions taken up from 484 to 445. That was on May the 15th. And by June the 14th, less than a month, 1023 up 125%. And they called out these people and said, please, on June the 15th, downgrade this, three stock downgrades. Please help us. We're, we're buried. We shorted it. We thought it would go down to 250 with the Chivarini piece that we put out. And the price has gone from 455 445 all the way up to 1023 on the on that day they needed help and they got help they called on June the 14th when the price had gone all the way to 1023 and they were buried folks they were totally destroyed from 445 shorting to 484 to see that price up 125% so they called out the big guns on the 15th and they had them downgrade the stock and those three analysts who raised their target prices. This, this one raised from 650 to 8. This one here raised their target from 950 to 10. And they called those downgrades. And this one, they didn't even show how much they raised theirs. They just said they downgraded. They didn't show how much Oppenheimer raised its target price. Disgusting. I expose them for all that. I show you the I show you the snake in the grass moves that they do when they didn't have any shares left on that day of June the 14th and they only had freaking 350,000 shares left. They got on the phone and they begged to somebody and all these people, please, whatever you can do, downgrade this mother effing stock. It's killing us. And I'm here to tell you how it is, people. <clears throat> Anthony, all right, Anthony Cicchetti, Anthony Cicchetti is here with us again, so fine, is so fine, and the thumbs up, you're right, yeah, the stock's going to explode, that's just it, it just keeps winding more and more tension, it's going to explode, people, and they want it to, <laughs> <coughs> Here's the one thing that you guys need to know that after June 15th and the price was at down to 888, seven days later, they had it to 771. It was six days, really. One, two, three, four, five, six. That was the day, six days. 771 on all the triple downgrade and scaring everybody out of the stock. Well, how long was it after that that the price went back over 10? Less than a month. <laughs> June 23rd, <laughs> less than a month. Bam, she goes all the way back over on July the 19th. 
Still had three days left for a month of unfold, and it was already back over 10. See how well that downgrade worked for him? <laughs> Made the price go back up 30% again off of the downgrades. <clears throat> then just, a, just before the earnings call, and this is the same thing this could happen now. Nine days before earnings, the price now could break over 10 from where we are, could go back over 10 again, and then they could bring it down to 894 six days later. One, two, three, four, five, six days again. Isn't that interesting? That after the 1023 high, it was one, two, three, four, five, six days to 771. And that was the lowest. And then from here, when it got to 1013, it was one, two, three, four, five, six days to 894 before it went to 1170. Are you getting the picture? I hope you do. Six days, folks. Every six days, they've been swinging this stock. And I showed you that many times. I'm happy as hell to see this price right now at 734, knowing it was at 682 a week and a half ago. I am very pleased. And I'm also happy as hell to know that they spent $40 million to make that happen out of their own pockets. Good for them. Right there's where they spent it. They had 6.7 million, but they now 1.3. Uh oh. 4.5 million shares. Probably be failed to deliver too. They probably failed to deliver on them. New to trading and to show, so I apologize if the question is bad. Was just curious. Did grab 100 more with you at 733 earlier. So 2450 at 714. All right. That was easy. Oh, we're going to be very good there too. Don't you worry. What they're going to try to hold SoFi under is 750 today. They're just waiting for that, folks. They, they know it's coming. I think it's coming. I think it's coming right now. I think the run is about to take place. I'm happy to call it right now. And I'm going to help it rise because it's at 736 right now. So I'm going to buy another some shares right here. I think they're in trouble. And I'm green today, folks. Big time green today. And I hope you are too. Review order and place it. <laughs> ah, you are so misconstrued. MVP2526, you have been, the wool's been pulled over your eyes. You've been misled to believe in a false narrative. This is what mass media would want you to think that the shorts are winning today. That's what mass media would want you to think. But the truth is that the shorts <clears throat> have borrowed a crap load of shares recently that they're not returning. And they're going to have to return those shares. And as someone mentioned just the other day, if Anthony Noto was to say that they want to start offering a dividend, then you're going to see reality kick in very quickly. Because then the naked shorting, the naked shorting disappears. If Anthony Noto was to make an announcement of a dividend, they're going to start issuing a dividend. Everything would come into line. And SoFi's price would then be where it should actually be. Because all those shares out there that they haven't been able to return, they'd have to return them right then. And uh, not only do I hope you're wrong, MVP2526, not, not only do I hope you're wrong, when you say the shorts have won today, but I know you're wrong because I'm going to show you on this chart right here so you can see how wrong that you are <laughs> and make you feel better about everything so you don't feel so forlorn. 
okay? Because right here over this six month term, the same shorter who shorted when SoFi's 200 day moving average line was at $6.90 back in October, are now seeing the 200 day moving average line right now sitting at $8.17. Okay. Just so you're aware, back here in October and prior, right here, if you do this line, that takes you to the very beginning of this chart in late September of last year. The 200 day moving average line in late September of last year was sitting right there, folks, at 690 a share. Right over here at the far left of this screen, that's 690. And look how it was even before that on September the 13th. September 13th, the price average, the SoFi stock price on September the 13th was right down here at this price, right there. Hold on, there it is. 671. Six months ago, SoFi's 200-day moving average was at 671. And where is it now? It's the green line that you see right here. And it's at $8.26 where you see it there. And it's even higher than that. There it is right there. This is where the line is now at this number. 816 from 671. The shorts are not winning today, okay? They've been shorting for six months and failing to return, failing to deliver. They're not winning. <laughs> we'll go up here. You go to this short interest here and you go to fails to deliver. You see, <clears throat> you see a situation developing here. And uh, one of those times is when they failed to deliver on January 23rd, 40 million shares, almost 39 million, 457, 447, 92. <clears throat> that was what they failed to deliver. The number, the price, the value, not the number of shares, the, the, the value of the shares. That's $40 million, folks. <clears throat> uh, coincidentally, the exact same money, amount of money that they supposedly borrowed today, another $40 million. <clears throat> there was $4.5 million times 7. 7, 14, 21, 28 million. That's a lot of shares they borrowed that they probably won't return or couldn't, or maybe not will. And by the way, on January the 23rd, when they failed to deliver almost 40 million shares, the reason they couldn't is because on January 23rd, they didn't have any shares available left to borrow. See here? On January 19th, they ran out. <laughs> they right here, they ran out and they made the price of SoFi fall to a low of 771 that day. And freaking three or four days later, the price was at $9.45 because they had completely run out of shares. And the price went up 30% almost on them when they ran out of shares. And that the failure to deliver came on that day, the January 23rd, between the 19th and the 29th, when they didn't have any shares left. And that's when that failure to deliver came up of 40 million shares, folks. They were totally screwed here on this day, believe me, on January the 23rd, when they didn't have a damn single share over here left. And on January 19th, and I show you again, come over here to January the 19th. <clears throat> Go. 
bring it right up here. January 19th, $7.21 from up here in the eights, 862 to 721. They drove it down to 721. And how did they do it? Because on the 19th right there, they borrowed all 10 million shares that was available on that day. That's how they got to 721 because they did it that day. They drove it down to 721 on that day, folks. And after they took it down to 721, they had no shares left. What do you know? Freaking six days later, one, two, three, four, five, six days, and it's at 945 a high because they didn't have any shares left all the way up until the 30th. And here they were completely out of shares from that time, January the 19th until the 30th. Then they had 10 million to start working again. And look how many they've used so fast over here from 10 million. Look how long it took them three months to get it down to there. Now they've done it in freaking two weeks. Bam, they're already out and they're almost out again. They're in trouble, people. Shorts are in trouble. 55,000 at 684. Nice. Very nice. Look at that another, look at that other, uh, hold on here. I'm going to get in on this, on this chart here. I want you to see on the one day, one day chart. You can say whatever you want about the, so them shorts winning the, uh, today. Look what they've done over the last six months. They've lost and lost and lost to allow the 200 day moving average to go from 670 into 816. That's bad news for them, people. And that's why Kathy Wood's buying more and Vanguard's buying more and BlackRock's buying more and all these institutions are buying more, buying more SoFi. All the headlines that read, all the FUD that's out there, all the BS. And meanwhile, all these institutions just raising their, raising their portfolios. I've proven it to you, folks. They're flocking in. The volume's coming in. And institutional ownership just hit a brand new high today. In case you didn't know that, folks, I'm going to show you right now. Institutional ownership right here. I'm going to show you all-time high today on SoFi. Never been higher than this number of institutional share owners. 800 is where we're sitting today. Right there, 800. Read it and weep, shorty. More institutions accumulating, going long only. Another one jumps in the long boat, and we now, and an interesting thing about this is, even with another institution coming in, folks, the shorts are so in such a bad way having to cover these shorted notes, they're having to sell their long positions of SoFi, and I'm going to tell you how I know this, everybody, because the volume was over 395 million and now it's dropped from 39.85% ownership by institutions to 3719 and all that tells me is that a lot of these institutions didn't leave their positions with SoFi another one came in even and we went from 799 to 800 but many of those that are swinging both ways had to sell their long uh, holdings, <clears throat> some of their longs to cover their shorts. Okay, does that make sense to you? I hope that makes perfect sense to you. <clears throat> That's the reason you can see institutional ownership rise like we just saw it rise, but at the same time, see institutional shares drop from 39.85 down to 37.19 because some of these institutions that are shorting they got to cover those shorted positions on SoFi. I'm watching this for you guys. You need to understand what that means. When the short volume just jumped down from 39.85 to 37.19 institutional share volume, that means that somebody has to be selling to cover debt. All right? And the only way they could have returned those shares back up from 350,000 to 6.15 million is how? By being able to, by selling some of those shorted positions and using that money to return 
to buy the shares from SoFi then and return the shares back. All right. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. They needed to get those available shares back up to six million to use this afternoon against us, folks. And the only way they could accomplish that was by selling their shorted positions on SoFi, uh, their their long positions. They don't get me wrong. They and I'm going to look at this right now. I'm going to look at it very close tomorrow for sure, or on Monday. I want to see how many institutions actually sold some of their long positions. I wonder, let me see something here. Let, let's dig a little deeper here. Short interest uh, insiders. Okay, here we go. Just give me a second here, folks. <clears throat> no, I, I want to be this one. I want to be on this one. Owners. Just give me a second here, folks. Come on here, baby. Yeah, shorts are far from winning here. The bulls are in full control. Shorts are in desperation mode. Just trying to load something up here. <clears throat> Come on, baby. Uh, let's get back over to SoFi's page here. What are we doing? <laughs> I saw a freaking huge gain on the low today, and that's not good for shorters either, everybody, just in case you're not aware of that. That's not good, man. They don't want to see on a Friday when there's usually profit taking possibly going on, the low going from 717 to 732. That's horrible for any shorter. No matter what type of manipulation they want to try here with their big red dumps here this afternoon. And by the way, that first candlestick was a dump, but that second some was someone buying, okay? That second one was a buy-in right there. I'm getting on it. That first one was 1.2 million shares sold, but that next one after that is a big green candlestick, folks, right there. Somebody stepped in and said, I'll take a boatload right there. And here we are sitting three cent red, just like we do in the after hours sometimes. <laughs> Manipulators trying to hold it three cent red. 73303 down 0.30. <laughs> what do you know? Seven thirty three oh three oh three oh. Oh, we're going faster now. We're in fast fast forward at two fifty. Watching Shorty return all those shares, and the only way they did it by selling their long positions on SoFi to cover those shorted ones. I hope this makes sense to you what I'm telling you. When we look over here at institutional ownership, and I'm going to look right now and see if I can pick out what I want on this screen. Maybe it'll load up here. There it is. I want to get down here. <clears throat> 
See, this one here might be one of them. Reduced its share count by 75%. This one reduced by 37%. This one reduced by 11%. This one got out 100%. This one reduced. This one reduced. This one lowered by 40%. Just give me a second here. <clears throat> funds, funds shorting SoFi. I appreciate your patience while I look at this. <clears throat> Here we go. Okay, yep, I'm right. See that? Nomura Holdings. Nomura Holdings. Folks, let me get my camera. Let me get my camera. Hold on, I'll be right back. Yeah, see, I find it very interesting that ownership, institutional ownership would rise to a record high today, but institutional percentage would drop by about 2%. So I'm going to do this right now, just for my own uh, kicks, and you can join in with me and observe what I'm going to show you. All right, so these companies right here are shorting. So if I, these are, there's not going to be the many of them, all right, just hold on with me. In the picture of that right there. And then we're going to scroll down from ASYLX. ASYLX. There we go. Next one is J and L. All right. Okay. Now we're down to QRP and X. QRP and X. There we go. And then here's the next one. Okay, and then we're going to come down here to Two Sigma, and we just got a few more after Two Sigma. Right there they are. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. There we go. Hold on here. And then we're going to go lower here to Weiss Multi-Strategy. Ooh. Hold on here. And that, I believe, Parallax. Oh, boy, we got a few more. Wolverine. I'm tracking them, people. I'm going to find out who's shortener. Belvedere Trading was the last one there. All these puts, Gut, Cutler Group, LP. Vela Funds. And that's the end of it right there. Now, I, I'm, I'm, what I'm looking at here, folks, is I'm looking at funds that are shorting SoFi. That's what I did a search for just then. And I'm very surprised in a way because that's a lot of funds. And the weird thing is that when I go over to institutional ownership, I only see longs and shorts. But there's a lot here, folks. Okay, this is a surprising discovery for me. And uh, 
maybe maybe there's repetitions of them. I don't know because they're just adding to their shorter positions. But what I just definitely did a, 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 a term for funds shorting SoFi technologies. All right. Very good. Well, what do you know? These are same these are same funds probably that maybe have long positions too. But for the ones that are shorting recently, today and yesterday, we see a reduction of 22 or 5% reduction of their shorter position, a 7% per reduction of their shorter position a 79% reduction of their shorted position, a 6% reduction in theirs on the 27th, a 57% reduction on theirs. There's a lot of reductions there. And what the question is, is this enough reductions that that made up the 6.7 million shares they needed to get back up to? That's the question. All right, let's see what we got over here. Shorts are far from winning today. Teach them, cat. That's right, Jeff Presley. Yep. Tim, if I had money in those institutions and at the same time they were shorting a stock that they were putting me in, I would be in, on the phone and threatening to pull out my money. Yep. True, Kevin, Kevin Blair. SoFi is starting to feel like the old GME days, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. That's right, baby. Jeff Pratt Presley, damn, Cleon, shit him behind too. <laughs> uh, many people in here with my share count. Pardon me while I call my banker checks with the wife, LOL. <laughs> April will be uh, epic, guys, be patient. That's right, Cleon Karampilius. Cleon Karampilius. Corumpilius. Tim, if the Reddit dudes start playing in the next couple of weeks, I think this may have a chance for a real squeeze. I know we were already trending on a Reddit last week. But now I take pictures of all of these and I wonder how could there be so many that are shorting this stock all these are puts, as you can see. Look at them. Every one of them. Put, put, short, 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 put, short, put, 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 short, put, put. They're all they're all there. They're all there. And uh I'm just looking over this data very closely to see something here. Royal Bank of Canada. Now, I know Royal Bank of Canada has a lot more long than they do short. I can tell you that on this right now. Citadel with 7 million shares. Citadel, bastards. They reduced theirs by 3.48%, though. <clears throat> These are all of them with shorted positions, people. I'm showing you Shea Capital, D.E. Shaw. I told you when he was reducing here, if you look at the hedge funds, one's reducing, he's one of them. I want to show you this right here, folks, so you can see this. And I appreciate your patience with me while I show you these things. I'm going to show you right here. This is uh, HTF hedge funds, what they've been doing recently. And folks, this is amazing. In case you don't know how to follow money, this shows it to you right now. These hedge funds, folks, have been coming in like crazy. D.E. Shaw, see that put they've got right there? I'm going to show you right here. D.E. Shaw is on this page right here. And why I'm showing it to you. There he is right there. D.E. Shaw just reduced their short position by 23.37%, selling 546,000 shares. You see that? 
Good to know. Shorty leaving. One another shorty leaving right there. D. E. Shaw. I just showed you on what I just showed you. I think if you, that that's interesting stuff right there. I like it. So look at this, folks. We got a big day on SoFi. SoFi institutional ownership has eclipsed its highest ever. We just got to 800 institutions owning shares. Everyone, 800 institutions now. This is a trade. This is a new day, folks. This is a new, a new higher, highest ever institutional ownership in SoFi today. Now, the part that, about it that's a little bit confusing <clears throat> is that although our institutional owners, owners have climbed and another one went on to the long group instead of a short or long and short, they're long only to who came in today. But the thing that you might be puzzled by is the, the amount of share ownership went down from 3985 